covering every game of the English Premier League, Champions League and Europa League live as they happen. For the best live bets, this is Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io. Please gamble responsibly. It certainly is. It certainly is. It is Clubhouse TV. It is sportsbet.io. It is fun, fast and fair. It is all of those things that I always tell, tell you. And uh, it's very good to see you this Sunday afternoon. And there are two... I'd say slightly important matches that are going to be played this afternoon. Simon B, who is alongside me. Hello, Simon. Hello. Um, we've got uh, Liverpool against Brighton to start us oh, off. Yes. And then we have got uh, Manchester City against Arsenal. So we've got three, um, the three at the top of the table. Just one point separates all three of those teams going into this afternoon. They've all got 10 games to play. It could not be tighter at the top, could it? I know. Happy Easter, by the way. Happy Easter. And, Happy uh, Easter, everybody. It's like celebrating. A, it's like a real Easter egg of football uh, action today, isn't it? You know, there's uh, there's some real quality there. It's going to taste great on the way down, and we hope we don't <laughs> gorge ourselves too much on the uh, on the feast of football we have. But yeah, this first game, Liverpool versus Brighton. You would think Liverpool are going to win. They've got more to play for. Um, they're licking their wounds after their FA Cup defeat to Manchester United last time round. But, you know, Jurgen Klopp has rallied the troops. Uh, I would expect at home they'll be able to put some pressure on Manchester City and, uh, and Arsenal for the second game. And that second game, I really wouldn't, wouldn't want to call it. But no. unfortunately, you're going to make me call it. I am going to do later. Mm. That's a 4.30 kickoff. We're about, what, 12 minutes away from Liverpool against Brighton getting underway. And uh, it's exciting this afternoon. We've got two games, but two very, very big ones. 1.3 Liverpool are with uh, Sportsbet.io's boffins. Six for the tight, nine if you fancy Brighton. Now, Brighton started the season like a house on fire, didn't they? And uh, maybe have just calmed down a, a tad, but um, nobody apart from Leeds goes to Anfield and wins. <laughs> um, but um, nine for Brighton does seem a little bit uh, a little bit high. Six for the tie. Brighton, double chance. Could I interest with you in that? Or do you think just Liverpool will romp to victory today? I think Liverpool will win, but there must be some better odds than 1.3 out there for us to, to latch it's a bit skinny, a hold isn't it? of. Yeah, I mean, um, I think Liverpool will probably have more of the ball and attack and be more sort of threatening than than Brighton. But is it going to be a, a thrashing? No, I don't think so. I think Brighton can stay in the game, can um, offer enough of a threat themselves to make this a close match. Maybe 2-1. Yeah. Um, maybe 3-1. I think 2-1 or 3-1 would be correct scores, I think, to get involved with. Liverpool to win and both teams to score... Uh, maybe Liverpool to score in both halves. That is only 1.69, though. Mm. The markets are all skewed massively towards Liverpool. They are, uh, as you say, they're, they're a team at home that just don't lose. They're a team at home that, that generally win. Brighton's away form has been a little bit patchy. Um, they lost 4-0 in Rome. And you know, with that performance only a few games ago in mind, you, you don't know whether they could just collapse if things start going badly for them. But... Personally, I think they, they just lose today and don't necessarily lose that badly. Um, we've got I've got the teams here. I don't know if you want to do them on me, but I'll, I'll go through the Liverpool team. Then you can yep. do the Brighton team if you like. Kelleher in goal for Liverpool. You've got uh, Gomez, Van Dijk, Kwanzaa and Bradley. I like Bradley um, at the uh, the right back. Um, Sobeschlai, Endo and McAllister in midfield. Diaz on the left, Salah on the right and Darwin Nunes leading the line. So that's a strong side that yeah. Jürgen's putting out there. Just the one change, isn't it, from the Man United game? Um, and it's Robertson who got injured uh, mm. on international duty. He drops out. So Bradley goes into right back and Gomez switches to left again. And, and, and Gomez was playing for England, so it's not exactly a, a nah. weak replacement. No, um, on the bench, I'd look at the bench as well for Liverpool because they're going to need, they're going to need some um, energy off the bench at some stage. Well, Harvey Elliott's been the man, hasn't he, this yeah. season? Come on and, uh, and been bright and breezy in the last twenty. It's not a terrible bench. There's a lot of young lads there, but we know that they have contributed. But when you've got Canate, who's a, you know not far off being a, a, one of their best defenders anyway, you've got Gakpo, you've got Elliott, mm. and you've got Gravenberch back on the bench. You know, that's quite a strong enough bench, I think, to convince me that they, they'll, oh, they'll be able to cope all old, right Old um, Simicass has just dropped down a notch, hasn't he? He, he would have been the left-back yeah. of choice um, with Robertson out, but uh, Gomez has jumped above him. Um, for Brighton, then, their team uh, this afternoon, Simon, got Verbruggen in goal, Veltman, Duncan, Van Heck are the back three. You've got Lamptey yeah. on the right, Estepinion's on the left, and Baliba and Gross in that midfield with Adingra, who's been having a great time, and Moda and uh, Welbeck up front. Yeah, and when you look at that team, you know, it, 
it's much weakened than what their best 11 would be. You say, you know, Brighton's best 11 would have Mitoma in, for example. It would have João Pedro in, for example. Maybe it would have uh, Evan Ferguson if he was on yeah. the same form of last season. But, you yeah, they're not there. But João Pedro is the top scorer. He's out injured. Evan Ferguson is massively out of form. He's on the bench. You know, Danny Welbeck's keeping him out. And, you know, Billy Gilmore's been dropped today as well. So he's obviously not been playing that well. So we haven't got a Billy Gilmore trophy today, have we? No. In fact, he's not even in the squad, is he? Yeah. So this is obviously an injury that Billy Gilmore's picked up. Um, I see this Brighton team having a real struggle, actually, looking at looking at that 11. Where are the goal's going to come from? You know, um, maybe Pascal Gross. Yeah. He has got a goal in Pascal Gross. He's playing well, central it's midfield. It's either Gross or Welbeck, isn't it? Uh, I mean, Adinger's been playing well. But they're the three, aren't they? I mean, I like Lamptey at, uh, on the right-hand side of their attack, but or defence attack. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it is not quite the Brighton that was making everybody excited at the start of the season. So I, I can only forecast a really long afternoon for Brighton, to be honest, and, and, and a Liverpool win. 1.3, it's not a working man's price, is it? It's, it's one for... The heavy hitters, well, if you like, you know, you, you put you put big stakes on a one point three, knowing that it's going to win. Um, but you know, for someone who's looking for something more around the two mark, uh, maybe you could look at well, what about um, Liverpool, Liverpool to win a both teams score. Liverpool minus two goals. If you, if you can't see much out of the Brighton side, and we like the look of Liverpool, they're at home at Anfield where they're very strong. Liverpool minus two is two point six three, three nil or, or that kind of yeah. four one whatever. Yeah. Um, I made you think there, wasn't no, I? No, I, I, I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. Liverpool minus two, yeah. Um, Hello to Brahi. He says, hi, guys. Uh, Koki's with us. He says, good afternoon. Hello, Koki. Nice to see you. Whoa, the Okie Koki. And uh, Shadow Shivgami, he's joined us as well. Good afternoon, everybody, he says. Hello to Shadow. Um, nice to have you with us uh, this afternoon. To everybody out there, make sure you gamble responsibly with Clubhouse TV. That's uh, that's the main rule, uh, but it is Clubhouse TV, we, TV with sportsbet.io. Fun, fast, ferociously fair. And as I say, if you're just joining us, two massive games this afternoon. The top three in the Premier League. As things stand, as we go into this afternoon, 10 games to play by um, Arsenal, Liverpool and Manchester City. Um, 64 points Arsenal, 64 points Liverpool, 63 points Manchester City. Obviously, Arsenal Man City are going to take points out of each other, or if it's a tie, they'd take point, both drop points today. Um, so uh, Liverpool have a chance today, don't they, um, with a, a good win against De Brighton to really be top of the tree come the end of tonight. Yeah, I think that's what their objective will be, to just put pressure on the other two teams in the title race by winning and winning well. Goal difference could be crucial come the end of the season. We've seen Arsenal improve their goal difference massively in the last few weeks, yeah. now to the point where they've got a seven-goal advantage over Liverpool. That's well, why they're top of the table, of course, Ars today. Arsenal, I mean, we, we're going to go on a little bit to the later game, but Arsenal have been beating teams 4-0, 5-0. Um, you can't see that today, can you? Not for Arsenal, no, no. But maybe you're looking at Liverpool saying that they need to respond to Arsenal's mm. goal difference and, and they could they could be starting thinking that if they go 2-0 up half-time, 3-0 up second half, they need to push for that well, that's That's the thing, isn't it? You, you might be... We've seen matches, haven't we, this season where a team is like 3-0 up at, after 60 minutes and kind of just coast through the last half an hour because they've got the points in the bang. Um, if Liverpool are 3-0 up with, with 30 minutes to go, there's every incentive to make it 4-0, 5-0. Yeah, there is. And you're looking at Liverpool's fixtures, uh, or I am right now, and they don't have many gaps between their games, but they do have um, a few days here. So, so Liverpool play. Uh, sorry, there's the games. Yeah, so Liverpool play today, and they play on Thursday. Is it? I think uh, they play Sheffield United on Thursday. Okay, maybe that's the game where they'll get the goal difference up. The Sheffield mm. United game more than this one. But still, I think if Liverpool are two 0 up, and there's plenty of time left. They, they could easily push for more goals. So, yeah, you're right. The, the Liverpool minus two at 2.63 um, is a better bet than Liverpool and both teams to score. I was looking at Brighton's record. They haven't scored in three of the last five away games. So you'd be a bit wary about backing them to score today. They have lost um, by more than two goals in two of their last four away games. They lost 4-0 at Luton, famously. And they also lost 3-0 at Fulham in their last away game. So that's definitely playing into the, the Liverpool minus two bet. Five minutes to go then until we get to kick off. We're going to be doing spot bets as we go through Liverpool against Brighton. So um, give Simon five minutes to think about what the first one's going to be. And uh, we've got Man City against Arsenal coming up at 4.30. So loads to look forward to this afternoon on Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io. Um, French League Gurm, we've got uh, three matches kicking off uh, at two, five minutes away uh, between, uh, well, Clement taking on Toulouse. You've got Le Havre against Montpellier, Nice against Nantes. Um, in Germany at 2.30, Augsburg take on Cologne. 
and uh, 3.15 in Spain, Hirona against uh, Betis, plus more besides, more coming up later in all of those leagues, plus obviously plenty of football all over the blimmin' place. If there's anything else you would like us to talk about, any other matches that strike you fancy, if you found a good bet elsewhere, then let us know on the Telegram chat, and we will delve into the uh, stats and the form and stuff and try and steer you in the right direction um, whenever we can. And we are, uh, what about, well, we into about four minutes of um, time added on at the end of the Celtics game. They've uh, they've beaten Livingston, basically. They're 3-0 up away yeah. from home there. Shot from range there from Livingston, but uh, um, it's uh, a- another win for Celtic. They're going back top of the table, aren't they? Because the Rangers won yesterday, won 3-1 against Hibs. So they leapfrogged Celtic. Celtic go back above Rangers. It's looking like this is going to be the pattern for the next few weeks until the, the next Old Firm derby in Scotland. Yeah, well, if uh, Sportbet.io's uh, Joe Max uh, watching, one point clear at the top of the table, but Rangers with a game in hand. So it's yeah tight at the top there as well. We've got some exciting uh, run-ins, haven't we, in, in the mm. uh, top tiers. We've got uh, the Scottish um, main duo um, going toe-to-toe um, in the uh, Scottish Premiership. We've got uh, Liverpool, Man City and Arsenal at the top end of the uh, the Premier League and um, battling it out. And uh, we've got at the bottom end, um, pending more points deductions possibly, um, got Sheffield United bottom of the table, 15 points, Burnley 18, Luton 22, Forest 22, Everton 25, Brentford 27. But um, in their own ways, they're all showing a little bit of fight. Sheffield United, they're just not good enough, but they showed fight yesterday. Yeah, such a shame, Phil. I thought they were 4-1 up, didn't they? And that would have been a winning score, you think? And then the fact that goal got cancelled, you know, offside... Then um, it just gave Fulham a, a, a bit more of mm. a encouragement, and that that's all they needed. You know, Sheffield United are, one of, are probably one of the worst Premier League teams I've seen for closing out games. Mm. You know, once the, once um, Fulham got that second, their second goal, there was only one team pushing forward. Yeah. Then Sheffield United were just sucking the ball into their own net. But they got a point, you know, which yeah. is more than F- Luton got. It's more than Everton got. Um, you know, Nottingham Forest. They had a home game yesterday. Didn't take um, anything more than a point there, so it keeps them very much in the mix. And and Burnley, they had the best result yesterday, didn't they? You know, from from one nil down and two one down with ten men to get a draw at Chelsea. Walk on, walk on. That's what they're seeing at yes. the moment at Anfield as the uh, scarves and the flags are waving above the uh, Liverpool fans' heads. There as uh, Liverpool prepare to take on Brighton in the Premier League. Whatever happens later, at, uh, if Liverpool win, they will remain top of the tree. Um, if they uh, if they lose by seven goals, they would go into uh, um, no. Sorry, if they win by set more than seven goals, and well, they'd be top anyway, wouldn't they? But that they need to boost their goal difference. As Simon was saying, Arsenal plus forty six, Liverpool plus thirty nine, Man City plus thirty five. We have seen the Premier League title decided on goal difference um, yeah. in in the last few years. But if uh, Liverpool don't lose this match, then they will go top even if it is temporarily before the match coming up later. So the players are out there in the middle. We are not too far away from kickoff in the Premier League. Let us know on the Telegram chat. A, if you're watching. B, come along and say hello. And C, tell us who you think is going to win. Liverpool. What's the, what's the score prediction? What is your score prediction? Liverpool against Brighton. Counting down to kickoff, covering every game of the English Premier League, Champions League, and Europa League live. This is Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io. Please gamble responsibly. Always, always, always gamble responsibly, Clubhouse creatures. It's very good to have you here. No producer today, so it's just me and Simon flying set well, solo, flying duo in the studio. <laughs> uh, but we have got, well, we've had, but we're both very excited. Coming in today, um, Liverpool against Brighton, Man City against Arsenal. This is this is gold as far as Sundays go. So uh, really looking forward to it. Alexis with us. He says, hello, um, James, you need to drink tea. More like, looks like you have a cold. Okay. Well, I'm, it's Simon that's got the cold, and I've got the tea as well. No, not so. Sorry, Jack. Yesterday's got the cold. Oh, Jack, right. Jack, basically, yes. Yesterday, all Jack was doing, he was saying a couple of words, and then he was going like that, putting me on screen in that chair, sne- sneezing and blowing his oh, nose, right. and then so going back to the, going back to this shot. So I'm probably I'm coming down with Jack's cold. Um, Alexi, but it's good to have you here. They've kicked off in France. They're about to kick off in the uh, Premier League yeah. as well. I've got a little treble for you in France, actually. Oh, have you? Yeah, have it's you? a favourite oh. treble. Uh, I'm going to put you on screen so I can sneeze. It's um, Nice to beat Nantes at home. Nice have had a rough time recently, but they got back on track with a good win uh, in their last game. And uh, I fancy them to win at a Nantes side who are third bottom of the table. Sorry, at home to a Nantes side who are third bottom of the table. So they're, they're in my treble at 1.81. I'm back in Toulouse. Uh, against the bottom club, Claremont. Toulouse are away. 
Uh, but Toulouse have picked up recently, had two wins in the last four, and they are playing, like I say, the bottom team in league earned today. And the third leg of the French treble is the other favourite. I've just lost the uh, team now, the other favourite in France today is Le Havre, Le Havre at home. And uh, they're actually not having a great season in 13th place in the table, but at home they are pretty good. Uh, league uh, home form for Le Havre is they've won three of the last five and they're up against a Montpellier side who are not particularly good on their travel. So the three favourites basically in France right now is Le Havre, Nice and uh, Toulouse away uh, as a treble comes out to about 9.77. One of my favourite films of all times on that top TV at the moment, Si. Yeah, I love it as well. Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory. Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. Have you seen the, re the most recent Wonka film? I watched it the other day on my television at home, and I wasn't quite sure if I was going to enjoy it or not. Absolutely loved it. Did you? Yeah, it is really good. Right. Um, so I'd recommend that one to anybody out there. Classic Wonka. Easter Sunday film as well with a chocolate thing. It's it's nice and um, mm. inoffensive, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's just it's just pleasant family viewing. I like it, and some good songs as well. Oh yeah, the song's great. Yeah, come with me, and <laughs> oh, you'll no. be. In a world of pure imagination. Oh, it's glorious. Here's, glorious. Br here's Brighton on the attack, trying to make it a world of pure pain for Liverpool. Shot oh, in the, the back of the what net. A goal that from is. Welbs. Oh, Danny Welbeck, he has absolutely smashed that into the back of Liverpool's net. Pick that out, he says. And Liverpool behind inside two minutes. Wow, what a goal. Whoa. It's a, I mean... Jurgen Klopp, all he can do is just tip his hat, tip his cap in admiration there for a great hit from Danny Welbeck. I mean, Liverpool were a little bit... They were, they were backpedalling there on the edge of the box, didn't really get a tackle in. The tackle that did come in just put the ball to, to Welbeck and he just slammed in a brilliant goal. Not a lot you could do with that. Um, but it will, it, will, it will give Brighton some confidence this that they can maybe score more against Liverpool today. They were just saying where the goal's coming from. They're coming from that. That was one hell of a hit just inside the penalty area. It leathers it in with his right foot. Hard to hit a ball harder than that, I don't think. And uh, Danny Welbeck opens the scoring for Brighton. So that changes things a little bit, doesn't it? 4.4 Brighton are into it. So they're, they're a goal up. We're giving Brighton a goal and they are still 4.4 to win the match. 4.8 the tie, 1.63 for Liverpool, Si. I think you back Liverpool now, really. I mean, that is a great... Well, they've got a, a, for, for punters, that's great. They were 1.3. People go, I'm not backing Liverpool at 1.3, but they're going to win. Now, it's only played two minutes. They're one goal down. You're getting double the price they were initially, but they've still got 88 minutes to score two goals and win this game. And they, and they will score two goals. I have no doubt about Liverpool scoring two goals today. But actually, what you do worry about now is can Brighton score more goals? Because they've just yeah. you know, they've had one shot and they've scored it. Wow, what a start to the afternoon. That That is um, unexpected, I think. I think everybody was probably tuned in thinking um, that Liverpool were just going to romp to a, a, an easy win today. Well, Brighton have just put the cat amongst the pigeons and have scored an absolute belter. Let's look at what Brighton have done then when they've scored the first goal away from home this season. Um, so obviously they scored the first goal at Sheffield United and won 5-0. Uh, they also scored the first goal at Tottenham only a month ago, lost the game 2-1. Um, prior to that, they scored the... Okay. Okay. They don't score the first goal very often. Um, this is what I'm finding out here. Brighton do not score the first goal very often away from home. Mm. Um, it's hardly happened. So, Man United, early this season, they scored the first goal 1-3-1. And right at the start of the season when they were flying, they scored the first goal at... Wolves and won four one. That was the first game of the season, wasn't it? But yeah, this is um, only the second time that Brighton have scored the first goal in an away game since September. So it's it's uncharted territory. Let's put it. It's, it's getting towards uncharted territory for Brighton. Um, one hell of a hit that from Danny Welbeck. If he's in your fantasy team, happy days because he's uh, he's got you off to a flyer this afternoon. He's not in mine. Billy Gilmore suspended, by the way, so that's why he's not playing. Not injured. Um, but there's, there's, a, there's a few missing obviously James Milner didn't even mention him he would be a really useful player to have today with his experience of playing for Liverpool well, at the, Anfield it's the James Milner derby isn't it yeah but unfortunately he's not available and that, that, that's a big blow for Brighton that because 
say they're winning 1 0 with half an hour to go, he would be coming on and he would do a really good job of holding the ball, stopping Liverpool in the tracks and, and trying to protect the 1 0 lead. They would dearly love to have James Milner on their bench today, but he's not available. Wow, what a start this afternoon then. Liverpool behind in the Premier League to Brighton in the inside two minutes. I've just put a poll out. We just talked about this earlier, so I put out which team will be top of the Premier League after today's matches. Arsenal, Liverpool or Manchester City. Yeah. Um, stick your votes in now. Well, um, a, few, a few would have been voting for Liverpool there, but maybe thinking twice about it now because of the fact they've just gone down uh, a goal at home to uh, Brighton. Um, hello to uh, Isha Tint. It's good to have you with us, Isha Tint. Alexis says, guys, I'm glad to see you. Wish you, uh, uh, wish you were recovery fast, he says. I'm not ill, Alexis. I'm fine. Um, and uh, O says, hello. Um, Karar says, hello, hello, James and Simon. Hello, Karar. Chiraf says, boom, goal, Brighton. I think that sums it up, Chiraf. Um, Alexi's got uh, a, a, a picture here. Neil Moore. Pay. The fan was desperate for my shirt. So he's got to, um, that's uh, one of your thugs, isn't it? Tom and A just ripping uh, Neil Mopay's oh, yeah. shirt off his back there. Uh, Osman's with us uh, with the Tom Hanks hello gif. And uh, we have got uh, Karar saying, What do we need today? Spot bet, Sai. What's yes. the first spot bet? Uh, let's go with um, Mohamed Salah to have a shot on target. You okay with that one? Yes. To lose against score. Toulouse are going to score good. They're part of the French uh, treble we've got. Uh, Toulouse, Nice and Le Havre are the three teams. If you want to back them now, they'll be a little bit less than the 9.77 originally, but uh, I still think it's a worthy treble, especially as Toulouse were the only away team in that and they're, they're going to lead. But uh, yeah, Mo, Mo Salah to have a shot on target. Um, he's been involved in the game already. In fact, he's possibly going to get on the oh, end of this was, move. I thought he was going to have a shot because sometimes he does rather selfishly have shots from... Strange angles, but uh, Liverpool coming forward. Dias now down the uh, left-hand side. Can they get back on level terms inside 10 minutes? And uh, trying to just dink it in, but Brighton are back. And Brighton have now got a reason to believe, haven't they? They've got to, to, a reason to show resolve at the back, even more so than they did at the start, because they've got something to protect now. Yes, but clean sheets for them away from home, pretty rare. Two in the last 10. In fact, two in... 14 away games this season and those two clean sheets came at West Ham and Sheffield United Brighton are off and running again down the left hand side into the penalty area can they get a good ball across it goes across but he gets no Brighton player on the way um, out to the right hand side now Joe Gomez is able to bring the ball away from Liverpool but it's a Brighton breezy start it's a yeah, good game this really good end to end threatening more goals you know, you could maybe look at another goal before half time. It won't be a. Here's Mo. Here's Mo. Can yeah. he get a shot? He shoots. It's blocked. Yeah. That doesn't count. No. That doesn't count, Sight. It has to either be. Well, it has to be saved for it to be a shot on target, doesn't it, really? Mm. Or, or go in, obviously. So, uh, yeah, Liverpool trying to get back. Oh, Darwin Nunes nearly lost the ball, but it tries to feed him in, but can't get into the penalty area. Brighton are, are defending for all their lives at the back. Yeah. Their ninth minute of the game being played. Man City against Arsenal coming on along later. We had that goal for Toulouse in um, the French League Gurn as well, which is good for Simon's treble. And uh, Rivers United in Africa are about to score against USM Algier. Yeah. Football all over the place, Clubhouse Creatures. So uh, plenty of uh, plenty of it's on the uh, sportsbet.io console as well. So there are loads of uh, bets to be had this afternoon. Tell us how you're betting. Tell us what you're up to. And always gamble responsibly. Oh! Who was that? Who was that? Mo Salah's just had a shot wide. Does it have to be on target, this shot? Yes, I said shot on target, yeah. Ooh. We won't, I mean, we've just seen him have two shots in the last minute, so mm. we're not going to be waiting long, are we? Well, But Connor Bradley that. does really well down the right, plays him in, and he's just trying to curl it towards a far corner, not far away. Oh, it's, it's hotting up this afternoon. Um, how many points have you got this week, everybody out there in old uh, fantasy land? Because um, I'm just looking at my fantasy team. I didn't think I was doing very well. In fact, that's not me. That's another week. I need to refresh the screen. Um, oh, oh. No, that's that's the wrong week. What's happening here? Um, how many... Oh, it's Gav's team. That's why. Ah, he's logged his, left himself logged in. Yeah, and we could do a load of transfers, couldn't we? <laughs> um, I've got currently 35 points this week. I've given up, mate. I've given, I don't, don't bother with fantasy. But yeah, I, I had a good run around Christmas, and then um, see, I've see. just... Lost it's, confidence in my team. It, that's that's the thing though. You you can't just give up. That's I mean, if you were you wouldn't want Eric Ten Hag to say that, would you? Oh, I think Eric Ten Hag might already have given up. <laughs> to be honest, did you see last night? Oh. Were, you, were you were you in last night? No, I was watching it at home. It was so bad. It was um, <gasps> Gav Pudzielowski's four points behind me. 
Oh my goodness! Oh god, you're you're still ahead of me. Am I? Two points ahead of me this week, or you've got fifty three points this week. You've done. You've I've, got I've, more points I've, than anybody in your area in, in our area of the um, sports bet Dio league without doing anything. Not looked at my team. Oh, this is disgraceful. Absolutely disgraceful. Uh, oh, you've Cole, done, Cole, is Cole Palmer in it? You've done uh, nothing. I bet Cole Palmer. No, got he's me not. In. Oh, no, he's got your points. And um, Martinez in goal. Um, you got Son. I've got both of them. How come you've got so many? Oh, I said that's absolutely disgusting. Hmm. Oh no, no, no! That's not your team. Hang on, that's me. What am I doing? Uh, who's in your team? I must have Cole Palmer. I don't. I really. This is what's wrong with fantasy. People that don't know anything about football yeah. get points. Yeah. Um, you've got Cole Palmer. Yeah. yeah. And Son as your captain. Oh, well, that was a bit lucky, wasn't it? Yeah. I literally don't know. And, and here I am putting in the effort and I'm getting less points than you and you're not even looking. It's just, it's just wrong. Gav will be doing the same. Gav won't have done anything with his team and he'll be picking up points just by default. It's just wrong. Oh, dear. I'm, uh, I'm not Brighton happy had a corner. I'm not happy now, creatures. Brighton had a corner, but they didn't really do much with it. But they're still offering a good threat on the counter-attack, which Liverpool have got to be very careful about. This This has got more goals than it. I'll, I, right now, are you asking me for a, a bet? I'm looking at more first-half goals. I, I always like first half goals, you know me. First half goals, it's the future, everybody. I, I noticed there were two nil nils in the Bundesliga yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah. I actually, um, for the, yeah, I, I went quite big on the Bundesliga yesterday and it let me down. We we were a long way away on the Bundesliga yesterday. That RB Leipzig game, though. I mean, RB Leipzig are never a nil nil team yeah. and they had a nil nil with um, Mainz, I think it was. Well, I, uh, I always say if you don't win in the Bundesliga on those bets, you always get close. We didn't get anywhere near yesterday. Just that was did, great. Just didn't happen. Um, goal starved day in Germany yesterday. Because even that big game between shot from McAllister goes over the crossbar. Yeah, even the big game between uh, Dortmund and Munich only had two goals in it, and that's averaged three and a half goals. Like for the last fifteen times those two teams have played, and yesterday there were only two. Um, that's Munich waving the white flag, though, isn't it? Oh yeah, Thomas Tuchel's conceded the title as well. Mm. He said, uh, "Congratulations, Leverkusen." Um, <laughs> Their first ever Bundesliga title. Not official yet, obviously. Official as far as Thomas Tuchel's and Bayern Munich are concerned. That's very Pep of him, isn't it? Pep, Pep conceded the title one year and then went on to win it, didn't he? Because <laughs> he was only about five points behind at the time he conceded it. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. It's all mind games with Pep when he says stuff like that. It's just kind of... It, it just, it's, it, it's sometimes, I think, it's to get grab the headlines away from a, a bad performance when he yes. says stuff like that. Yes. Because that, that'll be what the, the, the journalist will go with. I'll took... Um, Guardiola concedes the title. It won't be that Tim Harland's had a stinker. But uh, well, we'll see them later. We'll see them Liverpool later. Liverpool chance, maybe. Where's Mo Salah? He's not, not there. Uh, no. Corner kick, though, for Liverpool. Is that how many corners we had so far? Is that the first? I think it's Liverpool's first. Yeah, we've had one for Brighton as well. Yeah, so one apiece. Into, so we're looking for a Mo Salah shot on target, creatures, for the first of our spot bets to land. Have you fired up your random number generator well, in I readiness? Do, I'll, I'll do it, yeah. yeah. Got it going now, yeah. Because we need that. Mm -hmm. So a corner kick for Liverpool from the far side. I played short. I, I, I never like short corners, but there is a stat that you can score more goals from short corners. Yeah, I don't like Liverpool doing short corners because they're usually very good at winning the first ball on, on attacking corners. But for some reason, they've decided to do it today. Diaz plays out to Gomez, tries to dink it in, but Liverpool's struggling to get the ball into really offensive areas here. Salah's had the best chances for Liverpool. Now on the break come Brighton, and he's got pace on the left-hand side, and uh, that's going to be a yellow card, surely. The referee said no foul. Oh, no, he has. Uh, yellow card for McAllister. He's just basically checked the uh, the Brighton player. He was in full flight. He'd beaten him for pace, and McAllister knew it, didn't he? And he just, just, just nicked him to make sure he went down. So that's a yellow card for Alexi, World Cup winning Alexi McAllister. Yeah, but that's a worry for Liverpool. So McAllister in that position, he's got he's got no other option. He has to foul him because he hasn't got the pace. But he just pushes him, doesn't he? That's going to happen again and again unless they're very careful. Liverpool have, structurally, Liverpool are a little bit worrying when they get counter-attacked on here because Adingra is flying down that side. Bradley's out of position and there's nobody with the pace to come across and cover. This is interesting. We've just had um, uh, Alexi sharing some stats-based stuff. Uh, goals and expected goals in 2023-24, as of 26th of March 2024. Premier League, um, XG per game 3.13, goals per game 3.24. That's the highest in the big five games, uh, big five leagues, sorry, in Europe. Um, second is the Bundesliga. 
um, just behind 3.08 XG goals per game, 3.21 actual goals per game. Um, so they're both um, the Premier League and the uh, Bundesliga are going more than their XG on average across the board. Um, La Liga is about the same, 2.65 um, XG and 2.64 actual goals per game. 2.49 XG in uh, Italy, 2.61 score, but quite low compared to the Premier League and the Bundesliga. And the bottom of the pile, French Ligue 1, 2.71 XG, 2.58 delivered. So that's quite interesting. Premier League sitting top of the uh, the goals scored and the XG yeah. the XG charts. And uh, English Premier League since 2006-07, average shot distance. That's it. Average shot distance has gone down. So basically, the shots are coming in from closer. Right. Um, in 2006-07, the average shot distance in the Premier League was 17.7 metres. Um, and it's gone gradually down every year until two th- until this season. It's 14.9. So it's gone down 2.8 metres in, uh, in the last, what is it, uh, well, nearly 20 years. That's interesting. You need to get close to get your shots away. Well, yeah. Um, I think we're seeing... The style of football's changed, hasn't it, of, of those years? So maybe the style is now that... Well, it, it's a pressing game now, isn't it? In, in the old days, um, t- when you lost possession, you would just drop back into your own half and close the space off and try and win the ball back, and then you'd build up slowly. Now teams just go, right, you've got the ball in your defensive third. We're going to press you, win the ball there. And I guess by winning the ball higher up the pitch, you're just naturally going to have shots from higher up the pitch as well. I, I think as well, the kind of Vincent Company efforts for, that Man City won the league with pretty much... Um, hmm. People shooting from forty yards is is, is less, isn't it? Um, managers are expecting um, their players to work a better angle and work yeah. a better well, opportunity. Sam Allardyce, when he was in charge of Bolton, and this was twenty years ago, when those average shot distances were were high anyway, he told his team, you know, he he would literally um, fine his players for shooting Mo, from range. Oh, it's a shot blocked. He would have been on target. Moe's again has a shot blocked. He would have been on target. Yeah, <laughs> he, he would literally he, he would castigate his players if they took. Shots from distance, yeah. But then he had players at his disposal in those days, like JJ Okocha, who could shoot from distance. Well, that's and what Vincent Company said when he he scored that absolute screamer for Man City, and um, he said he was so pleased it went in because he got an absolute rollicking from Pep Guardiola. Had he missed it, because yeah. Pep had already always told him not to shoot from that that kind of distance. Uh, but Liverpool starting to turn the screw a little bit. Brighton very much playing on the break at the minute. So. Yeah. That's a good chance here over oh. the bar from Mo Salah. That's about five shots he's had in the last five minutes and he's got none of them on target. Just a matter of time, James. It will come. It will How come. long are we going to have to wait? Until the next game? Um, Until the next game? No, yeah. oh, no. He'll he'll get a shot on target today. Think? I think he'll score today, to be honest. I think he's got a good record against Brighton. That was, look at how, how the technique there is brilliant. Because he's ba- basically the ball's coming over his left shoulder. He keeps his eyes on the ball. He's running full pelt, and he still manages to get a, a full throated volley away. It's a, um, that, that's hard to do and make it look that easy. First half over one point five goals is short. It's one point four. We had that very early goal for Brighton, who are threatening again. The referees pulled that one back for a free kick. Spoiler alert: Charlie Bucket's about to be offered the factory. Is he yeah. excellent? Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful film. Uh, and the man in the background who we thought was the baddie. Slugworth. Slugworth was actually working for... Oh, another one from Mo Salais again over the bar. <laughs> you oh, you picked the God. day that he's going to have 50 shots off target. That's not... at least six he's yeah. had now, isn't it? He's... In 18 minutes, he's had six shots. I mean, Liverpool, with the amount of chances that uh, Mo's had, um, they should be at least level by now, but they're not. The fact that there's so many shots coming, I believe we're going to get more goals. So let's try this one. Over 2.5 first half goals. It's 2.75. So there's a big difference there. Over 1.5 goals is 1.37. But for two more goals in the first half, 2.75. I'm going to make that an official bet of mine and put it in the uh, the Telegram chat. Do you know why Mo Salah's not getting any shots on target today? Um, no. Because he's the captain of my fantasy team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he's going to basically go um, frustrated throughout the entire, um, in, entire match because he is the captain of my fantasy team. He could have had five goals by now. What are you playing at, Mo? Get these shots on target, get them in the back of the net and actually get me some points, please, Mr. Mo Salah. Um, anyway, we have got Liverpool nil, Brighton 1. We've got matches elsewhere, as I've said. Uh, two goals now in France. We've got Toulouse ahead against Clement and we've got Nantes ahead against Nice. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's not oh, good because no. oh, I've gone for not. Nice to win this one. May not. So, Nice nil, Nantes 1. Well, it does maybe bring it into play for a single play here. Because I am confident that Nice will win this game today. Another yellow card being uh, dispatched there by the referee. I think Pascal Gross is uh, in the book for a foul. 
Um, but uh, thanks to thanks for those um, graphics, um, all yes. those stats, Alexi. They're interesting, those. They are interesting. Good talking points. Uh, always worth trying to stay up with those kind of trends and things like that that happen in football to inform your bets as well. I am slightly surprised the Premier League has got had more goals than the Bundesliga this season. Because the, um, you think the Bundesliga is a more sort of open and more sort of you know will trade goals type of league? There's there's not a huge amount between them. They're very similar actually. I mean, well, 283 from the Premier League, 234 from the uh, Bundesliga, but goals per game. Um, there's not a lot of difference. 3.24 as opposed to 3.21. I guess the Bundesliga plays less games. Yes. Um, so. Uh, uh, yeah, there's not the Premier League and Bundesliga are, are, are on a par pretty much, aren't they? I've nearly started to, when I'm doing my over two and a half goals on a Saturday afternoon. I'm starting to roll the um, Premier League into it because the Premier yeah. League um, pretty much delivers all the time now. Yesterday was great, wasn't it? Um, started with that four three, and the, well, the, I, the I, game I was watching yesterday was Burnley at, at, che- at uh, Chelsea two two, and there could have been more goals in that. You know, you know me, Simon. I don't like to blow my own trumpet, but my I was sitting in your chair yesterday. By the stage of this this stage of the match, I'd already landed about three bets. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd, I'd gone over four and a half goals in the match, which obviously came in later. I'd gone over one and a half goals in the first half. Yeah. I'd got well, well, I'd gone both teams to score. Um, basically, everything came in yesterday in that first match. It was crazy. And what, once we got to, uh, I think um, four goals, we we started to add another goal onto the uh, um, um, the goal count because uh, yeah. It, Goals were always coming yesterday, and they, they mm. carried on. Um, we had a very um, slow first half yesterday, Club House Creatures, didn't we? The three o'clock kickoffs because we went for fifteen goals across the um, across the board, and by half time we'd only got about three. Yeah, well, it was nil nil at the Sheffield yeah. United full at half time, and then three all by full time. Yeah, and then we we basically cantered past fifteen mm. in the end. So uh, um, never despair, never give up, Club House Creatures. That's the message. Yeah, Club House TV with Sportsbet. Don't ever give up on a most Salah shot on target. That's the message today. Mm. Oh, look at it. It's finished. It's finished now, it's finished. Yeah. Willy Wonka played by Gene Wilder. Grandpa yeah. Joe by Jack Albertson. Charlie Bucket <laughs> by Peter Ostrom. Legends of cinema. Indeed. Fantastic stuff. Whatever happens I'm to, to Augustus I'm, Gloop. I'm going to have to tie your legs together. <laughs> oh, am I, You've got am your I restless name? leg syndrome Sorry. going, haven't you? Can you hear it or is it just the vibration? No, I can hear it in my ear headphones. Yeah, I think you've got... Sorry. Have you got a pen next to it? No. No. I don't know. It sounds like you gather... It, it winds my wife up as well you might got, TV. You might got metal legs. Sorry. Yeah. Um, people do have. It's actually a thing, isn't it? Rested, le- restless legs. Oh yeah. I because my legs just hang off the end of my body, whereas yours jiggle, don't they? Um, they constantly <laughs> um, vibrate. Yes. <laughs> constantly vibrate. Yes. Yeah. And your your wife doesn't like that. No, no, she doesn't. She doesn't like any noises when she <laughs> doesn't uh, like anything about you. No. <laughs> well, yeah, we've got to that stage now. I mean, it's a matter of time before. There's some sort yeah. of uh, yeah, accident befalls me in the home. Yeah, he'll be on, cri- on crime watch soon. If I'm an accident down the stairs, he's just fallen. Yeah. Oh, it's so sad. They might, they, might, they might use this clip as documentary evidence in the trial. <laughs> he, he knew it was coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 police, if you're watching this, if in the next year Simon has a tragic accident, please investigate fully. Please, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hope it doesn't happen, Si. No. No, I, I, hope, I hope you're on Clubhouse TV for a long time to come. <laughs> um, anyway, we are... Uh, Still brightened ahead. We're halfway through the first half, Simon B. I'm going to ask you now for your very best bet because we are halfway through and Liverpool are still behind. Yeah. As Liverpool do come forward, as Simon thinks about his, his best bet, we'll see if Luis um, Diaz can do his, anything about it. He can't on that occasion. Got it. I've got it. Have okay. You? It is Liverpool to score in is, both Is it halves. contagious? Liverpool to score in both halves is 1.93. If you were to take both teams to score right now, it's 1.69. So that's Liverpool to score in the first half. But all you need to do is back Liverpool to score in the first half, and that's both teams to score, and the second half to get 1.93. I like it. 2.02 it is now, actually. Just changed. Fourth corner of the match, the third for Liverpool. Alexi says, uh, yesterday Gav was joking about today's Arsenal match. He thinks Manchester City will destroy Arsenal. Also, he said something about Arsenal fans. What did he say about Arsenal fans, Alexi? Tell me, tell me what he said about Arsenal fans. Ente, hello to you. And Koki, hello, King and Simon. Hello, Koki. I thought we'd said hello to you already, Koki. It's nice to have you with us. And he is my captain too. I have the same feelings as Alexi. Come on, Mo. Come on, Mo. Do it for me and Alexi. Somebody's logged me out. I can't place a bet and put the uh, the link in the in the stream. Oh, there we go. Thank you, James. Yeah, well sorry. prepared. I, um, I've written that down so that if uh, numpties like you come in, you've always got it on hand. So you can log into the uh, sportsbet.io site. 
Um, but uh, yeah, well, so because we're looking for Liverpool to be um, get a goal in the first half is basically the first part of your best bet, then, isn't it? Um, at the moment, if you fancy more goals in this match, over three and a half goals in this match, he's only one point six. So the compilers have watched the uh, the first twenty five minutes of this match, and they think there are more goals to come. So do we in the studio? Do you out there? Liverpool to score the second goal is one point two one. Um, double chance, by the way, on Brighton. If you fancy Brighton not to lose today. Um, draw or Brighton is two. So it's exactly double your money for Brighton, who currently have a goal head start, to uh, not lose at Anfield today. So that's double your money and price, but obviously still quite a long time to go. And mm. hopefully for me and Alexi, Mo will start to get some shots on target and, and find the back yeah. of the net with a, a couple of them. Sorry about that. I, th- I really thought it would be his day today. Um, if we'd just gone for him to have a shot, he would have landed it about five or six times already. But... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, we'll keep that one running. And if it's uh, if it's not landed in uh, the next five minutes, we'll add another one to go alongside it. Mm. So, uh, Clubhouse Creatures, stay tuned. So, Alexis, do you think um, Manchester City destroy Arsenal today? No, no, not at all. Um, I think it's hard to call, really, really tough to call that game. I don't think Man City are in full flow at the moment. And, uh, and Arsenal have been. So, uh, your restless legs are going Sorry, again. Sorry, yeah, I can't. I know, I know what it is now. It's um, something on one of my laces. So, if I take my shoes off... Yeah, then you can do it. I'll, I'll allow do, yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even his jangly legs, honestly. Yeah. Um, Liverpool nil. Brighton won another corner for Liverpool. So, um, oh, has something happened If here? you're watching, Slissy, if you're has watching... something Liverpool, happened Liverpool, Liverpool are going to be back on level terms. Is it going to be Mo for me and Alexi? Who's going to score this goal for Liverpool? Ball floated in, headed up in the air... Headed back towards goal. Oh, it's Diaz. It's Luis Diaz who nips in, puts the ball in the back of the net. Is he offside? Is he offside? He's not offside. It's a goal for Liverpool. They're back on level terms. It's not for Mo Salah, but it's for Luis Diaz. (laughs) Celta Vigo go a goal up against Real Vallecano in Spain as well. At pretty much exactly the same time. And the Brighton players, by the way, are surrounding the referee saying that there was something wrong with that. Is there going to be... I mean, they'll, they'll VAR check it as a matter of course because they VAR check every goal Maybe these high days. boot, but I, I don't see... It's not offside. So, Luis Diaz does a really good job of staying on side here. He's on side there. He's definitely on side there. And it comes off... At, nah, there's nothing wrong nothing with Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong that with that. That is a goal for Liverpool. So, uh, as things stand, one apiece... At Anfield, Liverpool not behind for that long in the end. Uh, only about 25 minutes Liverpool behind. And they go back into 1.29 to win this match. The tie, 5.8. Brighton out to 10.5. So that uh, um, double chance on Brighton that I was telling you was um, was two just a few minutes ago. Doesn't look quite so appealing now, does it? Um, more goals in this match. Over 4.5 you have to go to to get to 1.7. Yeah. Over 5.5, 2.65. Are we in the region there? Um, sports bet di- di- IO boffins are obviously protecting themselves against um, this one being a crazy game because we saw them yesterday. Are we in the range there of kind of looking at the over, <coughs> excuse me, the over four point five mark and thinking under four point five at two point one three might be a play? Too risky for me. The, the, the game is so open, isn't it? We've seen Brighton score. We've seen Liverpool have countless chances. Um, we've seen Brighton struggle to keep goals out when they're on the road. You know, like I say, they conceded four at Luton, they conceded three at, at Fulham. Liverpool are a much more potent side and they've got the the, the need for goals because of the goal difference aspect. So I, I, I think the, the, the traders got it right. Four and a half goals is about right. It's going to be four or five. Um, the question is, is it 3-1 or 4-1 to Liverpool? by the end of this game and I think it's, it's going to be one of those scores to be honest Brighton are up the Liverpool end now as the ball gets played across oh and, chance oh that was a chance that was a Huge. really good chance but when you see that oh. Liver- Liverpool are giving away chances like that I think it was offside anyway actually so Dingra who uh, had a left footed effort there but I think you're right the flag was up um, Alexi tell me what did um, Gav say about Arsenal fans I want to know um, and uh, we have got um, goal says Martin from Liverpool goal Liverpool says Ente Lexi Diaz um, Sheriff Janine is sharing his best bets. He says, I've just put the bet slip and Liverpool and Celta scored. Um, so let's have a look at what he's got here. He's gone for over 0.5 goals in the uh, oh in the Celta Vigo match. Real Vallecano, happy days. Um, a Hartberg against Rapid Vienna. Both teams to score, yes. Um, Vyberg against uh, v- Hivivdo. Hivivdo, <laughs> yeah. Um, Vyberg to win, anyway. And uh, yes, um, both teams to score in the Augsburg-Cologne game. So good luck with that one. 
um, Charif. Hopefully that comes in for you. And uh, good luck, everybody out there. Share your, be- share your bets with us so we can cheer you on as we Ooh. go. Celta's goal cancelled, says Charif. Alexi's got a big thumbs up. I think there's a play in the Netherlands as well for that Feyenoord game. They're trail 2-1 at home to um, Utrecht, but uh, totally dominating the game. Um, I would really look at, at Feyenoord to win that one. You can get 2.38 oh. on Feyenoord. 45 minutes, so it's half time. 45 minutes to go. 11 shots to three in the first half. They're 2-1 down, but they've had 11 shots to three. They've had 77% possession to 23 there's a lot of things going for Feyenoord in that game. They're at home. They're a strong team anyway. They're the defending champions in the Netherlands. 2.38 for them to turn that round in 45 minutes at home. I would definitely have that. Um, we're watching uh, the De Zerbi job interview, potentially, aren't we? Maybe, yeah. But is it a job interview for Liverpool or is it a job interview for somewhere else? Well, he's touted as being Liverpool. I don't it, think he's Jürgen a good Klopp, fit for Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp even answered the question about um, De Zerbi in the run-up to this match about whether he would be good to take it over. Side netting uh, a shot there for Brighton. Uh, but uh, De Zerbi obviously getting that early goal, but it's one apiece now at Anfield for his Brighton team. Um, and it looks like Alonso's staying in Germany, so it's not going to be him. Yes. Yeah, Alonso's definitely staying in Germany for at least another season. Um, there is, there's, you know, Liverpool are looking hard and I'm looking probably a lot of places for a manager, but I don't think De Zerbi is a great fit. He doesn't play... 4-3-3. You know, his formations, as we see today, he's playing three at the back. Liverpool! Shot on target! Shot on target for Mo Salah. At it hits last. the keeper. It doesn't go in the back of the net, Alexi, but free bet lands. So, clubhouse creatures, you know what to do, don't you? You know what to do. As soon as I put go, go, go into the uh, into the clubhouse telegram chat, um, we need your sportsbet.io usernames. And uh, stick them in, and then uh, Simon will uh, fire up the random number generator, and we will pull out two worthy winners of 10 USDT. We'll go again as well for another spot bet before half time. My turn, isn't it, for uh, the next one? Yes. It's not going to be most allowed to have another shot on target because we had to wait for too long for that one. Um, but uh, we will uh, come up with another one as well when we've pulled the winners out for this. It came in the end. He, uh, yeah. he, he should have done better, actually, with that shot. Yeah, because it was um, a good, sympathetic pass played through to him. Darwin Nunes having a good game, and um, he, he ran onto it. And he, I think he could have taken another touch. He could have gone on into the penalty area and maybe he had a, a closer opportunity. You know, he should have read the stats about how close you have to be now to to score goals. Was it 14.2 metres? He was well outside 14.2 metres when he had that shot. He was <laughs> near a 17.7, which is like 20 years ago. Yeah, got his tape measure with him today, Simon. Mm. Um, so uh, plenty of entries coming in. If you've uh, not put your entry in, get it in now. Sportsbet.io username 10 USDT could be yours um, with Clubhouse TV and Sportsbet.io this afternoon. And uh, more chances as we go through this game between Liverpool and Brighton. Um, I'll put the stop, stop, stop in soon. And then we'll uh, we'll pull out on the random number generator a uh, couple of um, winners. I'll give you about another 20 or 30 seconds. So if you haven't done it yet, get your sportsbet.io username. My, my telegram's really slow to update today. It, so's mine. My, mine. I still got go, go, go as my last uh, message. We have had <laughs> entries. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We have they had, just uh, haven't appeared on my screen. Yeah, well, they, they, they have come. Mm. But uh, yeah, they, You'll not... have to give me a few more seconds then to uh, gather up the, uh, the correct entrance before I can do the random. How do, how do you refresh it? Is there a way? Uh, Let's have a look. Top. Can't see. Maybe you have to close, go into another another one, and then come back and open it up again. There we go. Has that has that helped? Yeah, that's helped. Um, so I'm going to write stop, stop, stop. Going in now. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I think down to Slissy. Okay. Well, ah, yes, I see now. They are all there. Uh, they're all uh, so. Good for, luck, everybody. Yeah. Ten USDT up for grabs. Pull out the first number, Simon. Here come Liverpool down the right. As Simon uh, fires up his random number it is generator. 16. Number 16. Uh, how many did I say was in you there? You said there were 16. Well, Slissy. Yeah. The director of corners and Bolivian football. Congratulations. You have 10 USDT on its way to you. And the second winner, Simon B. I need to actually do this today, don't I? Because we haven't got a producer. I need to actually uh, get my um, rear ending gear and actually do some work. Seven. It is seven. So one is Alexi, two, three, four. That's Ishak, isn't it? Ishak. Congratulations, Ishak. Congratulations, both of you. 
Um, very well done, everybody. We're very well done indeed. Um, Chance right. for Brighton over the bar. It's still end to end this game. Mentioned over two and a half goals first half some time ago at 2.75. There's 10 minutes to go. That could still easily land. Liverpool to score in both halves was recommended at 2.02. That is going to land surely. Liverpool have got the first half goal now. They're going to score more in this game. Um, but four and a half goals, that is definitely doable in this game. They, they could easily get five between them. I think Brighton might have another goal in them. I think Liverpool have got potentially three or four more left in them. And there is that goal difference aspect. We mentioned that they, they could really want to put a pile of pressure on by getting a, their goal difference up. So overall, the Asian total over 4.5 is now 1.9x, right on the cusp of two there. But I think that's definitely worth taking. Mm. Yeah, I... I, I Look at this, it's end-to-end -end from one corner. We, well, we They're streaking that, through again here, Liverpool. We said earlier that you know if Liverpool got every incentive to keep the foot down today, and uh, well, they're, they're certainly, it's a really good game, isn't it? It's is a really good game, this. I'm enjoying it. And obviously, the, a big one to come as well later. Look at this, there could the be a yellow. In the top three. Could be another yellow card coming here as well. Yeah, I mean, basically, we, we, we don't usually get goals, cards and corners all happening at the same time, but they are in this, aren't they? Yeah, we've had, uh, is it two yellows? Um, probably about six corners now, five, five corners, and um, two goals, obviously. But yeah, I could see another yellow card in the first half as well. That was a, uh, well, there's a couple of challenges there. This one from Diaz, clumsy. Clumsy, but I don't think it's a yellow. And there was one after that as well. Mm. So, one piece, uh, Anfield, tell us how you're betting. Tell us, uh, do we ever look at the final results of that poll? And um, we've got, uh, well, the people who voted said 62% Liverpool would be top of the table come the end of um, the day. Arsenal would be 25% uh, 25 pe 25 of people's choices and 13% said Man City. If anybody's not voted in the poll, it was one of the first posts around about uh, six I think minutes it's past Is two. it closed now? Oh, is it closed? Okay. I think it might be. Oh, yeah. I could always do it again. Should I do it again? Do it again, yeah. Let's do it again now we've got everybody watching. So I'll, I'll, put the, uh, I'll put the poll out again. So vote for us and uh, tell us who you think is going to be Top of the three come the end of uh, play today. I'll stick the poll back in the chat. And uh, I'm just interested because there's only one point covering the top th top three teams in the uh, Premier League. It's crazy. Yeah. And uh, Liverpool at the moment passing up the opportunity to to really um, put the pressure on the other two. There's loads of time left though. Like I say, I think there's more goals in this game. Liverpool almost created a, an opportunity a few seconds ago with a cross from the byline and then the Brighton defenders seem to stop here. Another shot goes over the bar. Liverpool's shot count must be up towards 20 already. In 37 minutes, I reckon they've had 20 shots. Yeah. So, Slissy and Ishak, congratulations to you. We need another thing to do before we get to half-time. Uh, hopefully to land before we get to half-time. Here come Liverpool again. And no, that was a replay. Was a replay. Yeah. I thought it was exactly the same as before. <laughs> um, it's carbon copy. Um, right, should we go for a corner for... for, 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 for um, a corner for Liverpool. A corner for Liverpool lands the next um, spot bet. Okay. A corner for Liverpool lands the next spot bet. So if, if in the crazy days that we live in, that probably won't happen at all. Now. They'll probably not get another corner for the entire I'm match. I'm getting a bit worried about my French treble as well because Nice are really playing poorly don't in this game. Don't let it stress your side. Yeah. So in the other games, uh, Le Havre haven't scored against Montpellier yet, but looking at the stats in that one, it is... Yeah, it's pretty even, actually, 50-50. Uh Toulouse lead at Claremont, which is good because we need Toulouse to win, and it's deservedly so. They're completely battering them, actually. And then in the other game, which is not going our way, uh, Nice losing at home to Nantes. And the stats in that one are fa favouring Nantes in a, in a good, bad way for Nice there. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag, really, in in France on that treble. But I do really recommend Feyenoord, back in Feyenoord, around 2.4, just kicking off the second half to beat Utrecht. They're um, a much better side at home, dominating the game. Really, they should win. And uh, 2.4 is a nice price. If they do win today, they would cut PSV's lead at the top to seven points. Uh, Utrecht are down in sixth. So uh, definitely find out a much better side than Utrecht usually. It's a mixed day. It's a sack mixed day. Sack mixed day. Yeah. Okay. Mi a mixed bag in French, that is. All right. Yeah. And sack mixed. Yeah. So uh, Liverpool... 
having a plenty of possession, aren't they now? They have um, since they conceded that early goal. They're back on level terms now. Stats wise, this uh, this first half, xG exactly one for Liverpool, not point zero eight for Brighton, <laughs> and fifty six percent possession for Liverpool. Eleven goal attempts to three. Mo Salah's had most of them. Um, three shots on goal to one, and uh, they have had uh, the best of the corner count as well. Three corners to two in favour of the uh, the home side. So they uh, they're ruling the roost on every stat apart from the uh, the goal line, the goal scored. But he, he I mean, I, do you know what? I'd, I'd actually be tempted if I was at home playing along today. I might just have a little nibble on Liverpool to score again before half time. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Six minutes left, or just just under six minutes left in the first half, and they're all over them really. Uh, Brighton are still offering a bit of a threat on the counter attack, and they've got the pace. You know that 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 can still get them a goal. But Liverpool look a more consistent threat to get the that, uh, next goal. That's when Brighton have looked dangerous, isn't it? When they've attacked down that left hand side yeah, with Adingra, pace. Adingra. He's yeah. he's great, isn't he? He's got to, mm. his legs are on fire. It's, oh, oh, Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool! No, not quite. We could still oh, no. Then now, chance for Brighton to break. Adingra needs to go. Here. here we go. Here we go. He's actually not gone with um, full pelt this time. But no. uh, Brighton have got the ball inside he's the uh, Liverpool he's half. Only just coming into the picture now. Go on, get your feet moving, man. Ball played out to the right. Lampsy picks it up nicely. Lampsy's only about the size of Willie Nonto, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Willie missed the game on Friday, didn't he? He uh, is, yeah. He's injured at the moment. his game, yeah. Muscle injury picked up when playing for the Italians. Mm. But, uh, yeah, it was a top. We're talking about how tight the top and bottom and end of the, uh, um, the Premier League is and Scotland as well. But the Championship, that top end of the Championship's crazy. Yeah. Um, only uh, only a few points covering uh, Ipswich are on eighty three. Um, Southampton are currently on seventy four. But if they win the they, if they win their couple of games in hand, they'd be on eighty. And they're, do you, you play Southampton last game of the season? Yeah, they they basically if Southampton win their game in hand games in hand, they'd be uh, only four points covering the top four in the uh, championship. But uh, yeah, that that last game of the season against Southampton could be absolutely vital. The way it's going, it's going to the. One of the two promotion, automatic promotion places will be decided last game of the season, won't they? So you mm. just hope that from a Leeds perspective, you're, you're one of the top two going into that last well, game. I mean, let's face it. If you look at uh, the top end of the Premier League, the bottom end of the Premier League, top end of the Championship, um, Scotland, etc. There's probably going to be a very, very big last, uh, last couple of rounds of fixtures, aren't there? It's going to be all to play for. I mean, you'd imagine that out of the four teams at the top of the Championship, one of them might just drop away a little bit, but... At the moment, nobody's dropping away. Everybody's been well, telling Leicester. me. Well, Leicester are dropping yeah. away, but they're dropping away from a great height, aren't they? But everybody's been telling me for um, weeks on end that Ipswich would tail off, but they haven't. And they're actually the, the yeah. form team at the moment. Mm. So it's yeah. uh, this is this is the time as time. Oh, of corner! The, oh, corner, corner for Liverpool! Corner for Liverpool! Corner yep. for Liverpool! It comes to absolutely nothing for them, but Liverpool get the corner and it lands another spot bet. So that'll probably be the last one of the first half, won't it? And then we'll uh, we'll go, go, go again in the uh, second half and hopefully land you at three spot bets there. Get your sportsbet.io usernames in now and uh, we'll draw out the winners before we get to half time. Get your sportsbet.io usernames into the Telegram chat and, uh, hope, well, two more of you will be um, 10 USDT better off. Could be, oh, almost another good chance for... Uh for Liverpool there, but uh, the pass was... And there's a foul, and referee, he needs to start booking these players. He, that's a Liverpool foul from Gomez, he got away with it, but uh, the referee, having issued those two yellow cards early on, has just suddenly stopped uh, giving them out now. Slissy says, um, again, we can't trust Liverpool to win the first half. It has been a regular feature of Liverpool, not just this season, but for a while now, that conceding first goals in matches and, mm. and, and kind of maybe struggling first half and then running away with it second half. It is a Liverpool thing, that isn't it, and uh, something that we probably should have mentioned at the start today. But um, yeah, I, I've had a few bets this season, slits of uh, goals in the first half of Liverpool matches or Liverpool to be ahead by half time. They're a second and, half uh, team, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, very rarely have come in this season. But from a Liverpool fan perspective, you'd be saying, all right, we're level at half time. That means we're going to win the game because we are such a stronger mm. second half team than you know than any other. Really, it's one of those. The Brighton just scored too early, didn't they? Yeah, you'd, Maybe. if you score in the yeah. second minute, you've got another 88 to hold on. Mm. It's, it's, that's a long time to try and survive. See, there's been a different opinion now to the who's going to finish top of the Premier League after today's games with the more votes we've had in. So Man City were, were bottom of the original poll, but they've come into second place now behind Liverpool and uh, Arsenal uh, are in third at 21%. 
I'll put the uh, stop, stop, stop in in about 20 seconds. If you're watching and you've not put your sportsbet.io username into the Telegram chat, now is your chance. Uh, it's your last chance. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Stop, stop, stop. Gets into the chat and uh, we will uh, pull out two more winners. I'm just going to de delete those uh, messages at the bottom end there in a foreign language, okay. which I don't understand. And might be rude. And um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Down to Koki. Twelve, thirteen, thirteen entries. Okay. Thirteen. Let's pull out two Good more chance. winners. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's set it on its way. Are you doing the wheel? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> so old fashioned, Simon. And it is three. So that is who was the first one? Alexi, then Fretless, then O. Oh. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. It's Augusta. Yep. 61. And the next well one. Well done, O. Well done. The next one is 13, which was the last, wasn't it? It's um, Hakan then, Hakan. isn't it? Yes, congratulations, Well done, Hakan. Hakan. Hakan 2217 goes on to my list of winners. And well played to both of you. O and Hakan are winners in the second round of the spot bets there. We'll do another one at the start of the second half. If we don't do it, remind us, because we are lax and, uh, and lazy. And uh, we will get you try and get you as many of the spot bets landed as we can do. Then uh, when we come to the uh, the final game today, um, we'll, do, uh, we'll have something that we need to happen. And uh, we might put some kind of... Um, um, build a bet kind of version yeah. on that final one. So many corners, so many goals, so many uh, cards or something. And if we get that landed, then the uh, the um, ten times ten USDT will come available. I thought of a good one. What about over? Oh, so you've just listened to what I've said, and now you're just gonna yeah, you're gonna poo poo it, aren't you? I was gonna say, what, poo -poo about, what about over you're eight? Poo it. Over eight minutes of stoppage time, either in the first half or the second half. Yesterday, the amount of stoppage time in games was getting a bit silly, wasn't it? It was mm. like 12 minutes in either half of the Newcastle versus West did, Ham game. Did you see what Chris Wilder said when he was asked about it? No. He said, um, uh, the, the lady interviewing him said, what, what do you think about the, uh, the 14 minutes of added time at the end of the match? And he just went, oh, well, I'm, a, I'm just an honest Yorkshireman and I'm not going to tell you anything about that because I just get, I, I don't want to give all my money to the FA. <laughs> right. So he's obviously answered the question by not answering it there. But if you actually watch that match... The amount of goals in that second half, the amount of VAR checks, it was just it was the right amount of time to add. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not criticising it. I'm just saying it's how the game is now with all the VAR checks taking. I mean, they're, they're trying to get everything right, so they're, they're taking the time over the VAR checks. They're not just having one look at a first replay and they're going. They're taking oh, that's too fine. long. Maybe they are, but there was one yesterday. It's, it's led to a lot of stoppage time, we, and I think with this Arsenal versus Man City game being so big for the the league, we could see again. Mm. upwards of 10 oh, minutes the, the officials won't want to make a mistake today upwards of 10 minutes for yeah. either either of those halves they the officials job today is to make sure they're not the headlines tomorrow yeah um but yet there was there was a, an incident yesterday where we saw about three or four replays in the studio we'd called it it was obvious and yet we saw about another 20 before they actually did it you know gave it officially as being offside or whatever it was at the time it, it's just too long it, it, you know if, if it's not obvious um if it's not obvious with five replays, then it shouldn't be overturned. Yeah. That's that's how totally, I see totally it. Totally agree. So only four minutes at the end of the first half of Liverpool-Brighton, but it's been a flowing game. There's not been many stoppages, um, so that's probably a reason why it's only four. Second half here, I think you'll get substitutions, you'll get more VAR checks for goal, so we, we could see another 10 minutes of stoppage time at the end of the second half. We Does he get up here, Gross, and, and ask for the player to be booked I think he does right. and then they're not booking him for that anymore no. at the start of the season they were booking everybody for doing that as soon as anybody got up and went like this saying book him book him um, they were straight in the book themselves and that's how it should be shouldn't be telling the official how to referee the game you see in rugby they go yes sir no sir and kind of yeah, these yeah. massive great big six foot eight beasts are kind of bearing and scraping to referee in football they just swear at them and they get away mm. with it well, Vincent Company didn't get away with whatever he said to the referee yesterday, did he? He got sent off. He was absolutely livid yesterday. He's quite a mild-mannered creature when you see him interviewed, but he was... Did you think it was a penalty? Um, which one are we talking about now? Uh, so it was the one where Mudrick went down. He got tip tapped on the shoulder. Mudrick went down. <laughs> there was contact one there. Yeah. I think once the referee gives it, mm. it's hard for the VAR to overturn that, but I do think it was soft. Um, that's, that's what we said, I think, yesterday. Um, that it, was, it was a penalty. There was contact, but it was soft. 
But yeah, you you do well as a, an official to overturn that. But I think I think Vincent Company as a manager has got to learn that you can't get away with as much as a manager as you could as a player because you know players have been going up to referees and calling them this that and the other mm. for many years, especially if you're a star player like Vincent Company. Um, but he's gone from being a star player who's you know got a bit more leeway with what they can say to the referees on the pitch now it's just being the Burnley manager and you know that is a big. Now he can't get away with saying what he was saying Ooh. as a, as the Man City captain, just Ooh. to being the Burnley manager. Ooh, you, you football snob. Well, no, that, that's just how it works, <laughs> though, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if if Vincent Company's playing Liverpool and he, he does not happy with the decision, he can go up to the referee and he probably would swear and to get away with it. As the Burnley manager, you can't get away with that. One well, all then. Half time has come. We'll do another spot bet at the start of the second half. Thanks for watching today. Join us for the second half. Got a massive match coming up later as Manchester City take on Arsenal. Uh, but let's have a little chat with Jonathan Woodgate. So when you were at Real Madrid, uh, you had a number of managers, shall we say. Uh, was it a total of, in your time at Real Madrid, you had four or five managers? Yeah, four or five. I think. Can you pronounce them all? Because uh, <laughs> I, I struggled. I can, I can pronounce. Uh, in fact, I've got them here, actually. Uh, you had Jose Antonio Camacho, who signed you. Yeah. Then you had uh, Mariano Garcia Ramon, yeah. who gave you your debut. Then you had Vendelay Luxemburgo. Then you had Juan Ramon. Yeah, and then it ended with Fabio Capello. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah, crazy in the two years. But I think we had two presidents as well, by the way. Um, but the interesting thing with Fabio Capello, because this is why I, I brought this up, uh, England looking happy under Gareth Southgate was a complete contrast to England under Fabio Capello. Now you actually know both managers very well. Mm. Uh, was it Gareth Southgate who signed you for Middlesbrough? Middlesbrough. Yeah. yeah. So you've actually played under Fabio Capello, and you've played under Gareth Southgate as well what is the significant difference between those two managers and why England looked unhappy under one and very happy under the other? I'd go back to how Gareth manages his players. The two different people all together. One's a headmaster. The other one's a headmaster, but a lot, lot lighter and more affable, more approachable, more, I'd say, what's the word I'm looking for? More humanised. You can have a conversation with Gareth Southgate. You couldn't have like a really in-depth conversation with Capello face to face. It's a bit shut off. But with Gareth, you can ask him anything. He'll always help you. He's more of a father figure, mm. Gareth. But let's be honest, Fabio Capello's had an extraordinary career. Yeah. In 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 Italian football, won La Liga with with Madrid twice, and has been a top coach. So there's different ways of different ways of managing, and it was a different group of players then as well. How much more over the course of the last? I uh, don't know, decade, 15 years, has man management been in terms of being a manager at a group of players rather than being that headmaster role where you will do this, you will play this way, mm. uh, you'll, you'll, you'll follow the instructions. How much more uh, is man management now an important practice in, in the dressing room? Yeah, you've got to deal with different different personalities. And I've, I've said previous that all these players aren't wired up different. They've all had different upbringing. So you've got to manage them totally different to how you, you can't just manage them all the same. We're all different yeah. and we all respond to different characteristics and different parts of leadership. I'd say um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge part, but also as well, tactically is a huge part of, of the game now. And you see the way Guardiola players or Klopp players, are they great man managers? Who knows? Yeah. But what you see on the pitch, they're great tacticians. Uh, what were you like as a tactician, as a manager? Were you were you more of a man management or more tactician, or were you uh, even on, on on both? I say there's got to be there's got to be a balance. I'd say I'm I'm a manager that players can come and approach. They can they can talk to me, and I'm, what I am with players is I am totally honest. I don't beat around the bush. I'll tell them face to face, and they'll appreciate when they walk out that door. They'll know the manager hasn't lied. He's been totally honest. They might not, might not like what I'm saying to them. But they'll appreciate I'm I'm being honest, and I think that's a honesty is a massive a massive thing in management. Was there a manager, and you don't have to name them, but was there a manager that you struggled to get on with at all um, when you were a player? No, I'd say I got on with all my managers because I knew my job, I knew my role, I knew how to act, um, and if they were honest with me, I'd I'd appreciate it. Okay. Bobby Robson, for example, oh, legend. incredible legend. man manager, yeah. but he'd tell you face to face if you weren't playing well, but he tell you when you're walking out the door how good you've been and how good you can be and you can go even higher. 
Yeah, pushed you. Very yeah, good. Uh, thank you. Right, press the right buttons. Yeah, exactly. Uh, another question for Jonathan Woodgate behind the bet sportsbet.io. Oh, here we go. Question from Off Branded: Who would you consider the best coach you had? Who improved you the most and had the biggest impact on your career? Who improved me the most? I'd say Bobby Robson. I'd say just for his enthusiasm he gave me, his belief in me. Um, I wouldn't say that I worked a lot under him as a, as a player in, in defensively, um, but I'd say him. I'd say without question, I played some of my best football when I was at Newcastle. I've also got to look at David O'Leary when I was at when I was at Leeds, who at times was difficult with me because he knew I could go on to the next level and he, he always wanted the best. So I'll just say, for example, if I'd lost a few headers on a, on a Saturday and I was weak in the air, he used to have me back on afternoons practicing headers. Just me, him, and Eddie Gray, the assistant coach. Shot and balls in the air and I'd have to head it, get my timing right, but he was constantly on me. Um, but yeah, like I say, you learn a lot from every single coach. Tony Pewitt, for example, when I went to Stoke, I thought I knew everything when I went to Stoke. I thought it was a... Yeah, I just come from Spurs, blah, blah, blah. I had a decent enough career. And I thought I knew everything about defending. He was top. And I mean, on the defensive side of the game, of organisation and, and a structure to a team and setting a team up, no disrespect to, to Stoke, but set them up in a way not to get beat. Set them up in a way to show them how to beat teams. Right, you don't have to play great football. You have to score goals. And I learned a lot from him also. What was the uh, what was the big thing that Bobby Robson improved you most on as a player? Because you, you, I've heard you say before that you were you think your best time as a footballer mm. was at Newcastle yeah. United. I'd say I'd say confidence. Yeah. Just believe you can do more. Bring the ball out of defence. Don't just be happy with passing it to your fullback. Bring it out of defence. Attract the midfield and you pass it off. Be composed on the ball. Little things like that which take you to a take you to a different level. And you mentioned David O'Leary, who was the, the Leeds manager. Uh, I know it was George Graham, and then he became David O'Leary yeah. at Le when you were at Leeds. Uh, but there's a character in the Youth Academy who really pushed you for your heading, which was Paul Hart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Talk yeah. to me about how he made you improve your heading. Well, with, with Paul, I remember, first of all, I went away to a competition in, a, in, a, in America. We went there. Um, and I played really well in the tournament, bearing in mind I'm a 15-year-old kid playing in an under-18 tournament. So when I go there, I'm, I'm really nervous. Play anyway, do really well. Eddie Gray goes back, tells the club, you need to sign him on a pro contract when he turns 17. Brilliant. I'm over the moon. Anyway, I start the, the pre-season training. We're playing these games, and I'm, I'm losing headers for fun, like getting beat by smaller lads than me. And Paul Hart was an aggressive centre-half, but cultured as well. He could play. And he, was, he used to call me Ghost. So he said, Ghost, he said, listen, that pro contract's getting taken off you if you don't start heading the ball. So you can imagine what I was doing nearly every every other day. He just called me Ghost because I was doing a pre-season with the 18s. I was 14-year-old and they were all running up the hills. I couldn't keep up. I was running up these hills, right, getting nowhere. Anyway, I ended up being sick, white as a sheet. And that's why he still calls me Ghost now. If he saw yeah. me now, he called me Ghost. Uh, we've just had some breaking news, by the way. I've just looked up and there's some breaking news that Roger Federer is set to retire from tennis. We've just had that breaking news. So uh, an absolute legend in the world of tennis that Roger Federer is set to retire from tennis. And boy, what a career he's had, by the way. <laughs> hey, incredible. Proper player. Proper, proper player. Uh, right, another question uh, for Jonathan Woodgate, uh, behind the bed at sportsbed.io. Question from King Shane 101 What is the biggest difference between the Premier League and the Liga during your playing days and possibly still to this day? Yes, yeah, still to this day uh, in the Liga, the players have a lot more, I'd say, quality on the ball, especially when you go down the league. So, say, between 10th to 20th, they'll all play and they're all really good on the ball. Not as quick as um, the Premier League. The Premier League's fast and furious. You need to be a machine, really. You have to get up and down. If you look at a lot of the midfielders in the Premier League now, they can all run. Whereas in the Liga, you can you can play, you can pass. The game's not played at, at the same intensity. There is this thinking, uh, and it's said quite a lot, certainly for, for fans of the Premier League, that uh, the Liga is not an easier league to win, but you can have, if you're playing for some of the top teams, you can have off days and still win. Mm. 
Whereas in the Premier League, as been proven with Manchester City, you know, uh, they've dropped points uh, against sides that haven't in the past because they have a slight off day and they're caught unaware. Is that is that an actual thing or is that just utter nonsense that only football fans would say? No, I think I think that's right. I think because in that league where you've got like the likes of Madrid, Atletico, Barca, they're your top teams, Sevilla, um, Valencia back in the day. But the players were so, so much of a higher quality than the lesser teams that they could have an off day because they knew someone. If they were getting beat one or two nil, they got someone to pull them out of it. Mm. Whereas if you look at a Man United, Brentford against Man United, yeah. or a Brighton against Man United, yeah. you can easily get turned over. Where it's league, it's not as it's not as easy as that. Yeah, I do because I do wonder why you know Pep Guardiola has obviously managed in the uh, La Liga, uh, and he put after a few years at Barcelona. I say a few years; it was a good number of seasons at Barcelona, but then he left. Mm. He then went to Bayern Munich, good for a number of seasons there. He left, but at Man City, he's been there at the longest, and I wonder if it's because of the competitive edge of the Premier League, where you need to be on it game in game out to succeed that actually keeps him in the Premier League I think the reason is because he hasn't won the Champions League and that as well yeah at at Man City but you're right you can't have enough in the Premier League do you think Man City will win the Premier League the The, Champions League yeah this year this year yeah they'll win it this season I think Haaland makes a huge difference a huge difference his uh, his goal uh, last night was pretty good wasn't it (sighs) how would you defend it that's the question. I'm a different right. right. Because their centre, the left side centre back, they went the three at the back, right? I don't know what else he can do because the balls, the ball is past the left, the uh, the left post. And I think to myself, how are you going to get into that? And what else can that centre back do? Right. So my question to you then is, if you are facing Haaland, how would you deal with him? How would I deal with Haaland? Well, yeah. I wouldn't leave a lot of space in behind me. Right. That's for starters. And I'd be reading situations where the ball's going to go along. I'll be dropping off a, a few more yards before that. I think if you leave a lot of space for him or he's not marked in the box, you're doomed. But like, you've seen some of his goals this season. Oh. I mean, he was strong, money. he? Really yeah, strong. The, the thing with Holland as well is that he's, he's, he's not, you know, it's noticeable that he has some games where he has very few touches, mm. but then he can still score two. And that's exactly what the best strikers do, isn't it? What's the most important thing in football? Scoring goals, scoring and it's goals. the hardest thing. And I don't think he's too bothered about not having a load of touches yeah. because he's got players in that team who can have them touches. As long as they supply the ball for Haaland in the box, he's guaranteeing you goals. Best striker in the uh, Premier League for you by quite a distance? Um, yeah, he's out, he's he's outstanding. He's only still young as well, and he's out. I wouldn't say by an, an incredible distance. I, I, let's put Harry Kane uh, how good he's been over the years, but I think Haaland's going to be on the next level to. A lot of strikers. And he was born in Leeds, of course, Harland. He's he's a local boy to where we are now. Do you know his dad? Born in Yorkshire. I played with his dad. Yeah. Alfinger. Yeah. Yeah. Did he, did he have any? Did he come in one day and go? I've, I've, my my son, by the way, he, he started kicking the ball around. He's pretty good at this. <laughs> it's not bad. Is it's he? Not bad. I think he might have a future in this game. <laughs>
Um, I think Liverpool can really press home their advantage in the second half. So, third goal, Liverpool, 1.41, should land. Um, Liverpool to win and both teams to score, should absolutely land. Second half, both teams to score, not so sure on that one. It's 2.78, second half, both teams to score. But um, Liverpool win and... Hmm, could you get Liverpool winning over three and a half goals? That would definitely be worth looking at as well if you could. And the anytime goal scorers, you mentioned it as well to me. You've backed Mo Salah to score in the second half. Uh, he's 1.87 as an anytime goal mm-hmm. scorer. Had so many good opportunities, got into great positions in the first half. I think he will probably score as well. That, that's how I spent my half time, Clubhouse, which is I put a bet on Mo to get two or more goals in this game. So uh, And he's a captain of my fantasy team. So that's completely written him off now, hasn't it? He's going to get no end of scoring. But hopefully like he does. Double hopefully backed he, him ho- there. Hopefully he does. Um, Chi, hello to you. Hello, Chi. Good to see you today in China. And uh, Chi, hopefully you're well. Tell us what you're, uh, you're bec- betting on today. And uh, good to have you with us on Clubhouse TV and Sportsbet.io. Yeah, and for the spot bet, I think we're just going to go for a goal, aren't we? Just a, yeah, next goal. Either team to score. Yeah, next goal lands next spot bet. If we haven't got a goal, um, and we we both fancy goals in this, so we're expecting a goal to come fairly soon. But um, if we haven't got one by around about the minute sort of sixty-five or something, we'll add something else to go alongside of it um, to uh, make sure we get uh, at least one or two more spot bets landing for us as we go through the second half. But we're underway for the second half, and the ball played uh, downfield by Brighton. But it's uh, very much um, stats-wise, it's very much been I think Liverpool's game. So far, apart from the uh, the goals scored, they seem to be increasing their possession as the as the match goes on as well. It was fairly even in the early stages of this one, but uh, defending from Kwanzaa. As the game has gone on, good defending from Kwanzaa. Their, their percentage has gone up. Si. Um now fifty seven percent possession for uh, Liverpool, just creeping up all yeah. the time. He's good, a good young kid, isn't he? They've got some great young players. Well, he he's in the the position where um, Adingra is attacking now. So at first half, Adingra was Brighton's main threat. He was getting in behind Bradley because Bradley is an attacking fullback, clearly. So there's space there for Adingra to attack. And Kwanzaa is the first line of defence. And he was found out a little bit in that first half. But his first um, bit of defending in the second half was very good. And he's a good defender. I mean, you know, he's, he's, being, young. he's being picked ahead of Canate mm. today, which shows you how well thought of he is around Anfield by Jurgen Klopp. And you've got Conor Bradley at right back, Kwanzaa in the uh, centre of uh, centre of defence. You've got two of the uh, the youngsters of Liverpool but doing a very very good job. Yeah, so I mean, from Brighton's point of view, it, that's the obvious place to attack. You know, it's the one area of weakness maybe that you might be able to find but at the moment, you know, they, they've scored one goal. Um, they haven't really been able to, um, you know, get more than than that just that one early opportunity really um who did you captain um everybody in your fantasy teams this weekend because it's not the ob- sometimes you go into a weekend and there's an obvious uh um team that you're going to pick your captain from i don't think it was this weekend so I'd, I'd be interested to know who you picked as your captain in your fantasy teams i'm going to put that in the uh in the message board as well um to see if we can get some response to that who did you captain in your fpl side yeah uh, yeah, Ivan Tony um, didn't score last night, did he? But he did uh, get an assist for that uh, that very late equaliser. He's a good I think, player. I think a few people would have been looking at Ivan Tony maybe against the Man United defence. When you're picking your Euros um, squad, you're Gareth Southgate for a minute before you go on to Manchester United. Um, are you picking Ivan Tony? Are you picking yeah. uh, um, uh, of the strikers you've got? At your disposal? You obviously Harry Kane's inked in as long as he's fit. You've got Ollie Watkins in contention. You've got Ivan Tony. Would you class Rashford as a striker? In the, if you're going to, if you're writing your squad um, down, is he in the striker category? I think no. I, I I think Rashford is, as far as England are concerned, he's not a striker. You've got far better options. You know, probably out, Rashford is not in the top ten England striker options. But for Man United, um, he has to play there because they've got Hoyland and nobody else really. You know, Marti- Martial's always injured, um, so. Rashford is classed as a striker at Man United, but I don't think he would be for England. Um, Alexi's saying, can you guess mine? Yes, I know who yours is, Alexi. You, you and me both on Mo, aren't we? And uh, now I've backed him to score two or more in the second half. Alexi, he's got no chance. I think I've probably completely, I've double scuppered him now. But uh, hopefully, fingers crossed. Brighton playing out of Liverpool's press very well. Gets to the halfway nice play. line and they get a free kick. That oh, was really nice play. Virgil van Dijk was tested there. A and, yellow uh, card for him as well. That didn't look like a yellow card offence. So two yellow cards in the first yeah. four minutes of the second half. The referee has um, recently found his cards again. Would you have given him a yellow card for that? He no. was running alongside of him, wasn't he? No, there's not much in it, is there? It's a foul. 
Oh, oh he, he does, does grab, no, he, yeah. He does grab his neck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you see it from a different him. angle, he does uh, strangle him. So, yeah, I, I guess a yellow card is probably due for that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, free kick for Brighton. Probably not going to get many chances to get the ball forward. Um, and they're going to, it's uh, nearly the halfway line, so it's not going to be lumped by Brighton. They're going to keep possession, probably wise, to be fair. And not to just return the ball straight back to Liverpool and try and build uh, from the halfway line to Brighton. Uh, very much in this game, though. We're kind of very mm. much um, looking at it from the Liverpool perspective, title race. And um, we, we are anticipating Liverpool to score second, third, maybe even fourth goal yes. and to romp away with this one. But Brighton will have other ideas, so si, won't they? Yeah, um, I just wonder if they've got that um, that player that can sniff out the easy chance. Though we saw the goal they scored from Danny Welbeck. Great goal. You know, but it's a 0.08 XG chance. You know, it's a volley from the edge of the box with a couple of defenders in front of him. He hit it really well. But can can Brighton carve out the easy chances? You know, the, the tap ins from five yards. Um, and you know, have when it when it when they do carve out a chance where there is a possible tap in from five yards, is there going to be anybody there, or is Danny Welbeck, you know, not able to to be in two places at once? If you like, if he's created the chance, can he actually get on the end of it as well? So that would be my concern with them. They look good in the build-up phase, but are they actually going to be have somebody on the spot to put the chance away? Um, Brian do well there because the ball was launched downfield by Kelleher, almost to the edge of their penalty area, but they managed to get uh, get the ball away. Um, so it remains one apiece as we uh, hit the 52nd minute at Anfield. Liverpool won, Brighton won. Elsewhere around the uh, the world in France, we've got uh, Clement Nil to lose one. Nil nil between Le Havre and Montpellier and Nice against Nantes. Same time uh, spent in that game, those games as the one at uh, Anfield. Yeah, France, uh, as we saw before from Alexei stats, the uh, the lowest XG and the lowest goals per game of the big five leagues this season. Um, Augsburg won, Köln won as uh, they approach half time in the Bundesliga. So that's kind of gone to type, hasn't it? Over 0.5 first half goals, both teams to score. Goals coming in the Bundesliga on this Sunday. Uh, did you back Feyenoord at half time? That was recommended at 2. Point three eight. They were 2-1 down at the break, now leading 3-2. Marvellous stuff. Good work, Simon Barlow. Simon and uh, alongside me, James, with you this afternoon. No producer today, so we're pressing all the buttons ourselves as we go through uh, this scary, afternoon. And yeah, we're, we're basically in charge, everybody. Yeah, that, yeah. That's very scary. Yeah, we, we got kind of back to the old days, aren't we, really? Because um, we got so used to having producers in now. I had to come in and set it all up myself and do it all myself today. Uh, Brighton are doing all right in the second half, aren't they? Um, Liverpool just getting down the uh, the left hand side now with Nunes. He's uh, pulled out wide there, hasn't he? He's, uh, yeah. Edge of the area, chance to shoot, maybe. Is Mo off? Mm, no, he's so. there. He's there. He's yes. there. Honestly, I, started, I was looking around thinking, where is he? They haven't substituted him, but yeah, he is still out. Oh, there. that's a poor throw out from Verbruggen. Gives uh, Liverpool give, give it to Mo. Straight give back. Give it to Mo. Give it to Mo. He's there. Give it to Mo. What are you doing? Um, so we are still one apiece. Um, the, the script is Liverpool to go 2 1 3 1 4 1 and it to be comfortable, but at the moment, uh, Brighton are defending um, very strongly indeed. Yeah, there's a lot of intensity in the game. It's good to see uh, Brighton are trying to match Liverpool's intensity, but I don't know. I think Liverpool still just got the edge at the moment as uh, Salah gets it, slides it across. Jaboshalai shoots, not a great effort. Might be a corner this if it goes. And it spins sp- back in. Spans back towards yeah. Darwin Nunes. And uh, yeah, it was like he was on a bit of string, that. He was like pulling it back towards Has it. Dave T gone to this game today? I don't no, know, actually. No. I don't know. Just no. wonder whether he's done his usual uh, superstitious uh, things that he needs to do. We don't, we don't live together, me and Dave T. I don't know, no, every, okay. I don't know all of his yeah. movements. <laughs> you went on with him yesterday, were you? No, he was He was off. Must he, it's Easter weekend, isn't it? So he's maybe gone off with the kids somewhere. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. Um, sometimes go, he, he hails from Cumbria, DT, so he sometimes heads that way when he's got a chance to get away. Brighton um, still trying to, to go long, more sort of direct than that, they were in the first half. That's not the right way to do this, is it? In my, I mean, in my humble opinion. Uh, it's not... <sighs> It's not their style, but sometimes you need to adapt on the fly. And if, if they think that there's going to get more joy doing that against this Liverpool no. team... Oh, I thought that was going to be the first one of the two that I need. Mm. And so did Mo Salah, I think. Oh, he's, he's had his chances today, hasn't he? Oh, Alexi. This was a teasing cross. And he's jumped... Oh, it's just, just too high. Unable to get it on. I mean, he's got target. big fuzzy hair, hasn't he? And he just skimmed the top of it. But um, 
Yeah, he's getting close. Getting close, this mate. Is, this is good from Brighton, actually. Oh, just having said that, they're giving the ball away. Here is Mo. Go on, Mo. Go on, Mo. Go on, Mo. Go on, son. Go on, lad. Oh, he tries to dink through. Penalty, ref. Penalty. No. He'll take it. Oh. No. That's, and that's another reason to... Because Mo would take the penalty, wouldn't Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He would. Go on, give it a... Give it a they, might, think, they might look at it. They might look at it. I think Pascal Gross would be the... He clips him. Referee, that's, that's going to be a penalty. Uh, it's going to be a penalty. I don't know. He, get, he touches him there. I don't think he clips him. I think, he does. I think he... Simon. I think Salah initiates the contact. Whose side are you on, Si? So, if the defender's just stood there and Mo Salah backs into him, as it was on that occasion, that's not a penalty. I'm with Jürgen on this one. I mean, with, I'm with Jürgen on this one. Um, should have been a penalty, Alexi. I'm sure Alexi agrees with me. Mm. I mean, come on. It's that... You see some penalties given like that. That's a penalty for me. Brighton are playing a risky game, but um, I might be biased though. I think if it if it pays off, this you know if it pays off, this is um, as you say a great a great got job interview the, for uh, Roberto De Zerbi. The trouble is with lumping it along like Brighton are doing. You're just giving the ball back to Liverpool half the time, but Liverpool then give the ball back to Brighton in this instance. Yeah. Liverpool's press is very good. Reckon, so I think Brighton was, are worried about trying to play through it too often and trying to mix it up a bit more. Do you reckon that was De Zerbi's half-time team talk? If I'm going to get this job, <laughs> I, you can't be going out there conceding loads of goals, boys. Come on, go out there and do mm. it for my, my future job prospects. I'll make sure at least two of you are Liverpool players come this time next year. Yeah. yeah. It's a... McAllister's made a few fouls and he's on a yellow card, so he's got to be careful. I bet that's, that is one reason to maybe pick... Does, do you reckon that goes into the... Um, the the boardrooms. Oh, Brighton. No, yeah. no. Oh, oh that's dreadful. don't you? Way, dreadful. way outside 17 metres. That's, or yeah, that's, that's metres. pushed the average up. Uh, yeah. Do you reckon that goes into any um, board's um, decisions on a future manager? Which club they're coming from and who they could poach with him? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, if we, if we pick De Zerbi, he could probably bring Matoma with him. I'm not sure it would be in Liverpool's thoughts. I mean, Liverpool have got McAllister anyway, who played for De Zerbi last season. So, you know, that's that's one link they would have already there. I, you would imagine that would be a conversation, wouldn't you? If they if they do realistically look at De Zerbi, they'd go and have a chat with Alexi McAllister. Yeah, of course, yeah. I and mean, say, what was he really like? What's he really like? Tell me what he's really like. They'd, they'd do all the homework anyway. And, you know, they'd probably ask James Milner, who plays this season. Um, but, yeah, Liverpool's manager's... Position is going to be an interesting fill, isn't it? You know, um, that's going to as soon as this season finishes, that's going to be the story, isn't it? Liver, who's going to get the job? Because they're, they're doing the work behind the scenes now. So you'd imagine mm. the way Liverpool are quite efficient when it comes to stuff like that. It won't be too long after they give the party to Jurgen. It won't be too long before he's replaced. No, absolutely not. No, they'll want they'll want to keep things going. There might be a week between Jurgen leaving and uh, the new man sitting in his chair, but. Yeah. They'll want it to be as seamless as possible. Oh, that's a yellow card. I'm afraid that is a blatant yellow card for Joe Gomez. So there you go. He's picking out a few, isn't he? The the, the think ref. The referee has done a really good job of understanding what both teams are trying to do. That's five yellows now. Yeah, and this is a counter attack, and they are. That's a blatant, He's clattered a him, cynical he? attempt to stop a counter attack, and that is what Brighton are trying to do. They're trying to counter attack, so it's definitely a yellow card. Have you been watching Gladiators, by the way? No. Mark Clattenburg. He's the he's the referee in Gladiators. Is he, is he a better ref on Gladiators than he was in the Premier League? He's actually quite good on it. He's um, he's quite good on it. On my first whistle, you'll never beat John Anderson, the original Gladiators referee. Oh, I think he he's great. I think he's good, Mark Clattenburg. He's uh, he's very much part of the show. Mm. Contender ready, <laughs> Gladiator ready. He's just copying what John, John yeah, no, Anderson he's done, did. He, he does it exactly the same, and he does it well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, he's, uh, I mean, basically, you, you, you don't mess. You don't what, mess with the winning formula. What, what, do you? Why reinvent the wheel when it's already no. the wheel's already turning? He's, yeah. he's, 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 I, think I don't he's, know if our viewers get. Do they get gladiators in their I, I bet it's, I bet I it's in, uh, unless they got their own version. Um, mm. They might have their own version because. Uh, Oh, we've got some uh, spam here we need to get rid of in there. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm already in the process okay. of deleting it, so it's gone. Thank you. Thank you. It is a penalty, says Alexi. Yeah, well, I, I disagree. I, I well, Alex, both me and Alexi have Captain Mo. Okay. Yeah, I think, so I think there is a subplot there in our thought, right. our thought process. Uh, th- there was definite contact. If the referee had given it on the pitch, it would have been hard to overturn it. I mean, there's contact everywhere in the penalty area, isn't there? But if the defender doesn't initiate it, you know, if, he, if you're there as a defender, you just stood your ground and the guy runs into you. That's not a penalty, mm. but a contact. They're very yellow shirts that, um, is it Nisa wearing? 
No, it's Nantes in yellow. Yeah. Is it Nantes in, non, Nantes in yellow? Nice and Nantes. Nice have been absolutely terrible in this game. And um, yeah, it's that that's going to let down my uh, my treble in France, I think. They're canary yellow, aren't they, then? Mm. They're called the Canaries. That's their nickname, yeah. yeah. Les Canaries. Feyenoord. 4-2 up, so the points are secure and the bet is uh, landing there. Nice work, Simon B. Give him a round of applause, everybody. Yeah. Easy spot, though, isn't it? You know, they're 2-1 down at half-time. They're class apart, really, those those two teams. We have got... We haven't had a goal yet, and that's the next spot bet. We're coming yeah. up to the hour mark as well, Simon. So we've got about half an hour left here. Um, we're kind of having to wait here for Liverpool to take charge of this well, match, aren't we? Liverpool, 15 fouls. Mm. Brighton 5. That's because Brighton are breaking and breaking at pace, aren't they? Mm. They're, they're having to kind of hold them down or get rid of, stop the attack somehow, aren't they? Not always by fair means. No. Yeah. But the, ref, the referee's done well to, to clamp down it. So for 15 fouls, they've had about four yellow cards, haven't they? Here come Brighton ball. again down the left-hand side. Brighton are not done yet, you know. They just need one more um, stonking shot from Danny Welbeck and they're more yeah. than in this, aren't they? I think if, if Brighton are going to have a point, they're going to have to score again. Mm. That's a and nice ball out to the right. I mean, they have been, actually, you, you mentioned the Brighton scoring again. There have been a few 2 2 draws between these two teams, haven't there? Looking at some recent some Desmond's. history. So, Liverpool versus Brighton. Earlier this season, Brighton 2, Liverpool 2 at mm. um, the Amex Stadium. And then 2021 at Anfield. I think it was possibly one of Deserby's first games, was it? Um,. No, it was one. Of, Graham Potter was in charge. It was Liverpool two, Brighton two. So, two, three, four, five. In the last six Brighton v Liverpool games, we've had two two alls and one three all. So score draws have been quite regular between these two sides, but high scoring draws, not just one one, two two, and three three. This is good from Liverpool. Dominic Nunes on the right. He's got men inside of him. He's approaching the penalty area. He's into the penalty area. Tries to get to the byline. She's been hauled. Balked off a little bit by the uh, Brighton defence, but Liverpool got men forward here. Can they get ahead in this game? One apiece, 63rd minute. And uh, Liverpool with uh, most of the ball. Brighton still looking dangerous on the break. So uh, do we get a goal? We need a goal for the next spot. But in a couple of minutes' time, then we'll add another um, credential alongside the goal. Because the goal isn't coming at the moment, so we'll add something else. Maybe um, uh, two more yellow cards, shall we? Should we add two more yellow cards into uh, the mix? Yeah. Yes. That's a nice ball to the byline, cuts it back, and that's uh, cleared by Brighton. So, yeah, two spot bets running concurrently, as they say. Um, we need another goal in the game. That would land one spot bet, and if we get two more yellow cards from where we are, that would land another spot bet. And for uh, terms of reference, we're currently on five yellows, so we need to get to seven yellows for that spot bet to land. I think that, that, that market's worth looking at, actually, the, uh, the the cards market, because this referee has, has kind of shown his hand a little bit with the, the cards we've seen so far. He, he understands the game. He understands that the Liverpool fouls, although they're in the Brighton half, they're there, deliberate fouls to stop counterattacks. They are very much punishable by yellow cards. So total bookings over seven and a half. We need three more cards in half an hour for that to land. But I could see it. I could see it landing because the referee set his stall out. So yep. over 7.5 total bookings, 1.77. This match is uh, determined to uh, raise Alexis' shooting distance thing because Sobeschlei has a hit from mm. uh, from long range there and uh, goes harmlessly wide. I just wonder whether Harvey Elliott will come on soon. He's been playing really well mm. in his opportunities for Liverpool and for England's under-21 team. You know, he's got a lot of assists recently. I think he could come on and maybe make a difference in this game. Or oh, chance for Liverpool into the penalty area. Ball played across. It's lucky for Mo. Can't get it to him. It's cleared away by Brighton. But Liverpool starting to turn up the pressure here on Brighton's back line. Mm -hmm. Liverpool to score the next goal has to be worth a look. It's going to be short still. but uh, It was 1.4 at half time. It's 1.53. Let's now. have a look at the time markets. Liverpool, where, where are we? Liverpool to. All right, 17 minute result. Liverpool is six. So Liverpool to score in the next six minutes basically, yeah. is six. 80-minute result, 2.4. I'd be tempted with that six, you know. I think the six is better than the, was it 8.4 for the, the extra 10 minutes? Mm. Because there's less chance for Brighton Liverpool, to react. Liverpool, if, if you backed it quickly, you yeah. might have got a winner because Liverpool are going to be ahead um, by the, well, unless Brighton score, by minute number 70 because yeah. Liverpool are about to take a 2-1 lead side. Yeah, that's why I liked it because there's less chance for Brighton to react if Liverpool do score um, we'll see who gets this one. And Shaboshalai puts it back there. 
And it falls to Mo Salah. Get in! And he finishes it off. Mo Salah, Salah. Oh, Alexi. Alexi, there's some points for our fantasy team. And I'm halfway towards winning my... Landed my bet that yeah. I put in the half-time. Right, yeah. Goal for Liverpool. Mo Salah scores it. Liverpool 2, Brighton 1. Lissy says, come on, Liverpool. He says, come on. And uh, we have got um, points, Alexi. We've got points. What do you think? Which team gets more fouls attacking or defending, says Alexi. Come on, Liverpool, says Lissy. Goal, Liverpool. Liverpool 2, Brighton 1. 24 minutes left. Now, is this the moment now where Liverpool just turn the screw and maybe add a couple more, Si? I think next 10 minutes, um, they'll have the momentum to go and take this game away from Brighton. After 10 minutes, as we get towards the last 10 minutes of the game, if Brighton is still in this, they're going to throw everything at Liverpool and Liverpool will get nervous and it could be a very different... So I think the next 10 minutes will shape the game. Liverpool mm. go and get a third, then there's 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 a 4-1 scoreline on it for them. If Liverpool don't go on and get the third in the next... I'm going to give it arbitrary sort of 10, 15 minutes then Brighton have a chance of an equaliser in, in the last knock-ins of this game. I wonder if I've got a, any cash out on my... Uh, my oh, I have got a cash out on my Mo... Oh, I've got a positive cash out on my yeah, mouth. Okay. Oh, I don't know I, if I, I should I take mean, it. They're not going to take him off. Klopp's not going to take him off. He's going to stay on the pitch. And if this game gets stretched, mm. he, he could easily get another chance. So Liverpool 2-1 up. So that would be them, top of the table, um, come the end of today, basically. Is, um, if is they do there win today. a penalty in the Nice-Nantes game? And if it's a penalty, it would be to... It's a penalty to Nice, I think. A penalty to Nice, I believe. Yes, or is of, it? Lots of arms being waved about there. Lots of arms. Yeah, but, it's a penalty. So the Nice coach wants a red card as well. It's clumsy. It's clumsy, but I don't think it's a red card. Liverpool into the area again. Brighton able to uh, control it that time. Going to be a corner on the far side for Liverpool. If this stays the same, Liverpool take all three points. They would be on 67 points come the end of tonight. Um, and Arsenal are on 64, so they can only get to 67 um, Arsenal's goal difference, though, is better than Liverpool. So Liverpool yeah. could still be overhauled if Arsenal beat Man City later. So, uh, but to Liverpool, I mean, we talk about goal difference. Liverpool do need to mm. make theirs more healthy. So there's every reason to kind of keep the foot down and and to try and get more goals. Oh, he's taking his time over this corner, isn't he? Um, I think probably De Zerbi will make changes soon as well. Try and get some fresh legs on to try and. Uh, I think Evan Ferguson comes on maybe in this situation. You'd be surprised if he didn't. Have some parts play in the next uh, 22 minutes, 23 minutes, maybe. So much lie on corners duties for Liverpool, because obviously Trent's not playing today. Ball played in and uh, not uh, only cleared out as far as so much to re-deliver from that far side. Sends it back in, headed up and over the top of the bar by the Brighton player, I think, yeah. there. Another corner. It's a very strange piece of defending that. Heading it towards his own net, but uh, another corner for Liverpool. So the corners starting to mount for Slissy and Co. out there. So plenty of uh, bets to be had here. Yet I often say on here that you get into the final sort of 20 minutes, 10 minutes, and you either get um, corners, you either get cards, or you get um, goals. You very rarely get all three. This match has been consistently all three all the way through. Goals yeah. are coming, corners are coming, cards are coming. So um, you could play any of those markets and have a very good shout, I think. Yep. Um so first half, we had two yellow cards, six corners, and two goals. Second half, we've had three yellow cards, three corners, and one goal. Referee doing some tidying up as the balls get Penalty scored by Nice. Dispersed around the back of the net. So the, the French treble is probably back on now. Uh, we need Havre to score, we need Nice to score again, and we need Toulouse not to concede, and that treble will be uh, a nice 9.77. Mo Salah dinks it towards the back post, and the keeper's able to get it. Um, I think, Dave T going back to Dave Tindall, and whether he's there or not, he, he might be, but I think he's in the same boat as you. I think he shares a season ticket with yeah. um, a number of different... And there's a, there's a senior person on that season ticket hierarchy who tends to pick the bigger games. Whether he sees this one as being a bigger game or not, I don't know, but... Um, DT, I think DT made a trade with him because the, the last game of the season is obviously Jurgen's last game, right? Um, so that's much sought after. But because the um, the head honcho of their gang um, opted for one of the big games recently, DT's hoping he can still get to that final game of the season. But because um, that'll be one that all Liverpool fans will want to be at when it when Jurgen waves goodbye. Yeah, I think so. Um, the Europa League final. I think, does that come before the last game of the season? So it's Well, that won't be at Anfield, though, will it? No, no, but it's in Dublin. Yeah. You know, it's not hard to get to, is it? You know, if you can get a ticket for that. Um, Lamptey really coming fun. off for Brighton, one and not eight on for Brighton. So, uh, deserve be making that change. 
But no, I think I think the the Europa League final is before mm. before the last game of the season. I think. You aren't they usually at the end of the season? Oh, well, you're going to make me check, aren't you? Yeah, I think I don't know if you're right with that. I, uh, the Champions League's usually after the league's finished, isn't it? Yeah, but the Europa League's uh, at least a week before it. Yeah. Europa League final's 23rd of May. So, yes, I think that is um, after. So, yeah, I was wrong. Yeah. I think that's straight after the season. Then the Champions yeah. League comes the week after, doesn't it? Yeah. I think. So, but, actually, uh, that game at Anfield is not going to be Jürgen's last game if they reach the Europa League final. Yeah, but if you're going to see him at Anfield, it's the last time to see yeah. him at Anfield. Yeah, I mean, it'll be, it'll be a great occasion nonetheless. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, and to be fair, I mean, I'm not a massive fan of Jurgen Klopp. I, I, half of me likes him, half of me doesn't. He annoys the hell out of me sometimes, and then I actually warm to him on other occasions. But um, he's been a great asset to the Premier League. And Liverpool about to score number three. He'll be uh, big, showing his big teeth soon because he'll be <laughs> smiling. Oh, dear. Danny Welbeck slips over, gives the ball away, or allows Liverpool to scurry away. Pass it to Mo, pass it to Mo. It's, it's, it's going to be, be Mo, isn't it? It's no, going to be Mo. Got, Mo's, Mo's dinked it in. And it's finished. It's oh, finished. Mo, it's Mo with the assist. It's Luis Diaz with the finish on the back post. It's another goal no, to it's Liverpool. Off, it's offside. Is it offside? Yeah, he's given it offside. Oh, we'll see the lines being drawn maybe in a second. But That uh, spares Verbruggen's bl- blushes because it was an awful attempt at saving this Luis De- Diaz effort. Lu- Luis Diaz isn't exactly uh, complaining too much, is he? He's thinking he's onside here. So let's have a look at the, the replay. Is Diaz on or not? Ball's played out to um, to Mo on this side. Now is Diaz offside? Oh, I don't know. You know, I think he's on. I don't know. That's very close. That, I, I reckon he's on here. Yeah, I, I do too. And the Bruggen's blushes might not be spared because that should be goal number three for Liverpool. I think they're going to draw the lines. It's whether he's got a toe nail just offside here or not. It's that close. It is a very close decision. Far closer than they thought. I think. Yeah, when the when the decisions made because he times he's run very well. Bad news in France, Nantes have got a penalty now, um, so that's a chance for them to go two on up against Nice and Montpellier have scored against Lava. So I think the French treble is now officially dead. It's a dead duck. It's a dead duck. I don't know what that is. In it's uh, a blatant penalty. Le, le as well. duc mort. Yeah, we oui, we oui. le canard. Le, uh, le canard mort. How, how do you? I mean, that shot that they're showing at the moment shows you nothing. No, it shows you absolutely nothing. So, I mean, what's the point of that shot when you're looking at the VAR on this? That's the shot you need. Yeah. And you need to blow it up with all the players. Get, all the, get, he's off just. Yeah. Offside just. That isn't really... Okay. Maybe it does illustrate because the 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 foot is just... Yeah, okay, so he's offside. It is literally a toenail, isn't it? There, yeah. He's offside and he's only... But it was a very well-timed run. He was nearly onside. Well, that that could be a crucial decision in this game. I'd be gutted if it was, if it was a Mo Salah goal that had just been ruled off. If Liverpool go three one up there, they don't lose. You know, I mean, they uh, they 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 win the game. I think if Brighton get this to within the last ten minutes and they're only two one down, Liverpool are going to fall na- naturally fall back and start defending the lead, and it could just give the initiative to Brighton to try and nick an equaliser. Le Canard Mort. Oui, oui. Wait, wait. The French treble est mort. Uh, they don't. The, a dead duck doesn't quack. Actually, does it? No, that was actually technically wrong. I, that, this is why I don't get any of the um, David Attenborough work. Right. Yeah. Because he, I, I mean, because I just went Le Canard Mort quack mm. quack, and he wouldn't quack. He would just, but he'd just lie there, yeah. wouldn't it? He'd just lie there yeah. decomposing, basically. Mm. So uh, yeah, dead ducks don't quack. You learn everything here on Clubhouse mm, TV, yeah. Sportspet.io. Dead um, ducks don't quack. This <laughs> should be a film, that <laughs> film name. Yeah, that, I might write it tonight. Mm, yeah. yeah. I'll come back tomorrow with the full script. Here we go with uh, Brighton down the left. Can they? Can they? Not on that occasion. No, good, very good. Very Quance good tackle. Quance has played well. Really well. He's got long legs as well, hasn't he? Yeah. Like Inspector Gadget legs. He wraps them around the ball. Mm. Yeah, I can see why uh, Jurgen Klopp has, uh, has stuck him in instead of Canate today. I mean, he's obviously surrounded himself, Jurgen, with some very, very talented coaches. And, and that's what you do, isn't it? If you're, if you're of that kind of stature, you make sure the people around you are good enough to trust. Mm. And you can... But their their talent ID and they're bringing through of these young players like Kwanzaa and uh, I mean Trent Alexander Arnold and yeah. um, Bradley at right back and and more besides this I mean that that um, League Cup final there was millions of them um, they they seem to recognise the talent and be able to nurture it and bring it through and and to polish so when they actually yeah. come into the first team they are looking like the real deal aren't they they're, they're not having 
they're not looking as if they're kind of just short of the mark and they need to learn. They're looking as if they're kind of polishing and ready to actually just yeah. hit the ground running. And Liverpool have used the Carabao Cup, haven't they, as um, a sort of proving ground for yeah. a lot of the young players. You know, he's picked teams where there's, a, there's enough experience in there, but there's maybe like, you know, a few young faces each round. And by doing that, now those players have come through to the stage where they can start Premier League games and, and look as good as Quanta has today. Toulouse go 2 0 up against a Clement, so uh, they're doing the job for you. Yes, they're the only one of the three that are going to win, I think, as Brighton try and keep the ball alive in the Liverpool box. But now they're in trouble. Counter-attack on 2v1. On. This is the chance. Come on. And it's Mo Come for on, a Mo. second goal. Come Mo. on, Mo. It's it, Mo. Oh. Saved by Verbruggen. <laughs> it's coming, though. It's coming, Alexi. Don't despair. It's coming. We've At least we've got one from him, haven't we? Yeah. yeah the, uh, when the, you pick your captain, he scores a goal. You can't ask for too much more than that. The you? Man City uh, Arsenal team news is out. If you want to look at that. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I don't think there'll be any surprises there. To be honest, we're not expecting. Let anything. me run through it for you. Um, you keep an eye on this Liverpool game in case okay. anything changes. Ortega is in goal for Man City. No surprise because Edison's injured. And Gvardiol, Ake, Diaz, and Akanji is the back four for City. Rodri in that uh, defensive midfield position. You've got Foden, Kovacic, De Bruyne and Silva behind Haaland. So no surprises there at all. Um, David Ray in goal for Arsenal. Ben White, Salaber, Gabriel and Kivior is the back four. Odegaard, Jorginho and Rice is the midfield. You've got Gabriel Jesus, Havertz and Sackett in attack. So no, sir. you could basically, if we'd um, had five minutes, we would have picked those two teams, wouldn't we? I don't think there's too so what, ma- Martinelli's out, is he? I don't think there's too many surprises there. Martinelli's on the bench, yeah. And Ketty's on the bench for Arsenal. Um, Smith-Rowe's on the bench. Trossard's on the bench. Uh, Zinchenko and Vieira, etc. And for um, City, Alvarez misses out. Oscar Bob's um, coming off the bench regularly. Doku doesn't start. Um, Grealish Jack injured, Grealish he? doesn't start. He's on the bench, Grealish. Oh, is he? Um, and um, John Stones doesn't start, but John Stones, he's injured, yeah. he limped off for England, didn't and he? And Kyle Walker as well, injured, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Man City's defence has been um, has been their issue, really, this season, not not, conceip- not keeping as many clean sheets, but they're still scoring plenty of goals. Um, Arsenal, very solid. They do, you know, I, I, I think Arsenal could get a result here today. Uh, it's, it's at Man City, isn't it? Should I cash out my Mo Salah bet? Yeah, I, th- I think Arsenal will get a result. Does Mo score again? Um, At the moment, I've got a cash out that's over double of what my stake was. No, don't cash out. Leave it. Are you going to pay me the difference? if No. You, no, no I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just telling you to grow a pair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all down to Simon. And if I, if I suddenly start crying at full time, it's because Simon's hurt me. Will, will you thank me if um, I'm correct? I'll come across the studio and kiss you on the lips. <laughs> okay. Full on the lips side. I really hope he doesn't score now then. I'm ready. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. So if you stay tuned, you may see the yeah. uh, the longest screen kiss in the history of Clubhouse <laughs> TV. Should yeah. Mo Salah score? Mm. <laughs> Actually, uh, half of me doesn't want him to now. <laughs> yeah. Looking at those teams, obviously Man City look great on paper, don't they? But I do wonder if the loss of Walker, I mean, it's a huge loss of Walker because of his pace. His recovery pace. And He's the way very they inappropriately play. named, isn't he, really? Yeah. He should be <laughs> runner. He should be road runner, yeah. yeah. The way they play, they do rely on Walker's recovery pace because the, the defence are pushing up so high to the halfway line and the space in behind. Also, no John Stones. His ability to push into the midfield, give them the extra man, will be a major absence. You know, somebody else will have to do that job today. Can a Kanji do it? Not so sure. Can Diaz, or Diaz won't be the one to do it because he's usually in the There's back There's a line. leprechaun referee in that match. A bit harsh, but I, knew, I see I see the likeness. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Arsenal get a result. Arsenal do not lose. I think Arsenal double chance would be my play based on the team news there. Mm. I'm going to cash out. Well, you'll regret it. I'm feeling weak. But at least I won't get the kiss, so I'll be happy. I mean, we keep saying gamble responsibly, and mm. I've got 10 minutes plus stoppage time. And my cash out's getting lower all the time. But then there is the small matter of quite a big payout if he scores again. Oh, I don't know what to do, everybody. I don't know what to do. Um, cash out and bet half, says Alexi. Yeah, that's a, yeah, possible. Yeah, but you, you never get great. If you reinvest from your cash out, you're mm. basically betting against yourself, aren't you? you just got to do one uh, or the other. 
Oh, shall I be strong, Alexi? Or shall I be weak? I mean, it's not strength or weakness, is it? It's gambling responsibly. Shall I gamble responsibly? Or shall I be, um, shall I, shall I be reckless and let it ride? So Liverpool are 1.09 to win the game now. Um, Brighton, they're not going to win. They're 44, but One the draw is 9.6. The draw is 9.6. Are we in that phase of the game now? Danny Welbeck, Danny Welbeck, Danny Welbeck. Just get a chance. It was in the same kind of area that he scored the goal from, but it doesn't this time. No. And f- interesting that Ferguson hasn't come on in the game. So you're chasing the game. You're 2-1 down. You've got a striker on the bench. They don't even trust Ferguson to come on at this point. Darwin Nunes nearly wriggled through on the long ball there, but it's a good defending by Brighton. So we're entering the final 10. There will be some stoppage time, but I don't think there'll be That's huge amounts. That should be a yellow card. I mean, he won't give it because it's Van Dijk and he's already on one, but... Yeah. If he wasn't, he'd, he'd have booked him. him. And, it, and that's where it's wrong, isn't it? Because you should book him regardless. But uh, there you go. Um, but so we are approaching... Um, I, I can't remember my cash-out's disappeared now, Mo. He's not being substituted, is he? No. He's still there. I can see him. Point oh, him. Come on, Mo. 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 I'm just going to say that a lot now. Uh, Come on, Mo. Over three and a half goals, 1.78. Definitely worth a play. This game is um, at the point where there's so much space. We saw it from that Mo Salah chance he missed on the counter-attack that they're going to get more chances like that, I would say. That's Ooh, not far good away. save. Yeah. yeah to, it wasn't travelling at express spe- speed there, but it was uh, it was far enough away from Keller to really cause him trouble there. And uh, Lewis Dunk there with the header. Needed saving. So. And it's another corner onto the tally. So how many... We still haven't had any more yellow cards, have we? Oh, we had one. We need uh, one more yellow card. That's actually the spot bet. That's taken away any doubt from me because my cash out's disappeared. Did so. you do the spot bet for the goal, by the way? Um, no, we didn't, did we? Because Mo Salah scored to make it 2 1. I don't think we did a spot bet for that. <laughs> it's better late than nether, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Better late than nether. I'll put go, go, go in the um, Clubhouse TV chat. We need a. Uh, couple of yellow cards as well, don't we? We need something else to finish off with as well, the fifth, a fifth thing. But go get your sports bet Dio use names in. Get them in now. Yeah. Get them in now. Get them in now. And we'll pull two of you out to win 10 USDT. Come on, Mo. Where are you? Where are you? Let's be having you, as Delia Smith would say. Luis Diaz coming down the left. And Deflected. Oh, oh guess that into the side. It was corner, was it? Corner. Yeah, corner. So, um... um so we've, right, we've we've just done the um, the one for the goal because you quite rightly remembered. Um, we are currently on in terms of corners. Where where do we stand, Si? In corners, the overall corner count is seven to four, isn't it? So that's eleven. Yeah. If we get to thirteen corners, the final spot bet lands. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Does so it have we, to be exactly thirteen? So we need no. So we need thirteen or more. All right. So we need two more yellow cards. And we need two more corners to yep. land the other two spot bets. We're gonna obviously we go. We've gone, gone, gone on the end. The goal scoring. Yeah, goal. I can see the uh, entries coming in now. I can't because, like you say, it's not not. Um, I've got. You have to just yeah. Go to another um, another message and then message board and come back. Yeah, I've done that. I've done that. So uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, yeah, so if, if we don't read out your messages immediately, it's because we're not seeing them today straight away. It's not because we're ignoring you, I promise. I'll, uh, I I'll, think it's 17. Well, right, I, haven't st- I haven't done stop, stop, stop yet. Oh, yeah, okay. So Fretless has entered twice, I think. We get, need to get, your, get, your, um, get them in now has quickly. He? Has Fretless entered twice? Yes, he has. I'll delete one, Si. I'll delete one of Fretless's. Mm. He's gone. One of Fretless's is gone. And stop, stop, stop goes in in 10. Get your sports bet. Dio username in now if you haven't done it already. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... It's in. So, uh, in my books, this is the last one. Yeah, 24, I think. 24. Okay. So, you are going to be uh, the man pulling the uh, the winners out of the hat today. And uh, and the number is... Okay. And the winner is... Roy Steezy. Roy Steezy. Well done, Roy. Roy. Well done, Roy Steezy. And again. Where, where's Roy? Is he high or low? Oh, he's... Uh, I can't see him. Near the top. He's not on my list. He's on mine. Oh, he's there. Sorry, Clover 47, isn't it? I do apologise, Roy. You are there right in front of my eyes. So you are on the winners uh, in the winner's circle now, Roy. And the next winner is... Well, it's a high number. It's 
Arby Tank. Arby Tank 12. Arby Tank. Congratulations. Well done, Arby Tank. So you are the sixth winner this afternoon. So Arby Tank goes onto the list underneath um, Clover 47, Roy Steezy. So the uh, the winners so far today, we've had Slissy, Ishak, Aguska 61, Hakan 2217, Clover 47 and Arby Tank 12 of the sportsbet.ni. Uh, usernames on my winner's enclosure yeah. and to complete the 10 should we if we can get there we need two more yellow cards we need two more corners well, only one more corner now because we've had uh, we had 12 oh, I was looking at this Si that corner doesn't count ok <laughs> um, it does it does count we need one more corner yeah come on and we need a, a most of a goal for me yes to make me very happy did you cash out no and oh, I can't okay. I've, it's been taken out of my hands because the, oh, okay. um, yeah, the cash out's gone so in in a way that's a good thing because I can't do anything about it now. I've got no mixed feelings because I can't do anything. I'm just relying on Mo's dancing little feet. Yeah, his ability to get into those uh, spaces. Yeah. Well, what I don't want is a, a, a solid goal with another VAR check for twenty minutes. Yeah, the, there'll be some stoppage. Oh, it's a chance if oh, what was he doing? You got to take that shot on there rather than uh, pass it. Anyway, Liverpool got away with one there a bit. Come on, come on, let's get a goal, let's get a goal, let's get corners, let's get cards, let's get some spot bets won, let's get me a winner, let's get everybody happy mm. as we move on towards the final game today. Man City against Arsenal, 4.30, we've given you the teams, and um, let us know who you think is going to win um, between, well it's a very important game isn't it, Man City against Arsenal right towards the top end, Liverpool will go top um, after this victory, if it stays as a victory. And uh, then it's up to Arsenal to get the three points to go back ahead of him. Brighton shoots. Brighton nearly score. <laughs> oh, Lalana against yeah. his former team. Yeah. It's the Milner derby. It's the Lalana it's a, derby. It's, it's everybody. Everybody that's played for Liverpool's playing for Brighton now. Liverpool are getting nervy now. So they're within sight of the finish line and they're giving the ball away. Brighton are going with a more aggressive press and it's creating these opportunities. And that is so close to squeezing home. Great first touch. Got it through the defender's legs. Keller has beaten, but he's obviously got his angles right there because it goes wide. Yeah, that was uh, Lalana against his former team. So 87th minute, we will get some stoppage time. Will we get uh, some more spot bets won for you? One more corner required, two yellow cards. So we need a little bit of a coming together, don't we? Two people shouting at each other from close <laughs> range <laughs> and the referee like to go bang, bang with these cards. But uh, Liverpool coming forward now. This is where Liverpool need to look after the ball, isn't it? Just see this. Man, yeah. man City is so good at this, passing it around and denying their opponents any possession in uh, in dangerous areas. Mo Salah's got the ball on the left-hand side. You're not going to score from there, Mo. Get yourself in the middle, man. No, but he's doing a job for his team, isn't he? He's, I don't uh, care about that. No, I know you don't. But now he's found himself in a bit of space. This is patient, but it's he's, it, Mo, he's it's in the box. Oh. Sobberschlei ends up with a very tame effort and it's uh, cleared away by Brighton, but only as far as McAllister, Liverpool... Doing well here, keeping the ball down Brighton's end. And as I say, Liverpool will go top if they get the three points. They'll go on to 67 points. Arsenal will be 64, Man City 63. So uh, City could go second if they beat Arsenal later. Arsenal could go top if they beat Man City later. That's right. Um, si There's si corner. City can't go top, can they? I don't think. No, City go second. City go second, yeah, yeah sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, that was the second... That was, was that a, a, no, it wasn't. a it goal was, kick? Uh, maybe... Was it offside beforehand? I, I nearly pressed the button then, and I'd have been wrong. That's a yellow card. There we go. There's one of them. Right, so we need one corner, one card. And they're two separate spot bets. So if we get both, yep. then we've got two draws to do. If we get just the get one, busy. it's just the one to do. So we're coming towards the end of this, but we have every reason to stay tuned. And of course, every reason to stay tuned full stop because we've got Man City against Arsenal coming up at 4.30, which is around about 40 minutes away from now. Going to be a, see a change here from Liverpool. Yeah. Time-wasting sub. <laughs> Don't bring Mo off. Uh, no, no, it's Luis Diaz. Good. Yeah. Well done, Luis Diaz. He's played quite well today. He has. He got the goal, didn't he? The, the equaliser and um, had one disallowed as well. So he's uh, played his part. Seems to be in form again now, doesn't he? He's um, had an injury hit season, but he we, seems to have come in good at the right time. He had a rather stressful part of his season as well, with yeah. his dad kidnapped and everything, didn't he? It mm. wasn't the best of times for him, but uh, that's all behind him now. His dad was pictured with him at a game recently, so his dad's uh, fighting fit and raring to go, so that's good news. And uh, a change has been made as uh, Gakpo comes on to replace him. So uh, into the dying embers of this, but there's still all to play for. Brighton are not out of this yet. They still fancy a chance of nicking a point as they get the ball across. 
But uh, cleared away. Now Liverpool have a chance to break. Can they get the ball forward here? Nice play by uh, Mo, but he's uh, robbed of it in the end. And Brighton uh, just putting on a little bit of pressure. Yeah. The wrong player's got it for them, though, really. Van Hecker, but he's actually managed to pass it off. Oh, get it out wide. This is um, squeaky bum time for Liverpool. Yeah. They've, they've not killed this much off, have they? And it's... Uh, it could potentially come back to bite them yeah, they'll on be the bottom. Waiting anxiously to see how much stoppage time is going to be added on because Liverpool won't want uh, any minutes at all, really, ideally. No, they're not going to get that, sorry. It won't be zero. Liverpool are still uh, able to hold on to the ball, which is uh, good. And That's here's a chance. Nice. Here's a chance. Harvey Elliott flying into the area. For Mo Salah. Here's a chance. Save! Oh! oh, that was it. That was your chance. That was the second goal there. Verbruggen's denied him. Oh. I thought the way you were talking, it was coming. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. There's a lot of space, though, still for Brighton. So six minutes. Oh, come on. This game isn't over. Come on. Come on, Mo. You can still do it for me and Alexi. You can still do it. He's got me. A, at least he's got us a goal, Alexi, hasn't he? Mm. He's got us a goal. We can't we can't knock him too much. Currently on fourteen points on my team sheet. Here we go. Come on, Liverpool. No, Brighton get the ball. Now have Brighton have Brighton got a full stop to add to this game to make it a tie. Yeah. Have they got something? Or an exclamation left? mark. Yes. <laughs> or a dot dot dot. No, it doesn't go to a replay, does it? No. No. <laughs> I well, mean they they've done all right, Brighton today, haven't they? I mean, there's there's plenty better teams than Brighton have come to Anfield and lost in worst fashion. You know they've they had the lead today. They've they've, they've given a, an attacking threat on the counter attack. You know it's um it's a decent performance, but they just I think with a full team out, you'd say they they would have had a better chance of, of beating Liverpool. But with so many key players out, it was always going to be tough. I, tell, I can't believe it's only three goals in this match. I thought we'd get more than that. Yeah. I mean, I said to you um, towards the end of the first half, would you back under four and a half? And quite rightly, you said that now it's too risky. Uh, but mm. it landed comfortably, it would, it wouldn't would it? Done, yeah, it would. You know, even if there's another goal now, it would yep. land. So uh, mm. Brighton are trying to get men forward here. That's the that's the the one hope for me and Mo Salah backers is that they maybe overcommit, mm. and then Liverpool hit them on the break right at the death. But uh, running out of time for uh, any more goals in this match, and we need one more corner. We need one more card to land a spot. But hopefully, one of those comes in for us, and we're able to give at least one more spot bet away. So don't go anywhere, clubhouse creatures. Forty, just less than forty minutes away from Man City against Arsenal. And uh, every reason to stay tuned for that one. That's the big game of the weekend, isn't it? There's uh, two of the top three in the table go head to head. It's Here a chance. Go. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, Mo. Get on the end of something. Come on, Mo. Very rarely do I shout for somebody so much, but there's quite a lot of money riding on this for me. If he scores, Si. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just another three points for Liverpool, but uh, I think you'd say... They've been tested today, you know. They've been tested, um, but they've uh, they've been the better team, and now they'll just look to, to kick on. It's the away games that you worry about for Liverpool. Home games, you're thinking they're going to win all oh, home and, games. Anfield's a fortress, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So they play Sheffield United in midweek. I mean, that's that could be anything, you know. So they'll win. They'll beat Sheffield United midweek. Then they go to Old Trafford, where they've just Ooh, lost. Oh, into the side netting from from Brighton. I'd expect a you know a more authoritative performance from Liverpool at Old Trafford next time they go there, but. You know, that's, that's a hard game still. And then the other away Premier League games this season are at uh, Fulham. That's given them, that's the ground that's given them a few problems before. At Everton, well, it's a derby, who knows what happened. West Ham, they usually beat West Ham, to be fair, away. And uh, the last away game this season is at Aston Villa, which is hard. You know That, that could be the game which um, trips them up away at Aston Villa. Another change coming for Liverpool as they just try and run the clock down now. It's got to that kind of stage. Um, Jürgen's just uh, trying to take a few seconds out of this one and Sobberschlei is uh, walking off the park and uh, he's going to be replaced um, by uh, Gravenberch who is coming on to replace him. So uh, about two minutes left at Anfield. Liverpool on the edge of going top of the table. 2-1 they lead and uh, that might be where it stays come the end of tonight. If it's one apiece or whatever between yeah. uh, Man City and Arsenal later, then neither of those sides would be able to go top. Man City can only go second. Arsenal could obviously reclaim top spot with a victory later. So uh, 
these this title race is really exciting. It's going to go right down to the wire. I think as a Liverpool fan, oh, it was a yellow card. That's, That's a yellow, it. Free bet lands. Boom. So there's one of them. There's one of them. We need um, another corner to land the other one. But go, go, go goes into the um, Clubhouse TV chat. Get your sportsbet.io usernames in now. And uh, we'll do the draw for that one. We need another corner to land the other one. Then it's a full house in this Liverpool-Brighton game. But uh, we've got at least uh, yeah. eight of the, the winners of the ten available. Uh, the over seven and a half yellow card. Over, over seven and a half bookings came in as well there with that eighth um, yellow card of the game. Um in terms of logistics, we I mean, we can, we'll we hold on. We'll, we'll stay on for a bit if we get a corner because yeah. we need to do two separate draws here, Si. We do. Um, have we got... How many have we got entries so for this one? Let's are, see. Are, they st- are they streaming in? Because I can't quite see at the minute. Uh, yep, still got a few coming in. Um, is that a corner? Somebody says corner. Sharaf says corner, ha, ha, ha. Is it a corner here? He might be a little bit ahead of us. Mo, no. oh, oh. oh, mo, 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 I think you should do stop, stop, stop now. Shall I do it? Yeah, yeah. it's been enough now. Still on 12 corners, officially. Right, count them up, sight. Well, let's do the, oh, Charif says he was wrong. Okay, yeah. so I'm going Bad for the bottom up. Bad Charif. Back in your basket, Charif. Um, so, uh, you're right, draw out the winner's sight. Coming towards the diet. If we do get a corner, it does land the, uh, the the last one. So fingers crossed for you all out there. But going to get winners number seven and eight now from Simon. Winner number seven, Si, this afternoon hang is. On, I've, I've got to think as well. <laughs> oh, in your it's, own hard, time. it's hard to count when the screen's moving. In your again. own time, Barlow. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> oh, dear. How long do you need? <laughs> Can't count. The other match starts soon. Here comes uh, Liverpool. Have they got one final goal for us in, in them? Can we get a final goal? They've kind of right, started yeah. to pass it square and they're just kind of r- wheedling the clock down now. Okay, it's... Uh... One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> I thought you'd done it. <laughs> Osman. 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 Well done, Osman. And the next one... Oh, it's a few after Osman. It is Alexei. Alexei, Alexei congratulations. Thunder Knight is his username. Marvellous. So Osman, Osman, and Alexei. Two O's there. Good stuff. It's often... It's all over. It's all over. Mo doesn't get his goal. Um, we don't get the corner, but we've got eight winners. Slissy, Ishak, Aguska, 61, Hakan, Clover, Arbitank, Osman, and Thunder Knight. You are the eight winners of the spot bets of the uh, Liverpool-Brighton game. Liverpool take all three points, and they go back to the summit. They are top of the table yeah. as things stand. Good win. Good win. And uh, if, uh, well, we'll see if they stay top of the table, won't we, when it comes uh, to the later games, because we've got, obviously, uh, um, more, well, plenty of points to play for. When it comes to the uh, the latter fixture, um, who do you think is going to win that game? Sorry, Man City against the uh, Arsenal. Uh, I think it could be a draw, but I'm favouring Arsenal actually. Sort of draw, no bet, or or double chance. I think Man City might might come unstuck today. You do, yeah. Without without those defenders, Stones and and Walker, um, you know they still got good players, but have they got players that can fulfil those roles? You know, Walker's pace is crucial. Stones' ability to jump, stop, step into midfield is massive for them. I don't think they've got players that can do that. Guardiola can't. He's, he's mm. been poor this season. Okay. Good defender, but doesn't have the, the, the same qualities that those two guys that are missing are. And I think Arsenal can can exploit it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with Arsenal to not lose, but might win. Okay, um, so that game's coming up in just over half an hour's time. We'll be back to talk about all things Man City Arsenal ahead of kickoff. 2.06 for Man City to win it, 3.65 for the tie, 3.5 for Arsenal to take all three points and to go back to the top of the table. We will see what happens in just over half an hour's time. Let's hear the other part of the Jonathan Woodgate chat. We'll see you soon, everybody. Don't go anywhere. It's the biggest game of the weekend coming up. Man City against Arsenal in just over half an hour. Right, another question for Jonathan Mulgate. Uh, here we go. Uh, question from Hakan2217. As a former footballer and coach, what do you think would have happened to Stones, Trent Alexander-Arnold or Walker if they were playing 20 to 25 years ago? I would imagine that this is possibly reference to the fact that 
their wing backs who who charge certainly TAA and and Walker yeah. and, and and John Stones who likes to bring the ball out. And by the way, what a goal from John Stones last night as well. Although the keeper could have done yeah. much better in my opinion. Uh, but where do you think these players would have fitted in twenty twenty five years ago in football? All been fine. All been absolutely fine because they're all top quality players. Um, Stones can play. Maybe 20, 25 years ago, it wasn't always happening from the back, but John Stones can play. Alexander Ryan, okay, very attacking. Maybe in my, my day that he'd have been tucked in a lot more, but Kyle Walker, not a problem at all. Not a problem. He is a really great, great walker. I think he's even improved even more since he's gone um, to Man City from Spurs. He's a he's a first-class player, but they'd all fit in 20, 25 years ago without without question, in my view. Uh, the interesting thing about Cal Walker, by the way, is he is an absolute athlete, isn't he? And he's 32. Now, uh, 20, 25 years ago, 32 is pretty much at the time when people are starting to question whether you hang your boots up and that's you done and dusted. Yeah. Whereas now, Kyle Walker and the likes of look like they could play football till they're 35, 36, 37 at the top level. Yeah, well, I think with players these days, they look after themselves a lot more. Yeah. And they've got that um, the way of preparing for games, recovering after games, um, heart rate monitors on, testing how far they're running, what, what they're doing distance-wise. A lot of them can tell how many jumps you've made, how many Excel, Excels, D-cells. I mean, with, the, with them now, with the sports science side of the game, that'll help the players really go on to the next level because of, of training. Like for, for example, if we'd have played on a Saturday at Leeds, we'd have a Sunday off, We'd come in on the Monday. It'd be a hard session. Really hard. We'd run again on the Tuesday afternoon. We'd have Wednesday off. Run again Thursday, play Friday. I mean, play, yeah. train Friday, play yeah. Saturday. Saturday yeah. it, that would be unheard of now. Unheard of. Do because you... of... Go on, sorry. Well, no, with, with the sports science then, if it was as... Because uh, obviously the sports science departments of football clubs, certainly Premier League clubs, has exploded into life over the course of the last 10, 15 years with, uh, you know, um, technology, science and, and and people studying this as well. If that was around when you broke into Leeds and, and you'd had that from the get-go, uh, just wondering how that would have affected you in your injuries and whether you, you, you would have had less of it. With, with no question, it would have helped. It'd have helped because, just say for example, in in a game you'd cover say ten thousand ten thousand kilometers in a game, and then you'd rest on a Sunday. But normally it's forty hours forty eight hours after the game, yeah, where your body's just recovering again. So you need that extra day. Bearing in mind, on a Monday we'd be at it again, at it high intensity Tuesday again. But then to not have all the information, then that'd make a huge difference yeah. if we had it then. Uh, thank you. Another question for uh, Jonathan Woodgate. Uh, another question from Off Branded. Who, in your opinion, is the best centre back in the world right now? And I will add a further question to that, which is why. Who is the best now, Virgil Van Dijk? Ah, what do you think to the start he's had this season? Uh, because he seems not quite the Virgil Van Dijk of last season at the moment. I think it's not always Virgil Van Dijk. I think it's the players around him as well. I don't think he's had that part. Well, he hasn't had that partner all season. It's been changed. So they've had Matt Ip in a couple of a couple of games. Um, Phillips. Um, what's it called? Uh, they've had Matt Ip and Gomez. Matt Ip, Gomez, yeah. sorry. Gomez played in centre-half a few times. And he hasn't that that real structure around him, the midfield's been missing with Henderson and, and, and Thiago at times. So for me, he's the best. He sees danger so easily. He's never on his backside. Very, very rarely you see him on, on his backside. Reads the game so well, can pass it, can head, is quick, can score in the other box, defends his own box. I don't, I don't see a real weakness in his game. I, I, I just don't see it. Uh, who was the uh, centre half uh, that you, if you did, uh, when you were coming through the youth system at Leeds, and still when you were you broke into the Leeds first team, that you said, "There's someone I'm going to watch and study, and I'm going to learn a lot of." Was there a centre half that you you did that with? The, the viewers might. I used to watch Gary Pallister. Yeah. And Tony Mowbray as a young kid at Middlesbrough. Yeah. I used to love watching Gary Pallister, just because he used to bring the ball out of defence, and he could run past players, but he could defend also. I've got his shirt at home, actually. Which Have I, you? Yeah, I was looking at it today. Um, yeah, a, a top move to Man United. Got in the PFA Team of the Year. One Player of the Year. 
a fantastic player and you look up to them type of players. How close were you signing for Man United, by the way? Because I know in a rather, you actually, was it a, a, a trial spell as a youngster at Man United? I certainly know, bizarrely, you ended up playing snooker with Sir Alex Ferguson once. Yeah, uh, that, I mean, yeah, so, that, yeah that's so. right. I was a cheeky young kid. I was a cheeky young kid and I was on trial at Man United, I'd say for, I'd say for about 18 months. You go on different, different camps with them and stuff and uh, every Thursday... Alex Ferguson used to used to come in and have a meal with all the players. And Brian, we used to have a sing song. And he walked in the snooker room, and I was like, "Oh wow!" <laughs> he went, "Who wants a game of snooker?" I'm not Welsh, by the way. <laughs> and um, I said, "Yeah, I'll play." I said, "No playing with him, cheeky young kid." I said, oh, "Yeah, it was brilliant, though, just to see that a manager coming in the room." I was like, oh. "And when your paths crossed later on, did you ever talk about that? Did he recognise you from those days, or what?" I, I don't, I, I don't think he recognised you for them. Did I? I never signed in the end. I didn't sign for them in the end. They released, well, not released me, but they said we we no longer want to bring you in. Um, so that, that, that was fair enough. Okay. Another question for Jonathan Woodgate. Uh, we're getting close to how well do you know Jonathan, by the way, and your chance to win a 10 USDT uh, free bet. Another question from Malo Jones. Who was the striker who challenged you the most? Who was the most difficult you faced? Well, I've got three. Um, I'd say Alan Shearer, first and foremost. He was so difficult to play against backing in. But like in the box, he was just so sharp in the box to to get his shots away. And air really was difficult to play against. A real handful of a striker, Thierry Henry. Oh, his speed, his his pace, his his general all round play. You faced him on uh, one of your debuts, didn't you? Middlesbrough, you debut. Middlesbrough, yeah, yeah. That was the tough. I think I got cramped after about thirty seven minutes. I, I, I stayed on for the all night. I don't know how I stayed on, but I stayed on. And I'd say Luis Suarez. When I was at Stoke, I played against Suarez. And one thing that I, I pride myself on as a centre-back is I never really got rolled or turned when, when the ball was coming in because I normally met it just before it was going to their feet. Suarez was just rolling me. I was like, oh, what? he was so strong. And he gets his body into some strange positions and his arms, his legs, and I, I couldn't get near him in the game. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, let's go through uh, some more of these before we uh, we move on uh, with the behind the bet uh, sports by Dolly with Jonathan Woodgate. Uh, another question from Lola Jones: What does the game against Athletic Bilbao on September the twenty second, two thousand five, mean to you? <laughs> now I am thinking: Is this the? Uh, this is the uh, famous debut, isn't it? This is the debut. So uh, you make your debut. So you've been at Real Madrid uh, for a year. Because uh, you've been injured, we've, we've, we've talked about that, and then you finally make your debut against Athletic Bilbao. Obviously, the night before, you're thinking, "Yeah, okay." When, when did you find out you were playing? First of all, the day before. The day before. The day before. So you go to bed that night thinking, "I'm going to invent." I'm, I'm, I'm already thinking what the game could be like or how I could play. Yeah, you're visualizing the game. Yeah, I didn't visualize that. No, uh, talk to me. <laughs> you about wouldn't, the game. would you? No. Well, again, you're one of five English players to play for Real Madrid. Yeah. This is, I'm not visualising getting sent off and scoring an own goal. Right. So the own goal. Let's talk about the own goal first of all. Right. You are stood, what, 20 yards out, 25 yards, and there's a shot. Yeah. Now, your job as a defender is to stop conceding goals. Yes, to stop the ball going yeah. in the back of that. So the shot near you. So you do the perfectly natural thing, which is try and block the shot. That's all you do, isn't it? Yeah. I think as a defender, you do that. Of course you do. In my defence, so I'd been out for, say, what, a year? I didn't have no practice games. Right. So I was None at all. They none. just threw you straight in. I was straight in. I'd trained and, and done about six weeks' work. I didn't have a practice game. I was straight in. See, that's harsh. So what I'm looking at in my defense is I was a bit like disoriented. I didn't really know if you if you know what I mean. I should have been a bit over to the left, really. I was a bit out of position. So I'm thinking to myself, that's in my defense. Yeah. But it, it's one of them things, isn't it? it, it it's one of them things. To be fair, with the first yellow card as well, I should have been sent off because it was a terrible tackle, mistimed. And I'm not really, wouldn't come across as a dirty player on the pitch. I was more like well-timed. But I could have been sent off for the yellow, but I didn't think the red, I don't think I should have got a red. Yeah, I've heard you say this. So I shouldn't they, have got a red. You you think you should have got a red when you got the yellow, yeah. but you don't think it was a booking when you then picked up the second yellow to get a red. Exactly right. And I think all the players agreed with me. <laughs> could have been, I could have been, it could have been worse. And... Right. I got a straight red. So, Real Madrid fans, especially fans of Barcelona, Real Madrid, the top sides in Spain, they are quite happy to show their displeasure. Uh, the white hankies, the booing, they are on your back straight away. But what happened when you got sent off on your debut? 
I got a standing ovation. Standing ovation. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it myself, to be honest. I was thinking, I'm going to get barracked here. <laughs> I think my mother and father were in the crowd behind, behind the goal, I think they were. Um, they must have started the cheese off. <laughs> but yeah, I got, I, I, could, I got a standing ovation. I think because they realised the work that I'd put in to try and get fit. Yeah. It was well documented in the local press how hard I was working. I was, I was learning the language and I was making mistakes learning the language, but trying and trying to fit into this, this, this culture and this humongous club. What did, the, uh, what did the players, if you can remember, what did the players say to you? Uh, and what do you do when you're sent off? Do you go and have a shower, get changed and wait for the team to come back in? I mean, what, what, uh, or do you sit there in your kit and just feel like, you know, th- this is the worst thing ever? And, and what were the players like with you when they came back in? Can you imagine what I was thinking when I got sent off? Oh, I, I, well, I mean, I would imagine I can only think of about six swear words right yeah. now that uh, cross my Cause mind. Because when you get sent off, you walk down some steps. Yeah. And in the burn of all, you walk up some real steep steps. Yeah. And then you go to the locker room on your right hand side. I remember just sitting there with my head in my hands thinking, oh my God, what has happened here? I remember we were getting beat as well, I think. We ended up winning, winning the game. I think we ended up winning the game 4-2, four, four is that right? I remember just in, being in the locker room and Ronaldo coming over to me. He said, "He said, listen, don't worry about that. Your, your leg's fine. And I just realized, I thought to myself, I've been out for a year now. I've just signed for this team. I'm back. And like he re- rephrased it. He said, listen, it happens to everyone. Just just move on from it. But then I remember picking up my phone and Kieran Dye going to me, that was the worst day I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I had to agree with him. I had to agree with him. It's still the worst one now. Yeah, but it's hard. I mean, you haven't played football for a year and then you throw something into first team action. That's yeah. incredibly harsh. Yeah, I think there was that, that clamour for me to play and to get out there. So I don't think there was time to make all these these friendlies up. So and then, yeah, straight in. as we said, you scored in the Champions League at the Bernabeu against Rosenborg. Uh, literally, what was it? A week or two later? Yeah, something I think it was like that? two weeks later. Two weeks later. But that was probably one. Of, that was a, that was an incredible yeah. feeling. Forty eighth minute equaliser, losing one nil at half time, and then went on to win four one. You were the bedrock of that victory. So <laughs> let's counterbalance the. The assist was the, good. The, the, <laughs> there are. A number of words I can use to describe today's guest. Salsa dancer, that's one of them. Rapper, there's another. Author, as well. Lover of Southern Fried Chicken. Uh, In Liverpool, the word they would use is legend. Gives me great pleasure to welcome to sportsbet.io and behind the bet, Mr. John Barnes. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And oh, of course, course. what an office you have here. You told me you're brand new. Look, look at it. It's perfect. You are our very first guest. I'm honoured. I home. am honoured because it's very it's very plush. Thank you very much. Not like the garden shed from before, is it? I, no, not at all. It is completely different. Uh, and uh, yes, you are a salsa dancer. <laughs> well, I'm not. A, I, I had to because obviously I was a Strictly Come Dancing. I didn't choose to be a salsa dancer. But when you go on things like that, they ask you to do that. And of course, when you say I'm a rapper, because once again, they made a song in 1990 and they asked me to do the rap. I didn't choose to do the rap. And it was between me and Gaza. So it was only going to be one winner. Um, so I got to do it as well. What has been the best memory from your football career? You know, I get asked this question a lot. And not only your best memory, but also your, your highlight. And I always say my whole career. Mm. Because, you know, I remember as a young boy at Watford when I first played my first game and then, of course, at Liverpool. So my whole career, because what we do as human beings is we want to pick out the highlights. But that's not what makes you who you are. You, who you are is, is, is your whole career, be it music, be it film, be it football, be it just life. So my whole career has been the good and the bad because, you know, I ruptured my Achilles tendon and nearly never played football again. They thought I wouldn't play again. So I just look at my whole career with, with fond memories. I can pick out individual moments. One of my favorite moments was obviously being on the pitch with Maradona. You talk about the hand of God and we lost the game. So, you know, you're talking about that not being a happy one. But for me, he's the best player that ever, ever lived. So just to be on the pitch with him was incredible. So I would say that, you know, that probably was, was one of the, the highlights of my career. What was that like then? Because you, you, you came on towards the end of the game in the 86 game against Argentina in the hand of God. What was that like knowing he'd done what he'd done, but you obviously having, you know, such, you know, admiring his skill set? What, what saw, was that like at the end of the game for what you? What did he do before the handball? He saw the goal he scored before that. Oh, it was what a goal that was. It? You know, and you have to appreciate good football. Why? So why I remember that and why that's so important to me was... I had not been on the pitch, 86 World Cup. It seems we're going out, we're 2-0 down. 
I've not been on the pitch at all. So how do you feel part of a World Cup? How can you say you've played in a World Cup when you've been there, you've been on the bench, and you've not got on? So when Bobby Robson said after 15 minutes, with 15 minutes to go, you're going on, I thought, I'm going to play in a World Cup. That's all I thought, and what a great occasion this is. You know, of course, we got, I, I want us to win, and I want to play well, but just for the very fact I got on the pitch hmm. was just... You know, when he said to me, because there have been three or four games before and I'd been on the bench and not even gone on. So I didn't even have my boots on when he said, you know, <laughs> get ready. So I had to put my boots on. So that, that, that really was why. And listen, Karen and Nick has tried to do it, handball, but he never got, he got caught. Michael Owen has done it. We're just not good at it. So I'm not going to say, oh, it's terrible. And, you know, I blame the referee for not seeing it. I don't blame him at all. Because, yeah. you know, if we could all do that to win a game and win a cup final, we would. Yeah, do what you have to do to win a game of football. Because effectively, that's what you're there for. Well, all within the rules of the game. Yeah. Slightly. <laughs> Let's blur them from time to time. Oh, here we go. Current. Which team will win the Premier League this season? Well, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Man City or Liverpool. How's that? I think. Look, do you know if you what? Look at what? If you look at what Liverpool have, and Man City have done in the last two, three years, whereby, you know, last year it went down to the wire in one, w one point. And I can say, yes, I think Liverpool. And people, Man City will say, I think Man City. But I think it's, it's between those two. Um, I think that's a fair, that's fair a, point. That's a fair point. I think, I think you and might I think be right you can, on that you one. Can put a, you know, I think Tottenham and Chelsea will get closer because I think the signings they've made, you know, obviously Conte is a good manager and, and, and obviously Tuchel and, you know, I think Raheem Sterling is a fantastic signing for them. I think Arsenal will improve. They're still young and inexperienced. So I think Tottenham and Chelsea will probably get closer to, to Liverpool and Man City, but I think those two. Man United unknown quantity. Um, they don't have the, the harmony and the, the, and the togetherness and they still are dis, disjointed because of the whole Ronaldo. Does he want to go? Does he want to stay? And you need harmony. So, yeah. But to answer the question simply, um, Man City or Liverpool? If and I, I should say Liverpool or Man City. If I have to push you. If, I have if you have to, to push, push me, I'm going to say Liverpool. Oh, okay, that's fair yeah. enough. Uh, which I understand. But I said that last year and they didn't. Uh, how good is it to see Liverpool back at the top of the Premier League as well, where you know you, you had many a successful season at Liverpool. Then obviously they, they fell away, but United started to dominate. How good is it as an ex-Liverpool fan and a Liverpool legend to see them where they should be? What is the, the most pleasing thing for me, seeing Liverpool, is the consistency in which they're playing. Yeah. So therefore, we finished second last year, and you can say that's disappointment, but we lost one game. And we got to all of those finals and we won the one of the cups as well so we can't legislate for what man city do and i happen to think the best season we had was three years ago when we lost one game won the champions league and man city won the league and we got 97 points whatever it was so it's not about yes it is about winning but all you can do is maximize your own potential to do what you do and if man city win every every other game you can't do anything about that so the pleasing thing for me seeing liverpool play the way they play every single game what do you think about england national team do they need a change or changes not at all because they maximize their potential because all you can ask anyone to do is maximize their potential yeah which is why when liverpool has got 97 points and and lost the league you can ask them to do any more apart from not lose a game and they lost one game which is which is you know crazy so with this england team they sh they are not the best team in the world so why should they win the world cup but what they do is they get to the semi-final, they got to the final of the Euro, so they do as well as they can. Now, with a bit of luck, they can win the final. But all you can ask them to do is to maximize their potential, which means that they should be getting to the latter stages. Now, of course, in the last game or two where we lost to Hungary, that is, un that is unusual. But what Gareth Southgate has done is he's won the games that he should, always. And then, of course, you get to the final against you know, Italy or you, you get to the semi-final in the World Cup against Croatia or whatever and you lose. So I don't think that there's any changes you can necessarily do to improve that situation. Uh, what do you think about the success of the Lionesses? Uh, and obviously we've got a global audience at the moment, but that's a real buzz in English football right now. And isn't it brilliant to see that the actual real success story in England at the moment is the Lionesses? It's been Absolutely. Superb, it's it? been fantastic. But once again, here we are talking about um, moving forward and, and, and making things better for the Lionesses. We have to stop talking about the Lionesses and start to talk about those girls who play for the Lionesses who play for their clubs. Because those Lionesses who play five times a year, who have 85,000 at Wembley, and we're now looking forward to the America game in October, in between then, they're going to go back to the WSL to play for their clubs where 2,000 people are going to go and watch them play. So all of us who pretend to be allies and talking about let's support the Lionesses, but who's going to watch them play for their clubs? Not many people. And that's what has to change. So we have to start looking, supporting them in their clubs because if I ask you who, or, or most men, most people who Harry Kane plays for and, and Raheem Sterling, they know. You ask them who the Lionesses play for, they haven't got a clue because they don't support their clubs. And that is their bread and butter. That has to change. Secondly, if you're talking about growing the game, you go anywhere on a Sunday and you'll see 
15, 16, 17, 18 year old boys playing. You go to the pits, you go to five aside, you'll see old men, you see people who can't play, men who can't play football playing. You see a lot of seven, eight, nine, 10 year old girls playing. You don't see many 17, 18 year old girls playing. And until that happens, whereby you're going to have 17, 18, 19, 20 year old girls playing, you're going to have 30 year old women who, who, like you have 30 year old men who can't play, but they love football and they play. That is where the interest comes from. So this whole idea that because the Lionesses did well, that that's going to inspire people and that's going to help us to be more inclusive, that's not the case at all. You have to, and I say to them, put your money where your mouth is. Everyone who went to watch the Lionesses play, you ask me if they've ever been to a, a game to watch the, those girls play for their club, and most of them would say no, and most of them aren't going to go either. And that's what has to change. This year will be a very unusual fixture due to the World Cup and leagues. What do you think about the World Cup being played in winter? Well, first of all, it has to be played in winter in Qatar. Yes. Because if you've been to Qatar, and, and of course, I was part of the World Cup bid for England when Qatar got it, and everyone was saying about, because I go to Qatar regularly and, and, and Dubai, and you cannot play, you cannot be there in, in, in July. I mean, it's like, you know, it's impossible. So, of course, once it got moved to winter, um, and when we say winter, it is going to be between 70 and 90 degrees, which is great to play football in. So it's not going to be too hot at all. And in fact, if you think about the World Cup anywhere in the world, the World Cup in England in, in July, it's more than 80 degrees because it's hot as well, 100 degrees at a time. So it'll be perfect. Um, obviously, it's not ideal from a club perspective uh, in terms of breaking and coming back. But, you know, I'm a believer that, you know, the, wor the football belongs to the world. So therefore, you should have it in South Africa, in Qatar, in these places, because it's not just about playing it in Europe or South America, because everybody loves football, everybody. And it's about your ability to host the World Cup. And secondly, you talk about the legacy that's going to be left behind. And the Qatar World Cup is going to leave probably the most impactful legacy worldwide than any other World Cup in terms of what they're going to be doing with their stadiums. Mm. They're going to be dismantling their stadiums and giving them to a lot of the third world countries in Africa and, 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 and Central America because it's made in such a way like Lego that they can dismantle them and give them rather than keeping 80,000 seater stadiums in Qatar where they don't need them. And the work they've been doing, we know the issues that people talk about, but the work they've been doing worldwide to not just clean up their act, but to really leave a long lasting legacy rather than just saying, give us the World Cup because we got lots of money and then nothing much is done after it. So I'm really looking forward to it. Covering every game of the English Premier League, Champions League and Europa League, live as they happen. This is Clubhouse TV. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everybody. It is Clubhouse TV and we have the big game of the weekend about to kick off. In Manchester, it is uh, around about eight minutes away from kickoff. Manchester City in third place at the moment, taking on Arsenal, who start this game in second place. They started the day just one point, um, well, Man City one point behind Liverpool. Arsenal the same points. Liverpool obviously winning earlier 2 1 against Brighton in our previous fixture today. But there is all to play for at the top of the table. Manchester City taking on Arsenal it is a huge game 2.06 for Man City, 3.65 the tie, 3.5. For Arsenal, I'll give you the teams very quickly indeed. Ortega in goal, Guardiola, Ake, Diaz and Akanji is the back four. Rodri in midfield, Foden, Kovacic, De Bruyne and Silva behind Haaland in attack. And for Arsenal, it's David Rea in goal, White, Saliba, Gabriel and Kivior is the back four. Odegaard, Jorginho and Rice in midfield with Saka, Havertz and Gabriel Jesus in attack. It's James and it is Simon with you this afternoon, this wonderful Sunday and Si, you fancy Arsenal today. I actually maybe just fancy Man City. I don't know. I can't call this one. OK, I'm going with Arsenal uh, because I think uh, Manchester City's defence has been disrupted a lot. I also think that Arsenal kind of got a bit of a monkey off the back earlier this season when they beat Manchester City in the league. So prior to Arsenal beating... Well, actually, prior to the Community Shield, you might, you might go all the way back to August, Community Shield, they played... It was a one-all draw. I think um, Man City were they're, they're led in that game through Cole Palmer. And then Leandro Trossard scored in stoppage time to take it to penalties. They went straight to penalties and Arsenal won the penalty shootout. OK, you think it's just a friendly. Who cares? But that stopped a run of, <laughs> get this, eight consecutive wins for Man City. So Man City had beaten Arsenal eight times in a row mm. until the Community Shield when Arsenal won on penalties. Then, in the league, they played in October, Arsenal won again. The trend has been reversed. Arsenal no longer have a psychological block about playing Manchester City. City's edge that they had 
going into the game going, oh, we always beat these. We've beaten them eight times on trot. It's no longer there. Arsenal are now on an equal footing. I would say possibly on a higher footing than Manchester City going into this game because of the injuries that City have got. Okay. So Arsenal, not to lose for me. Um, you could take them draw no bet. You could take them double chance. And there's still a decent price about draw or Arsenal at 1.67. You know, you're getting two results there. Um, but why not take them draw no bet to win the game? Yeah. Um, I think I think Arsenal have a great chance of winning. Um, yeah, interesting the way in there. I... I I don't know the outrights here, so I'm really I, two point five two Arsenal draw no better. I again. think I think we get goals. Si. I I don't think either manager is going to come into this one thinking nil nil. Let's let's see how the rest of the season pans out. They'll be wanting to win this one. Might get cagey in the last twenty or something like that if it uh, if it's still um, even Stevens kind of thing. But I think we get goals, so I, I'm looking for goal scorers here, and mm-hmm. I I think um, if you go through the the the, the lineups that I've just read out to you. Um, obviously, Haaland's going to be attracting the money. You've got um, others there that are kind of maybe um, taking some cash from people in terms of goal scorers. De Bruyne is probably going to take some money on goal scorers as well. I, I fancy Foden. I just think Foden is having such a good season um, for uh, for Man City. He's playing today. Foden, Foden would be my pick for, um, uh, for a Man City scorer at a slightly bigger price than a Haaland. And possibly if I'm looking at an Arsenal scorer, Saka is going to be taking your cash. Um, Gabriel Jesus is the the striker. Havertz has been maybe scoring more goals than he, he did do, um, but Declan Rice has been picking up goals. Um, Odegaard's yeah. been scoring goals as well. So I maybe if I'm looking for goal scorers today, I'm looking at Foden for Man City. I'm looking at Odegaard and Rice for 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 Arsenal. What do you? Uh, Bukayo Saka for me. Um, he's got a good record against Manchester City. Uh, he scored in. Two of Arsenal's last three home league games against Man City. He hasn't scored away against Man City, which would be a slight concern, but he does has scored against them. Um, for Man City, I mean, you can't look too far from Haaland. He scored in two of his last uh, four games against Arsenal. So, yeah, ha- Haaland and Saka, I think, would be the two top of my list. Okay, so Haaland and Saka. You just go for Arsenal. I may be just favouring Manchester City. Um, but, uh, well, this is a fantastic way yeah. to finish a Sunday. And it was a really good question asked by Alexi whilst we were listening to John Barnes there, and it was about bookings for this game. Yeah. He's gone, um, do you think uh, over four and a half... What do you <laughs> just, think about Just over, leave it at, do you think? Over four uh, and a half cards <laughs> in the Man City-Arsenal game. And I have to say, yes. I think there's so much tension, so much riding on the game. There will be um, tackles, there will be cards. But also look at the referee here, Anthony Taylor, um, who's a Manchester referee. I'm not saying that's going to have any bias on the game, but you look at some of the games where he's refereed, Manchester clubs, they do <laughs> tend to do all right. But, you know, like I say, I think Arsenal win this game today or have a better chance of winning this game than the odds suggest. When you look at um, Arsenal's record against Man City, um, Pep always had the better of, of Mikel Arteta. Um, this is this is a real chance for Arsenal because after after the disappointment of their run in last season, they seem to be slightly better. Declan Rice has made a big difference for them, but I think if Arsenal were to win today, then I'd think they're favourites to win the title. Um, I think if Man City win today, I don't think it actually makes much difference between Man City and Liverpool. But I think Arsenal's the belief that an Arsenal team would get from going to Manchester City and taking all three points and then being top of the table come the end of today, Mm. that would be massive. It would be such a big fillip for for Arteta's men. I think in terms of belief and in terms of their ability to actually look at the last nine games and think we're going to do this, it would be massive. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Uh, I, th- I think they can do it. You know, they're, they're, a, they're a tight lot. I think um, he's made an interesting tactical tweak today with not picking Martinelli from the start. Um, Gabriel Jesus, Havertz and Saka, the front three. Uh, I think they'll be interchanging positions there. Saka will clearly stay out on the on the right. That's his role. But I think Havertz and probably Gabriel Jesus will try and um, confuse the Man City defence there by swapping positions. Anthony Taylor, by the way, the referee, averages 5.15 yellow cards per game in the Premier League this season. He also averages, which is the, um, that's the second highest average for any Premier League referee for yellow cards per game, 103 yellow cards in 20 games. So yellow cards over four and a half for sure there, Alexi. But what about a penalty in the game? This referee gives penalties. 0.55 penalties per game. He's the second highest average for penalties per game of the referees this season. So look at 
penalty bets, and there are a few. You can back Man City to be awarded a penalty. You can back Arsenal to be awarded a penalty. You have to be you have to be quite quite quick on these. So Man City to miss a penalty is nineteen. Okay, I mean David Raya, he might save it. Either team to score from a penalty is three point six five. Okay, I don't mind that. Arsenal to score from a penalty is seven point six, and um, Arsenal to be awarded a penalty is six point four. And Arsenal to miss a penalty is 22. Either team to miss a penalty is 15. Lots of penalty markets. Look at them seriously for this game because this ref gives penalties. Could you share your best bet with our creatures on yeah. the uh, Telegram chat if you can? And uh, Odegaard um, in the middle there doing the toss ahead of kickoff here. Man City 2.02. The tie 3.8. Arsenal 3.55. It's a crazy big game this. It's going to be one that... Well, it's one that yeah, for a while now, you kind of you look at the fixtures coming up and you look at the title running. This has been a game that people have been talking about for some time and it is about to get underway in Manchester. So however you're betting, gamble responsibly. Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io. I shared the pictures of the two managers there, Lego Hair and uh, Pep in the dugouts. Um, having a bit of an embrace there, know each other well, of course, because uh, Arteta was uh, alongside Pep at Manchester City for some time before he went to Arsenal. So they are friends off the pitch. They are mortal enemies as things uh, get underway in just a few seconds' time as Arsenal to prepare to take on Manchester City in their own backyard. As I say, if Arsenal could win today, it would be such a psychological boost for them as head of the uh, the rest of these games in the Premier League. Can they do it? Can they take all three points? Can they be top of the table? They're about to kick off in Manchester. Counting down to kick-off. Covering every game of the English Premier League, Champions League and Europa League. Live. This is Clubhouse TV with sportsbet.io. Please gamble responsibly. And we are underway, Clubhouse Creatures. Alexi says it will be fun if uh, Jesus scores. He saves all of his goals for this game. Simon shared well, his best bets there. It's his time of the year as well, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is where he rises. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Man City. Uh, the headline writer's dream is Gabriel Jesus scoring in this game yeah. because that is just... On, gonna... East, on Easter Sunday. Yeah. And um, we're underway as well in Germany. Stuttgart taking on Heidenheim in the Bundesliga. The Augsburg Colm game finished one apiece. And uh, Strasbourg are uh, 27 minutes into their uh, um, battle against uh, Rennes today in French League, and that is currently goalless. Sirona against uh, Betis is one apiece in the 53rd minute. But excuse me, everybody. I know that if you come on the Telegram chat and you suggest another game, we'll, we, we will, of course, look at it. But our eyes are very much trained on uh, Manchester City against Arsenal in the Premier League. In the in studio, we do have another game on as well. Arsenal ladies taking on the Chelsea women. And uh, that is uh, currently uh, goalless in the uh, 71st minute, is that, Si? Yeah, this is the League Cup final. So they're playing at Molyneux. Uh, quite a big crowd. And um, this is a repeat of last year's Women's League Cup final, which Arsenal won 3-1. Chelsea are going for a quadruple this season in women's football. So they're top of the Women's Super League. They're in the Champions League semi-finals. They're still in the Women's FA Cup. And they're looking to add their first silverware of the season here in this trophy. But I fancy Arsenal. I fancy an Arsenal double here. I'd say Arsenal women... Arsenal men, maybe back and both. Hmm. Uh, right, will there be a corner between three and ten? Of course there will. I'm getting on the rapid betting for this, Si. Uh, I, I, I stayed away from the rapid betting on the first game of the day, but I am going to get big on the rapid betting in this Man City game. Here's a chance for Haaland. Oh, is that a penalty? The referee looked at it. And he said offside. Oh. oh. They might, oh. Well, VAR, VAR might get involved in that because uh, they may have made a mistake on the pitch. Let's see. He's just offside anyway. Yeah. He is offside. The lines so. have been drawn. The, uh, the the grass has been cut perfectly to see that one mm. clearly. So that's good. They almost cut grass with um, spirit levels these days, don't they? Because mm. the grass does play such a part in, in the offsides when you've got the stripes on the pitch. Oh, yeah. It helps the linesman massively, doesn't it? Yeah. When they're, um... gone, gone are the days where they try to do pretty patterns of cross diagonals and stuff. They oh, get yeah. the straight lines to help the, uh, the officials. Um, but uh, we are uh, very much up and running. Man City nil, Arsenal nil in the third minute. By this stage in the earlier game, we'd already had a Welbeck stunner, hadn't we? And a goal in that game, but uh, yet to get the first goal in Man City Arsenal. Do we? Do we think it's a goal fest? Um, I think there's goals in it. I think uh, I'd be score like I'd be sort of two one, two one Arsenal. 1-1 one, one maybe, but I, I am edging towards Arsenal in this one, so two one. All right, we we do need a. Uh, a, a, a free bet condition, don't we? And I said earlier that we, we I quite fancy doing something which is like twofold across corners, cards and uh, uh, and goals. So shall we say, if we get over 1.5 goals, yeah. if we get over 9.5 corners, and if we get over 
Four point five cards. Yeah. Is that? Do you think that's fair? So you say one point five goals. So we need two goals. Yeah. I'm going to write this down so I remember. Um, so over one point five goals. So two goals or more. Uh, what did I say? Over nine point five corners. Yeah, and over four point five cards. Yeah. And over four point five cards. So we need all three. We need all three. So it's like it was like we built a bet. Over 1.5 goals, over 9.5 corners, over 4.5 cards. If all three of those come in, then uh, 10 USDT will be on its way to 10 of you. Yeah. Um, come the, uh, well, come whenever it lands. Hopefully it lands very soon indeed. Got a free kick for De Bruyne on this near side as it's uh, played in towards the back post. Ooh. And uh, that goes behind. Well, there's a corner. Yep. Ben White uh, doing his job at the back post there. Uh, I think... Uh, Corner kick between three and ten. Yeah. First rapid bet wins. Get in. I think Get set in. set pieces could, could be could be huge in this game. And as we've seen all season, Arsenal's set piece game is elite. Arsenal have been, I think, the best team at both defending De and attacking. De set Declan pieces. Rice has made a surprisingly um, positive impact on that. Not that surprising. That, well, you know, I, I, I never when when he was at West Ham, I never thought of him as the set piece taker. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, as a taker, sorry. Yeah. Yes, um, he's take, been taking a lot of corners and free kicks. But, and he's been his delivery's been brilliant. Yeah, but defending set pieces is is a height mm. and his ability to to dominate. City the into the penalty area, well. ball played in, headed away by Arsenal. With City at the start of the brighter, City have um, got the ball down the Arsenal end, haven't they? Started the brighter of the yeah, two teams. Yeah, they have yeah. So, uh, I mean, on the basis of that, would you? Is it too early to say City to score the first goal? Way too early, yeah, way too early. City 1.93 now in the uh, live markets, 3.65 the tie, 3.85 for Arsenal. I genuinely don't know what's going to happen here. You know, sometimes you come into a match with quite firm expect. I mean, not always right, but you come in with quite firm expectations and how you see something happening. I just don't know what the next 84 minutes brings in this one. Really don't. No, I think if this was a game played in October, September, you know, heart, first half, even up to sort of like Christmas, you could say... If it's sort of 1-1 with 10 minutes to go, both coaches might go, OK, you know, all right, it's, it, let's not push too much. A draw is not the worst result. This scenario, though, right now, having especially having just seen Liverpool win, mm. there's no way these two teams are settling for a point here. They're no. both going for the win. It's not saying it doesn't finish a draw because you could still have two teams absolutely going for the win and it still finishes in a draw. But there's no way that this game will be played at a sort of tempo where... Teams are visibly settling for the result. They're going to be pushing and pushing and pushing. And, you know, I think that means goals. I think that means excitement, drama. And, you know, the, the best the best team on the day should win. Um, we were talking yesterday about um, Eddie Howe's future at Newcastle. And then I got home last night and I started thinking about it. Gareth Southgate's going to leave the England job, isn't he, this summer? Yeah, OK, don't, don't fall into the trap here that that Gareth Southgate's going to get a job straight away. No, but Gareth Southgate's going to leave the England job. He is? I don't, th I don't care what he does in oh, af okay. after okay. that. Yeah, sorry. I think Eddie Howe gets that job. The England job? I think um, the FA, Eddie Howe is almost built for them. He's ni nicely clean cut. He's kind of in the Gareth Southgate mould. He's got a good record in the Premier League. He, he will be, um, I think, favourite to take over from Gareth Southgate. So when we were talking about him being under pressure yesterday, I could see a scenario where Newcastle have already decided... Um, and probably spoken to the FA even about the, um, Eddie Howe's availability to take on the England role and we'll probably be talking to a because we were saying yesterday a higher profile kind of manager going into Newcastle with all the kind of that charisma and bells and whistles to uh, kind of take them forward as Arsenal go close with um, Gabriel Jesus um, I can see that already almost being planned uh, no not not myself um... yeah, you don't think Eddie Howe will replace Gareth no who do you think would Graham Potter Oh, I'd, no. I I I think the FA would look at Eddie Howe above Graham Potter. Uh, if you look at Graham, if you look at Eddie Howe's body of work, yeah, clearly he's he's done more in the game than Graham Potter. Graham Potter was manager of uh, uh, Uster, what are they called now? I can't remember the name of the team now. Uster, Uster Sons, was it? Um, Uster Sons, yeah, yeah. In Sweden, did okay, but it's you know really low profile job. Uh, then to Swansea. Did well, uh, didn't really win any trophies. Went to Brighton, did well, didn't win any trophies. Um, went to Chelsea. He's not been at Chelsea didn't do so well. Other than Chelsea, he's not been at Chelsea uh, at title uh, trophy winning sides. No, and even at his time at Chelsea, Chelsea weren't in the race. But really, for... I mean, like, isn't that what England look for in managers? You know, guys who've got nothing on the CV, like like <laughs> Gareth Southgate had at Middlesbrough. Well, Eddie, Eddie Howe's got them down. Eddie Howe's got nothing on his CV really in terms of winning things, has he? 
Uh, no. Uh, promotions, that's about it, really, yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, I, th- I think Gareth Southgate's probably done his... W- whether he wins the Euros or whether he doesn't, I think he's probably um, ready for something else. I mean, your, your old Trafford mob are, are sniffing around him by the sounds of it. Uh, Potter or South- Southgate? Southgate, yeah. I think... Would you like that? If, if, you, if it was going to be announced tomorrow, Manchester United are going to get rid of Eric Ten Hag... Um, we wish him well. Gareth Southgate's going to be our new man after the Euros. Would you be happy? I wouldn't like it, but I could live with it. Mm. I could live with it in a sense that, yeah, okay, Gareth Southgate is a steady pair of hands. He's not going to... I was going to say, exactly a safe pair of hands. Yeah. yeah. He knows the players. I think he's got support. You know, look at Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw, he picks... I mean, Gareth Southgate described Luke Shaw as the best left back in the world the other day. He loves him. And if, if Luke Shaw's half fit, he'd take him to the Euros. So... He's got an ally there in the United dressing room already. Harry Maguire. Gareth Southgate picked Harry Maguire when Eric Ten Hag wouldn't. You know, he, he gave him I, a lot of I, backing there. When we spoke about this yesterday, I used the example of Marcus Rashford. Because when you see Marcus Rashford in the Manchester United shirt, half the time it doesn't look as if he cares. I mean, I'm sure he does inside. But when you see him in an England shirt, he's busting a gut yeah. for Gareth Southgate. Gareth Southgate is getting something out of Marcus Rashford that Ten Hag isn't. So what you'd say is there's three powerful allies already in the Old Trafford dressing room for Gareth Southgate if he was to go in there. But, this is my big but here. And you cannot lie. Uh, Yeah. Gareth Southgate's not going to leave the England job after six years and go straight into a a club management job because he'll want a rest. You know, the Euros finish in Mm, July. You say that, if he gets off with a big team like Manchester United, and despite the fact that I don't like them, they are a big team... He can't afford to turn that down because you never get, you might never get it again. Uh, I don't know. I like so offers like that don't come around every day, do they? What if he wins the Euros? Then, then he's you know if he, if England win the Euros and he could do, couldn't he? Then they could win the Euros. He's not going to want to go straight from like the the, the Euros finishes what uh, first week of July, something like that. Pre season for the clubs will have already started. Um, the season begins in August, so he's, there's a month between the end of the Euros and the first competitive games for, say, it is Man United or whichever team it would be that wants Gareth Southgate. It's not enough of a gap. Um, he would want, you know, he'd probably want to go off on a beach somewhere and just forget about football for a month. So the timeline doesn't fit for the the big jobs so, that could be coming. So what up you're saying is that Ten Hag will get sacked about a month into the season next year? Maybe so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You heard it here first, Clubhouse Creatures. That is the future timeline for Manchester United Football Club. Um, I've had two rapid bets. They've both won, Si. You're doing well, then. So yeah. these on a uh, ball out of play or uh, throw-ins and I had corners? A, I had a corner in the, between three and ten, mm. and I had a throw-in between seven and nine. Both have happened. Mm. So uh, I'm yeah. flying, Simon Barler. Flying. Mm. Flying without wings, as Westlife would say. Um, which team gets an arm? I'd like that one. I, I, I love the rapid betting. If you haven't ever done it, it's on the left-hand side of the menu now, sportsbet.io. We've actually got it on the uh, the home screen. You can see it in play, upcoming esports, virtual sports, rapid betting is there. Click on it. Just have a play. Gamble responsibly, of course. It might not be your thing. It might be your thing, but I like it. Um, but uh, if so, if you fancy having a little bit of a, a fiddle around with the rapid betting as we go yeah. through Manchester City against Arsenal, always gamble responsibly. City have been the better team so far, no doubt. The, the game's been played in Arsenal's half, but they haven't really hurt um, Arsenal. Raya's not made a save. Um, you know, it, it, it's manageable at the moment from from Arsenal's point of view. They're not getting caught out. Um, we have got um, well, Ente's picking Arsenal to win. Um, Brahi says hello, hello, City to win. Hello, Brahi. Cheese with us. Hello, hello to Chi. Yeah. Good, uh, good day, Chi. Um, I pick the draw. Says Ishitin. Black Dog Lashia Noirs with us as well. He's joined us uh, this afternoon, uh, and we have got. Um, um, hello again, says Ramsey22. Hello, Ramsey. Um, Shadow Shivgami says that he thinks that City's going to win. And um, he's saying hello to uh, Ramsey. Hello to Shadow Shivgami. Hello to Ramsey. Hello to everybody out there. Hurrah. Um, good he's, to he's have you with us. It sounds like there's more City backers than Arsenal backers out there at the moment. Hurrah for Karah. Yes. It's good to have you here, Karah. Clubhouse TV, sportsbet.io, the world's most fantabulous Bitcoin sports book. And it it's is, great it to really have is. you with us. It's great to have mm. you with us this afternoon. Manchester City against Arsenal. Where else would you rather be than be watching Clubhouse TV and uh, taking in this fixture? 1.93 now for Man City, 3.65 the tie, 3.85 
for the Gunners. Serona take the lead against Betis in Spain, 66th minute. They go 2-1 up there, and uh, they were the high flyers, weren't they, at the start of this uh, yeah. Spanish season. They have slipped a little bit, but this uh, result would uh, kind of cement their place into third. They'd be two points behind Barcelona, um, but uh, seven points behind Real Madrid if they win today. Yeah, kind of hit the skids there, haven't they, a little bit recently? Um, well, I mean, they, they were never... I mean, they, I suppose they could have done a Leicester, but they were never really going to sustain it all the way through the season, were they? I mean, they'd be very happy with third, you'd think, wouldn't you? Mm. Just looking in France, still nil-nil between Strasbourg and Rennes. Rennes would have been favourites going into this game. Uh, but looking at the stats... Yeah, Rennes have had the better, of it. actually, they've had the better. So, Strasbourg, managed by Patrick Vieira, the Arsenal great, uh, having a tricky season... Um, I fancy him to get something from this game, though. Maybe a draw. I think strasbourg Ren could be a, a draw. Maybe even a nil-nil draw. It's mm. nil-nil at the moment. Not a lot going on in that one, to be honest. I'm going in on the fouls now. I've, I'm total fouls between 16 and 26. I need three or more. So free kicks, basically. Mm. Yeah. I need uh, three or more between 16 and 26. So mm. come on, the fouls. Let's get dirty, Man City. Let's get dirty, Arsenal. Pictures have kicked me out here. And, Sorry. Uh, well, well, that's because I'm mean, the wrong game. That's I, right. I don't blame you. Yeah, if you stay on the same game, yeah. it kind of ultimately ends its, uh, ends its period. You have to go and yeah. find the real one. Yeah. And we're back in. We're back uh, Man City oh. on the uh, left-hand side. And that's going to be a corner for uh, the team in blue. So uh, City the on, boys the, in on blue. the attack. And uh, can they... Uh, can they take the lead from this corner? Uh, that's so much riding on this game. This is so. I think this this match is pivotal mm. to this title race. I mean, Liverpool have sailed on today, but this is pivotal to these two sides. Whoever wins this, I think, goes favourites to win the title. Good. Th- was it? Would it be a good thing for? Uh... Oh, chance! Oh, oh, David Raya saved that more by luck than judgment. He almost lodged between his knees, and he didn't know anything about that. Nathan Ake got his head on that. It's like a wrestling match there, wasn't it? Trying to get position at the near post. And Arsenal are so good usually at clearing the ball from the near post that on this occasion, Man City had a great chance. Great chance to score. That was actually very good keeping. because he, he hit his hand first. And there's, there's a, um, a tendency, if you're kind of under stress and panicky, that mm-hmm. you maybe go with rigid hands. But he had very soft hands there, so the ball just bounced down yep. below him and he was able to pick it up at the second bite of the cherry. So that was good keeping, I think, there from David Rea. Oh, I think if uh, Aaron Ramsdale was in goal, it'd be 1-0 to Man City already, wouldn't it? He's having a bit of a shocker this season, the poor lad. He's hardly playing. Well, he, he played against Brentford, didn't he? And he made a mistake on his only game for... Oh, it's a corner. He, but he, he did... Um, he, his second half was brilliant, though. Yeah, he, he got better. He, he, I, he I, didn't um, get caught out because Ivan Tony tried to chip him from the halfway line, didn't he? He just got back. Mm. But I, I think um, he showed quite a lot of character in that because he made a big rick. And rather than let it kind of derail his whole match, he, he gritted his teeth and, and played really well, I think, from there. Still no way he's at Arsenal next season, though. You know? Oh, no. If I was him, I wouldn't want to be. No, well, I mean, he's not going to go to the Euros as a result of this season. He was in um, Southgate's last squad, though, wasn't he? Well, do, do you take a, a guy who's a reserve keeper to the Euros as your reserve keeper? I don't know. I'd maybe. take him. Yeah. I like him, I think. Uh, and I think he's... Because, um, I mean, let's face it, you take your keepers number two and three... As squad keepers, don't you? You're, it's only an injury, really. It's going to probably make you ch- make a change from your first choice keeper. And I think Ramsdale's quite a a good squad guy. I think he's quite a jokey kind of bloke that's quite good in the dressing room. So, yeah. um, and I, you don't take somebody as a mascot. He's good enough to play, but you, that does, you know, how you how you act as part of a non as a non playing member of a team does make a difference. Oh, definitely, I think you want to you want for the goalkeeper position. You want somebody who's, who's going to put pressure, mm. good pressure on the starter. So Jordan Pickford seems to be the number one choice still. Um, so you just want the other goalkeepers I mean, there to, to challenge, you know, yeah. to sort of offer the opportunity for the coach to go, mm, actually, you're doing better than Jordan Pickford. I'll Pick, pick you. Pickford made a big mistake in the, in the last England game against Belgium. His clearance went straight to um, Tielemans, who scored. So yeah, it's, I didn't see yeah. that game. Um, so I think it was the first time he'd made a mistake that led to a goal, but it won't, um, won't have gone unnoticed, I don't think. Um, but yeah, I, I like um, I like Aaron Ramsdale. I must admit, he's... he's uh, Got good character, I think. I think I'd take him. Whether it's as your first choice, second choice, or third choice, I think he'd be one of the three. Yeah. Do you think um, England got a chance winning the Euros? Well, obviously got a chance, but uh, which sort of teams are, are going to be the, the teams to win the Euros for you? Um, I, I mean, I, I watched the match between England and Belgium, 
as uh, Man City's attack breaks down again. De Bruyne picks it up. It goes out. To, well, no, I was going to say go out left. He, he doubles back. Um, and I think um, there was nothing between those two sides. I think yeah. England had uh, the majority of the play. Two good goals from Tielemans, but England uh, bounced back. Bellingham's going to be a huge player for England. Foden is. Kane is obviously... Um, they've got certainly got. Is um, it still Roberto Martinez, the coach of Belgium? Is it? No, it, no, they've it's, changed it. Okay. Um, who so is I'm it? I'm just not following the uh, the European teams like I used to. Can't remember his name, but it's definitely a, a different one. Belgium manager uh, is um, Domenico Tedesco. Oh, okay, yeah. Ex, succeeded um, Roberto Martinez as Belgium manager in February 2023. I think he's ex Stuttgart manager. I yeah. think so. Uh, yeah, I think Martinez stepped down after the World Cup, didn't he? And uh, Tedesco came in, but um, yeah, he, so he's in charge there. Um, I, if if you look at, I mean, it's, it's going to be an interesting competition, uh, but I think England have a have a chance. Certainly, they're in in the top tier of teams that have a chance. Yeah, um, and it's how you play, isn't it? If you can mm. build up the momentum in the competition, get that belief in your side. Um, some big teams go into a major tournament and they have a couple of dodgy results early on and, and fall by the wayside. If you can go in there, your first game's not not you know, necessarily a, a, a te- it's how you finish a tournament, but you need to get through that group. And if you can build that momentum and that belief as you go on, then anybody can win it really. But uh, could be a chance here for Arsenal. No, so I'm looking at the uh, women's game now. I should 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 uh, say Arsenal women are still nil nil with Chelsea women in the uh, the women's league cup final, but. Uh, but yeah, I think England go there. I mean, Germany, Germany aren't playing that well at the moment, are they? Spain will be a, a contender. I think Spain are going to be a, a decent... Clearly France as well. I mean, you know, yeah. you've got Kylian Mbappe and the, the midfield they've got. You think they've got a very good chance. I'd say the top three for me, as we enter it, and it may be, you know, prob- sometimes when you, you look at it like this, one of them will probably have an absolutely dreadful tournament. One of them will um, pro- probably win it. Um, Spain... Um, I mean, Belgium aren't bad, um, but Spain, England um, would be two of the teams, as you say, France, and then probably just underneath that, Belgium. Um, I don't think England would want to draw any of those too early, put it no. that way. Mm. Yeah. But it's going to be good. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, and you've got, uh, you know, I think more teams in that second tier this, this time around that really would have chances of winning it than perhaps ever mm. before, you know, so you could maybe look at in the past, you looked at Euros and you go, oh, there's only four teams that can win it. I'd say maybe 10. Yeah. But from an England perspective, if they can go there with everybody fit, that's a big thing. Because obviously, if Harry Kane gets an injury on the yeah. on the edge of the tournament, that's going to make a big difference. Bellingham as well, Foden. Those three, um, I think, will probably get into most other international sides. Um, so they're the kind of crown jewels in England's team. But then you've got the likes of John Stones and the Kyle Walkers, who are going to be incredibly important as well. They... Um, if they could go with everybody fit and everybody confident, then England have got a great chance of winning it. Yeah. Uh, of course, Jordan Henderson as well. Did he play for Ajax this morning? Let's have a look, actually, because... Um, no. Jordan Henderson is injured at the moment, isn't he? Didn't play for England, and he didn't play for Ajax in their 3-1 win against Zvola. Wasn't on the bench. Health problems have been cited there for Jordan Henderson. So, uh, he, I, I mean, if he goes, he's only he's a squad player, isn't he, rather than the starter? Oh, clearly, yeah. yeah. But you know, Gareth Southgate. I think a couple of weeks ago, Gareth Southgate was planning on taking Jordan Henderson. Maybe now, Kobe Minu's come through. Kobe Minu, he played really well for England the other day. I, I, I like him. He's got, mm-hmm. and when you see him interviewed, I've only seen him a couple of times speaking, but he speaks very maturely. He's he's obviously quite oh, a yeah. bright kid, and he he knows. I'd, he strikes me as somebody that isn't going to get um, derailed by the hype. No, not at all. No. He looks Good like family. he's quite grounded and um, and knows where he's, you know, what he needs to do to be better. Definitely. So I, yeah, I, I, I like him. I, I'd take him. Um, I think if you if you're looking at the the midfield for England, you've got Declan Rice and you've got um, Bellingham. They're they're your starters, aren't they? Yes. Um, and then you've got Mainu to Mainu to uh, support them. Um, you've got Foden. You've got. Um, Kane up front, it's where Saka, the, yeah. Saka as well kind of picks itself really the front yeah. three at the moment. I think I think um, you know if all of those are fit and firing, then England have got a great chance. Mm. Um, the injuries could derail them, but I think England have got quite a, you know probably probably more so than any other time some strength in depth. They've got some uh, people to come in if uh, if needed, but uh, I don't think Calvin Phillips will be on that tr- that plane. No, Calvin Phillips is um, as well. You, you worry what what's going to happen to him now. He's, he looks so. 
bad at the moment, doesn't he? Well, did you see the little incident after the game yesterday? No. What happened? Um, the West Ham fans had stayed to kind of um, wave off the team bus, and when Calvin Phillips came out, um, he got heckled and sworn at and told that he was rubbish, get yeah, out of our nice. club, all not that nice, kind of stuff. It? But then he reacted. He shouldn't have reacted. He got on the bus and kind of flicked them the end, the finger. And um, he's, he's kind of in, in the headlines because of that. But you can understand it. If, you, if you're under stress, if it's not quite going for you, um, and you know that you're not quite playing as well as you want to, and then a load of supposedly your fans are giving you a load of grief, you can understand um, losing your rag a little bit, can't you? Yeah. But, so, yeah, it's not a move at the moment. that is. It's not turning out like a Jesse Lingard move, is it? No, no, not at all, no. Uh, yeah, because he, did he... Did he Missed well. Obviously, it was a penalty against him in the game, but I think also in the the final goal where Harvey Barnes scored, he he missed the tackle on the edge of the box, mm. and him, Harvey Barnes just got past him and then scored from that. So he he just needs um, a couple of very uneventful nil nils that he yeah, could just get ninety just minutes under his belt and start get start playing he, well. He's not Matt Sharp. He's not played enough, and um, you know I think David Moyes maybe brought him into that team too early. Um, maybe underestimated the fact that he's not played more than about 20 minutes for Manchester City in, in the last two years. And uh, he possibly needs a couple of substitutes appearances and just mm. be built up. But then you don't you don't bring in a big player on loan to do that with them, do you? You don't come in to kind of babysit them. You you kind of, the whole point of bringing a player in on loan is that he's going to add to your, your 11. Uh, just some news coming in from Sportsbet.io who've tweeted that uh, there's a big bet alert on this game. Hold your breath. A two thousand, me, me, I'm going to say milli Bitcoin bet has been placed on Man City to win with odds of one point nine six during this game, uh, aiming to a win, aiming to win three point sorry three thousand nine hundred twenty milli Bitcoins. What do you think? That is a big bet. So what do they need? Alexei says Hold that. Right. I think Alexei is saying that translates to about two million dollars. Blimey. I knew I pressed the wrong buttons when I put that bet on. <laughs> I need to phone. Yeah, it's, I need to phone my bank. You, I need to phone my bank quickly. I told you it's Arsenal going to win this game. <laughs> well, good luck to whoever. But I don't, God, even if I had a lot of money, I don't think I'd put that amount on. That's a lot of money to risk, isn't it? Gamble responsibly, everybody, including whoever put that bet on. Hopefully, it's uh, hopefully it works out for you. It's one hundred forty thousand um, dollars, says Black Dog. Okay, one hundred forty thousand okay. dollars. Well, even that's enough, isn't it? Is that not enough for you, Le Chien Noir? Mm. So yes, this, it's more than I've got currently in the bank. Um, put it that way. Um, so uh, nil-nil, though, back to the game, 25 minutes in. And so far, no clear-cut chance, really? No, been, it's not been cagey, but uh, it's been well defended, shall we say. Both teams have defended it well, apart from that one set piece where Ake got in and, and David Raya was needed to save it. The, ge- the keepers have hardly been used. Um, but, you know, credit to Raya. He was in the right place. He made the save. Is this an injury, though? Nathan Ake coming off. He's picked oh. up a, Oscar Bob's coming on. No, Welcome no. back. It's Rick, Rico Lewis. Oh, yeah, it's Rico Lewis. He's good as well, isn't he? Yeah, oh, Rico yeah. Rico Lewis. But they, is, they've, is, got, they've got a few youngsters coming through. The injuries are piling up for Man City now, particularly mm-hmm. in defence. I tell you what, Nathan Ake is unsung at Manchester City. We Everybody talks about all the oh, other yeah. players, your Rodri's, your Foden's and stuff. Nathan Ake is just very quietly having a very good season for them. Obviously, his day, though, has finished and uh, Rico Lewis is on as his replacement. Nil-nil, 27th minute. And, uh, well, f- hasn't changed, has it? No. Still very massively important. There's a little bit... I don't think we've necessarily seen it, but there are nerves out there, I think, today because everybody out there recognises this is a huge game. I think Arsenal have got through the toughest part of the game you know Man City with 60,000 fans or getting on towards 60,000 fans behind coming out hard trying to set the tone for the game and Arsenal got through the first 26 minutes without any damage in fact the damage has been done to City with Ake going off there mm. so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Arsenal still winning this game um, Koki hello to Koki he says he's got Hirona to win well good luck with that one at the moment that's looking pretty good uh, James he says please what do we need for the free bets well if you're if you're just joining us if you missed it at the start um, we've done like a little mini bet builder this is what we need to happen for this uh, in this game for the uh, 10 times 10 USDT to become available we need over 1.5 goals in the match so two goals or more we need over 9.5 corners so far we've had three and we need over 4.5 cards, so five cards or more. If all three of those things happen, if that bet builder lands, then the free bet lands. 
good luck out there, everybody. The ref has been very lenient so far, particularly with Arsenal's fouls. He hasn't penalised any of them with, uh, with cards as yet. I don't think we're too far away, though, from the first card coming in this game. It might be worth looking if you've got the... Um, the uh, what's it called now? Uh, spot, not the spot bets, the... Um, rapid bets. Rapid bets, that's yes. it. If there's any card bets for well, the I rapid see. bets. Oh, there's, no, there's none available at the minute. I'll, 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 keep, it, I'll keep an eye on it. I think we're, we're getting close to the first card. The referee's had a few howls of derision from the, the, the crowd at not giving cards howl. to Arsenal fans, yeah. I that that it, kind of howl? Yeah. yeah. He, he, he could easily have given three yellow cards to Arsenal defenders so far. Uh, Kivio twice and Gabriel Magalhaes once. What do you reckon out there, Chris? Th- no, uh, Gabriel Jesus once um, as well. Do you think our rapid bet lands there now? Our, 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 our free bet condition. Over 1.5 goals, over 9.5 corners, over 4.5 cards. We need that to happen. For the uh, the free bet to come available, are you confident out there, creatures? Ooh, Let me know. Is this know. a chance? Is this a chance for Arsenal? Man City got caught in defence there, but Arsenal couldn't get the ball out quickly enough. The answer is no, sir. Si. No. It's not. It's not a chance. And will there be a corner kick between thirty and thirty-seven? Yes, of course there will. Of course there will. Yeah, that's my next rapid bet. No, none about cards yet. None about cards. No. So uh, nil nil, sir. Si. I'm going to ask you for your best bet right now. We're about what? Tw- Coming up to the half okay. an hour mark, yeah. I want your best bet. I want your very mm-hmm. best bet right now for the creatures. Tell me, tell me, tell me, Simon Barlow, where are you going to go? I'm, I'm back in Arsenal, obviously. I've been with them from the start in a draw-no-bet capacity, but I think there's ways out, out there to maybe try and get some better odds. Um, you could maybe take them to... Well, Arsenal win or draw... And over two and a half goals is 6.6. So that would cover um, Arsenal winning 2-1, but also a two-all draw, 6.7. So you're getting the draw and Arsenal as long as there's over two and a half goals. So it's right at the bottom of my console at the moment. It's Arsenal win or draw and over two and a half goals at big odds, 6.5. Marvellous. That's uh, size best bet right now then. I need a corner kick between 30 and 37, uh, sign. They're just about to come into that, that period. I've only just noticed this one as well. Has something happened here, James? Has something happened? Have we got the first goal? No, no I don't okay. think so. Okay, false alarm for me. It's uh, Man City on the attack if it was going to come, but uh, Arsenal mm. snuff out that attack and uh, try and build from the uh, the back as they're out on the right-hand side. Nice ball down the right and Arsenal and the team coming forward. Yeah, they're, they're getting out now. You know, Arsenal at, at times in that first 20, 25 minutes, they weren't able to get out of defence, but now they are. And look, they're going to result in a shot here, I think. Ooh. Just drag wide. But that's a very good attack. Goal kick as Gabriel Jesus grabs hold of his hair and uh, bemoans the fact he couldn't quite get that one on target. Nil-nil then between Manchester City and Arsenal. 31st minute there. It's reached half-time in France. Strasbourg nil. Ren nil. Stuttgart nil. Heidenheim nil in Germany. We had an early goal there for Stuttgart, but it was uh, var off and uh, oh, Hirona, they've been pegged back by Betis. It's two apiece there oh, with great. about six minutes to go. So, who was it who was saying? Um, Koki has got Hirona. Good luck, Koki. Hopefully, we get a, bet, um, a Hirona goal there for you to get your bet across the line. So, uh, fingers crossed for Cokester. Having a real struggle, aren't they, uh, Hirona, at the moment? Um, probably looking be- looking over the shoulders a little bit at the table and thinking, are we going to stay in the, the Champions got, League? They've got positions? a little bit of a gap, haven't they? At the moment, it's going to be seven points, but Athletic Bilbao have a game in hand. They win that. It goes down to four points. I suppose with the top four in Spain going to the Champions League, that is Hirona's goal, isn't it? Stay in the top four, so they got an extra point back to Atletico Madrid. If I take you off screen for a second, Simon, could you mm. put our tellies back on at the top, oh, yeah. on the top deck, please? Um, as uh, we uh, approach, well, coming up towards half time, got about what f- uh, fourteen minutes to go, about two thirds of the way through this first half, and yet to really see. Uh, I think a clear-cut chance in this match. We've um, got... Uh, I don't think it's been cagey by any means. Both sides have been going forward. But we've got two good defences uh, um, in on, in play as well. We kind of talk a lot about the uh, attacking players of both of these two teams. But the defenders are pretty um, blooming good as well. If uh, Both sides' defenders um, are decent. Salaba and Gabriel in the uh, centre of the Arsenal defence have had a, a stonking season. Nathan Ake off, off of course, but uh, you've got Ruben Diaz, you've got Rodri in their defensive uh, areas of the midfield, so both sides hard to break down as well as they score goals against the against the other sides as well. Simon's done a wonderful job there. He's got our, all of our tellies back on and he's come back to join me. But, uh, you, know, you know when there's like so many remote controls and you're thinking, well, what, what does this one do? What does this one do? Anyway, I found the right one in the end. 
And uh, yeah, so nil nil side as we approach half time. I, I, I fancied goals in this one. I mean, one goal could lead to loads, but we haven't had the first one yet. If we get one goal, then the other team has to then really kind of change their yeah. their emphasis, and it could lead to loads more. But we need the first goal first, don't we? we Ale- do. Alexis just put ten in there. Why has he just put ten in? What's ten for? Um, not sure. What's your ten for, Alexis? Let me know. Ten what? Which manager's looking the more worried at the moment, Guardiola or Arteta? I'm just seeing Guardiola. He looks a, okay. There's not a hair unruffled on either no, head. That's true, yeah. yeah. Very true. One's got Lego hair, the other one's got no hair. <laughs> so uh, both of them looking as pristine as they were at the start of this match. Who started calling um, Arteta Lego head? Because I've heard it a few times now. I'm thinking mm. it's quite common now. In I mean, judging that, that picture that I shared, I mean, look at him. That is Arteta. Mm. I've just shared it again on the Telegram chat. That's Arteta looking stressed in the 90th minute as everything's gone against him. That is his hair. <laughs> He's, he has got a Lego hair. Um, I need a corner, Si. We haven't, I've got halfway through my little uh, catchment uh, region. and uh, oh, Arsenal on the break on the right-hand side. Ball's come, come loose. Can Arsenal do something with this attack? Played back and out to the left-hand side. Gabriel Jesus going to get a shot away this time. He's fancying his chances from range he against is. his former club. But he's got about five blue shirts around him. In the end, he can't get his shot away. And um, Arsenal, uh, Arsenal get the ball back. Referee blows up, though, for a free kick. Kovacic uh, wins the, uh, the yeah. challenge. Decent recovery defence there for Man City. But Arsenal's press did catch them out there. It was um, a little bit of a loose ball back. And it was... Yeah... Gabriel Jesus's right foot went back about five times there mm. to shoot and he realised he hadn't got enough space because there are six shirts pretty much sandwiched he's, between him and the goal. He's looking tricky today, isn't he, Jesus? I wouldn't be surprised if he scored today, you know. Uh, well, it is against his former club. There, there must be um, a little bit of a an added incentive. Course, I mean, yeah. you're right, you'd hope that everybody's going to always give 100%, but against your former club, you just want to prove something, don't you? I would imagine all week. Arteta's been winding him up, saying, "Come on, this is the team that sold you. They they gave up on you. You know, uh, I don't. I'm not giving up on you. I believe in you. You know, even though he's not picked him for the last few games, I've been saving. He's been, I've been saving you for this game, sort of thing. Absolute rubbish. But players swallow it sometimes when they need to. Well, all players like their egos massaging. Yeah, I, I think Gabriel Jesus is clearly. You see, he's involved in the game. He's. I, I think he's having a decent match here, and you can see that it's it's. An important game for him. He's hungry, the lad. He's Mm. hungry. Um, Alexis answered my, what was the 10 for? He's uh, how many free bets up for grabs? Yeah, 10 times 10. Thank you, Alexi, for being our uh, our admin on the the chat today. Um, So we are not too far away from halftime. So far, um, nothing much has changed when it comes to the, at the moment, Liverpool are the team benefiting from today's fixtures. Liverpool winning earlier have got themselves on to 67 points. If this match is drawn, um, Arsenal will be on 65 Man City will be on 64. And what started as one point covering all three will be three points covering all three. But obviously uh, a goal either way and that all changes. Yeah, I think Liverpool would definitely take a draw in this game. Uh, This is the last, I think, head-to-head meeting between these three teams this season, isn't it? That Liverpool have played these two teams twice now. I mean, there's a few tough games to come with Spurs playing, I think, two of the top three and that kind of stuff. But... And Spurs on their day can be a match for anybody, can't they? Yeah. So it's uh, Man United <clears throat> are playing two of the uh, the top three as well. well that's, that's six points up for grabs, then, isn't it? Yeah, probably <laughs> the, way, the way they played yesterday, you'd say easy three points for Liverpool and uh, Arsenal in those games. I'll take Kobe Mainu at Leeds though, when Leeds come up. Yeah, I'd take Archie Gray at Old Trafford. He's great, isn't he? He's brilliant, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, if you're not seeing Archie Gray, he's uh, a very, very good young player. He's only, was he seven? No, he just turned 18, Yeah, just he? turned 18, yeah. He, he can now share the main dressing room. Because mm. there's a rule in um, certainly English football anyway, kind of um, the management of youngsters coming through and uh, all the protections and stuff that if you're under 18, um, you can't share the same dressing room as the men. Uh, well, changing room is the men. So uh, Archie Gray's been changing in a separate room and now he can join the big boys. So uh, that one day makes all the difference. One day he's changing next door and then mm. a couple of days later he's changing actually with the rest of the squad. But he's he's a, a stunning talent. Uh, of um, If he was a racehorse, you'd say he comes from good pedigree, he comes from good stock because yeah. basically his uncles, his father, his great uncle, every, everybody in the yeah. fa- in the Gray family plays football and his younger brother as well. Um, he's coming through the Leeds ranks and he's, he's tipped to be just as good. That's right, yeah. Uh, Grandad's a Champions League winner. Um, I think, uh, yeah, there's there's obviously a lot of uh, pedigree in, in 
Archie Gray, but you can just see he's a he's got a lot of talent. You know, it's not like um, he's not got to where he has got just because of the name. He's right. got to where he has got because he's been a very the, good player. The name only gets you so far. Yeah. Um, it might open a few doors early on. It might get you noticed by a yeah. few coaches early on. But ultimately, you need to be able to play football. You know, you, you can have the best name in the world. You could be called Fred Maradona. But if you can't kick a football, you're not going to get a regular first team play, are you? Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it so, only takes you so far. And he's, he's really, he's been spoken about um, in the Leeds kind of um, area for a long time. Last three or four years, I've been hearing Archie Gray's, Gray's name mentioned. But this is his breakthrough season. He's been stunning. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, there's no real clamour for him or his family to see him leave Leeds either. You know, I mean, you think Leeds will be already receiving some sort of overtures from big clubs to try and, you know, assess if they can get Archie Gray, but there's no need. You know, Leeds are going to be going to the Premier League, if not next season, very soon. And, um, you know, Archie well, Gray can, can mature there. And um, It shows you um, how good he is that when Leeds played Chelsea in the FA Cup, he was the man of the match in a defeat. Yeah. You know, he, he bossed that midfield against the likes of Casado and stuff, and he was the star player in the midfield. Yeah, yeah. and he's, he was 17 at the time. It was, it was great to see. He saw what happened uh, on Friday as well when, uh, basically, Daniel Fark picked the wrong team to start the game against uh, Watford, and then when he made his changes, the key change was switching Archie Gray from full-back to midfield. Because well, they, were, they were missing Guayev, who was injured at the moment, mm-hmm. and Archie Gray was... Um, Played, started at fullback, and then they realised they needed something a little bit better in the midfield, and Archie Gray stepped up, didn't yeah. he? Well, he also needed... Um, and Purdue back alongside mm-hmm. Rodon because they are just clean yeah. sheet material. Big game for Leeds tomorrow. I mean, it's another full set of uh, matches. We won't be with you tomorrow on Clubhouse TV, but obviously the football continues and uh, the Championship and various other leagues in England are, are playing. Leicester um, playing Norwich um, in the Championship 12.30. That's the early kickoff tomorrow. And then you've got uh, more big matches in the uh, in the Championship as Ipswich Town take on Southampton. So that's a, a big game for both of those two teams because... A big game for Leeds and, uh, and for for Leicester as well, because you know, in the same way that Man City and Arsenal today are potentially taking points out of each other, Ipswich and Southampton will be doing exactly the same. And then Leeds take on Hull, eight o'clock kickoff tomorrow evening. So uh, matches, the big matches, we're getting towards that pointy end of the season, aren't we? Where there aren't anything, that, that there are very few. Um, matches that don't mean something. There's uh, a lot to play for when we get towards this stage of the season. And at the top end of the Championship, there is not a huge amount between any of them. So, uh, at the moment, nobody can separate Man City and Arsenal, though, Simon. We're coming ah. into the last five minutes of the first half. I'd, I'd say if you're an Arsenal fan, you're happy with this. You know, they've set the stall out. They, they were under pressure, but they dealt with that pressure in the early stages. And now they've, they've managed to get out on a couple of occasions and, and test Ortega or certainly, you know, get into shooting positions, which would worry Manchester City. Haaland's not really involved. De Bruyne, only from set pieces, hardly influencing the game. You know, um, Rico Lewis is on now for for Ake. Um, you know, Rico Lewis is a good player, and he could he, he could certainly play his part. But at the moment, you'd say Arsenal will be well happy where they start. Well happy. Yeah. Um, Forty two to forty five. So my final rapid bet of the first half. The first time I've seen a three minute span for this. It's usually two minutes. How many times will the ball go out of bounds between forty two and forty five? I've won three or more. A quite a nice oh, price. No. no, no less. I will. No, it will. Less. No, just watch the screen, Ty. You'll see it happen. So from 43 to how many? To 42 to 45. 42 to 45. The ball will not go out of play three times. You watch. Mm. You watch. You'll see it happen. See, it's going out of play there. It's not 42 it's, it's, yet. It's too early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are uh, approaching half-time. Clip we've had speeches. hardly any corners in this game, have we? Uh, we've had a c- three, I think, haven't we? Is yeah. it three? Not a corners game. Yeah. And we need um, over nine and a half for uh, for the, um, the three. I mean, we need about a second half in terms of corners, put it that way. And the referee had those early chances to give yellow cards, didn't. And mm. now we're still on zero yellow cards. Um, in terms of the uh, the free bet, where are we placed? Over 1.5 goals, we've got none. Over 9.5 corners, we've got three. <coughs> Over 4.5 cards, how many cards we had? None. So the, 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 the little bet builder we've done for the free bet isn't working too well, is it, at the moment? Um, stay tuned, because I will be nice to you today, because we are nice people. When you, when you get the likes of Gav and stuff in these seats, you kind of tend to get just... Um, yeah, just nasty people, aren't they? Uh, but myself and Simon this Sunday, it's Easter Sunday, we will spread you good cheer. And if it's looking the pr- pretty hopeless, there's a corner, I've got another corner. If it's looking pretty hopeless. We might bring a couple of those down a notch. So don't go anywhere. Why would you anyway? It's Man City against Arsenal. There's a lot to look forward to. Yeah. As we get towards the second half, Declan Rice about to take the corner for the Gunners. 
as uh, it swings that in right footy. Good corner into the six-yard box, headed away by Erling Haaland, who's back there, the deepest of the Man City players, defending his socks off. So, uh, and uh, right, are we into my uh, we're into my catchment area? That corner was taken, but it was taken. I think it went out of play just before the forty-two. So I need it to go out of play three times, Si. Oh, it sounds like there's been quite a shocking incident in the um, women's game, Arsenal versus Chelsea, where one of the Arsenal players has uh, has had a bad injury. Uh, okay, she's been stretched off, but it sounds like. Um, Bit of a weird atmosphere now at Molyneux after that bad injury for the Arsenal player in the women's game. Mm. It's not nice, is it, when you see something obviously horrible happen to somebody. Mm. So, yeah, hopefully she um, makes a full recovery very quickly. Um, but uh, Frida Marnham, uh, I think she's a fullback. Yeah, that's not nice. I don't want to see that happen to anybody, so uh, good luck to her. There's, uh, Man City trying to just get something before we get to half-time. We're about halfway through the... 44th minute of this match and at the moment Man City passing it sideways in midfield as you said needs a goal doesn't it needs a goal to catch fire I think if one team scores the team would redouble their efforts to come forward Arsenal are quite happy to sit back and soak it up try and play a little bit on the counter attack at the moment and, and why not it's, it's kind of working okay for them Man City aren't able to break them down although there might be a free kick yeah. coming here it's got a little bit scrabbly hasn't it a little bit uh, neither side I mean it's stating the obvious isn't it but neither side want to lose this both sides want to win it, but neither side wants to lose it. And it's got a little bit of a kind of um, a World Cup quarter final feel yeah. or something to it, where you don't want to kind of lay out all your cards too early. You've still got the second half to come kind of thing. You can still score in the second half and win this one, but you don't want to be 3 0 down by half time. So you want to be kind of sensible, not, not cavalier. I think Arsenal have got cards up the sleeve. I'm not sure what cards. Um, Guardiola's got to play yet, really. I mean, Grealish, is he going to. Bring him on, maybe, to try and Arte- change things up. Arteta keeps his hard cards underneath his Lego hair. Mm. He just pulls it up, takes his cards out and puts it back down. Yeah. yeah. So he's still got Martinelli that he could bring on. Um, you know, he could change the midfield a little bit. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think Arsenal are still looking in a very good position here not to lose the game. You were right, by the way. The ball's not going out of play once. No. No. It's just it's not a game where the ball goes out of play. We don't have three corners. You're a very wise man, Simon Pollo, aren't you? You're a very wise man. Yeah, they're just uh, they're just not taking that sort that approach where the, both teams are careful in possession. So there's no balls going out of play off mistakes. You know, you need yeah. Their owner have scored. Oh, they have scored to make it three-two. Koki, well done, wow. Cokes. Well done, three-two. Their owner looking as if they've uh, taken all the points. They, they have. They have. It's just finished in Spain. So her owner Dramatic take stuff. all three points. Lissy says gold stuck guard corner number four, and her owner always score in the ninetieth minute. He says with a laughy face. <laughs> so her owner have taken all three points. City important for them that because as you were saying the kind of gap between them and the fourth place team was uh, just reducing a tad, yeah. but that takes them to sixty-two now. And uh, they are now six points clear of Athletic Bilbao in fourth. So, uh, of course, there's always a question. Are they going to be allowed into the Champions League next season? Because they are aligned with Manchester City, aren't they? The question is, you know, is that is there enough evidence to say that they're almost owned by the same people to well, stop them from being in the same competition? Could, could you not say, why are you picking on us? Why don't you boot Man City out of this competition? We want to be the team. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Well, who decides which one is the one that goes? Or is it the owner decides? I think so far they've not really had to. UEFA haven't really had to deal with it. I might be wrong mm. there though, because there's obviously the Red Bull clubs, mm. uh, but the Red Bull clubs are allowed now. So Salzburg and Leipzig both to play in the same champ as they did this season. Both both were in the Champions League this season. So even though they're both called Red Bull something or other, essentially, and you know we all know they're owned by the same people, the UEFA still just sort of go, okay, it's all right. What's the <sighs> Try and work it out in my head. What what's the downside of um, say two teams in the same competition being owned by the same person? Because you obviously fix the results. I suppose that is it. Yeah, the the, the chance for. But then you, aren't you judging people by the lowest common denominator rather than the highest? Because well, both sides will want to win, wouldn't they? But you could make a lot of money out of fixing a result, I guess, as well. Yeah. Anyway, it's just it's, not something, not a good look, is it? No. Half time between Manchester City and Arsenal, yet to get a goal. Hasn't been vintage, has it? But second half, maybe, as I said, kind of, you don't want to lose it by half time, but you can win it in the second half. And maybe that's what uh, Pep Guardiola 
and uh, uh, Mikel Arteta will be talking about at half time. How do you see the second half, say? Si? More of the same until that goal goes in, um, if the goal goes in. But you've got to have faith in the quality that the two teams have, have got. Faith, the faith, the faith. You have. You've got to have faith. Harlan's the playing. The faith. Saka's playing. Oh, baby. You know, the, the, there's two absolute. Uh, two of the best game breakers in, in Premier League football are out there. And Kevin De Bruyne is playing as well. You know, these are guys that you'll need half a chance and they'll score and the game breaks open and then it's a very different thing to what. But until that first goal goes in, it'll be a similar affair where Arsenal are defending a little bit deeper than usual, but solid in a block in the middle and Man City are just coming up against a brick wall and not able to break them down. Let's hear from Carno. We'll see you for the second half soon. So it is a very special behind the bets with sportsbet.io uh, from the home of Arsenal Football Club, Emirates Stadium. Uh, my name's Gavin from Clubhouse TV and this is Carnu. And uh, we've got to behind the cause. This is where we're going to give a 500 euro donation uh, to uh, the charity of your choice, which of course is the Carnu Heart Foundation. Uh, which helps children in Nigeria with cardiac diseases uh, and obtain they can obtain and receive life-saving surgery within and outside Nigeria. Launched in 2000, uh, and the foundation has helped over 500 children, spending over a reported four million dollars. So these children can receive open heart surgery in hospitals around the world. Of all your achievements on the pitch, this they are pale into insignificance really with what you've done off the pitch with this tell me about that because this is just terrific yeah I always say to people that um, yeah, winning trophies of course you worked hard for that and you win trophies to show what you have done what you have worked hard for um, but all this um, this is to do with life and um, it's uh, for me the most important uh, if a kid um, let's say seven years even two years or eight years or five years four years uh, having a heart problem. Um, I went through it. I know how difficult it is and how painful it is. Uh, but if you have those kids um, of such age um, going to go for an open heart operation, which means you have to open the heart to do the operation, def- definitely it's going to be difficult for them. Uh, but um, we pray for them. We wish uh, they're going to make it. Some of them, they don't make it, but... Most of the ones that we have done, yeah, were successful. Uh, not only that, um, it's also difficult um, even to get the funds uh, for checkups. And that is where uh, the foundation comes in because we all took care of them from the medical side, uh, for the, from the checkups um, to where they are traveling to and the operation and uh, bring them, bringing them back as well. Um, it's, it's very expensive. Uh, we started in uh, Great Ormond Hospital in uh, London. Uh, it was in pants. It was very high. We did first three operations when we started. Uh, we have to move to Israel. Um, that was in dollars. And, um, um, somebody have to tip us and uh, told us India was much uh, much better, and much cheaper, and they are good as well. So we went to India and we started in India, and uh, up to today we are still doing our operations in India. But the most uh, important thing here is that um, when you do have that uh, problem with the heart, um, the kid is not going to be the same anymore. You look at the eyes; uh, most of them are red. Um, uh, Sometimes they don't smile at all. It's not that they don't want to smile, but they have issues with the heart. They don't smile. Uh, they don't play with other kids. They don't play along. They keep on crying. Um, I remember the first three that we operated here. When I went to them and I saw them, two of them came, for the, came to the foundation for help. One uh, came to me uh, when we were playing the African Nations Cup in 2000 with the mom. And uh, the mom came, they were on the lift. I was on the lift with them. They said, oh, they're looking for me. I said, oh, that's good. Why? They said, we know that you are starting the foundation. I want my daughter to be the first that you're going to help. I said, ah. So what's wrong? He says, the heart. And the minute he says the heart, they get fainted. We have to rush to get to the hospital. Thank God I uh, didn't die. And I promised the mom that she's going to be one of the first kids you're going to help. 
And uh, we took her to London. Uh, after the operation of the tray, and I went to visit them, you can see the whole hospital knew they were there. They were running around, they were happy, the eyeballs changed back to blue, they were, you can't control them, they are eating, they were okay again. So I was very, very happy. And I think only that can tell you uh, the kind of um, relief and happiness that we follow when you see somebody who are about to die and then you saved him. You literally uh, see them coming back. Yeah, to life to again. Life. And Foundation have done, uh, from 2000 to now, we have done um, 680 wow. uh, open heart operations. So uh, we are still going because we have a lot on the waiting list. We have almost like 100 on the waiting list uh, because everyone now knew about, knew about the Foundation and if you have any little problem with the heart, the phone calls are keep, keep yeah. ringing. Everybody wants you to help. And uh, um, Nigeria is a very big country. You can help everyone. Absolute respect for you. Thank Honestly, you. It's, it's just an, an amazing achievement. So what we're going to do, I'm going to ask you, it's a little bit of fun. I know it's a serious subject, but we're going to have a little bit of fun as well. Um, because I'm going to ask you 10 questions. It's a bit of a car new quiz. <laughs> and for every question you get right, right, we're going to add 50 euros to the 500 that's already going. That's already sorted, uh, sorted, okay? So there's a chance to double your money, okay? <laughs> Some of these questions will just be about football. A lot of these questions are literally just about you. Are you ready to play? Okay. You ready? <laughs> yep. You ready? Yep. So you're looking, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm not looking. <laughs> <laughs> looking, isn't he? Hey? Right, you ready? Uh, question number one. What was your shirt number at Arsenal? My shirt number, Arsenal, yeah. 25. It's the right answer. That's, that's an extra 50 euros. Okay. Uh, question number two. Who did you score your first Arsenal goal against? <laughs> <laughs> I can give you some clues if you want. Uh, no, difficult. no, I can't get Do you want that. some clues? Okay. Begins with the letter D, and it was in the FA Cup. Starts with D... And ends in Arby County. Just just say Derby County. I know the club, but yeah. you mean the goalkeeper? That, no, they're just a team. Oh, it, it's Derby County. Yeah. No, do no, 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 but if I thought it's the goalkeeper, because but if we have to replay the game. Yeah. Well, we'll allow that one anyway. We'll allow that as a 50. Just say Derby County for official records. Derby County. There's the right <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, question number three. Spell Carnu backwards. Spell your name backwards, Carnu. U N A K. That's uh, 150 euros now. That's three questions correct. Some of them are tougher than that, by the way. Uh, okay, this one might be a tough one. Who was, question number four, who was the first ever Nigerian footballer to play in the Premier League? John Fashion. It wasn't. It was a guy called Effen Ikoka. Oh! <laughs> Effen played before John? Yeah. No, John Fashion was uh, English. No, he's Nigerian. He's English, isn't he, John Fashion? Oh, we need an official adjudicator. He's living in Nigeria now. Yeah, but I believe John Fashion who played for him represented England. So the answer was F and a Coco. Uh, yeah. In the so that's question number four. This is question number five. So at the moment mm. you've got 150 euros on top of the 500. Okay. So in the season you joined Arsenal, who was sent off the most in that season in the Premier League? Emmanuel Petit or Martin Keown? Emmanuel Petit. You sure? <laughs> Martin Ma Keon. No, it is, don't change your answer. Okay, man, right <laughs> <laughs> no. It was man, man Petit. Petit. You guys don't know. <laughs> he keep kicking people. Okay. Uh, right here we go. Another question about Arsenal. So you're up to 200 euros now. So it's 700 euros that, that was. So this is question number six. Okay, uh, who was Arsenal's top goal scorer in the season you joined Arsenal Football Club? Who was the leading 
top scorer? Aneka. Is the right answer with 19 goals in 45 appearances. So I make that as up your 250 at the moment. Yeah. So you're doing very well. Uh, this is question number seven. You made your debut for Nigeria against which country? Sweden. Okay. Uh, no hesitation whatsoever. You're up to 300 euros. I think you've got every single one right, apart from <laughs> FNA Koku. <laughs> uh, okay. You played for West Bromwich Albion in the Premier League. Five other football teams, starting with the letter W, have played in the Premier League. Can you name four of them? Wolves. Is one. There's another one in the Premier League right now that starts with W. West Ham. In West Ham, yep. Two more. In fact, you scored against one of these. They kind of don't exist anymore. But you <laughs> did score against these in the Premier League. I think you scored at home at Highbury Watford. against them. Oh, no, uh, you did score at Watford. Yeah. But this team doesn't really exist anymore. Not in this current, the, in the guys that they were. You mm -hmm. scored against them at Highbury and you scored against them at their place as well. Do you want a clue? Starts with W. <laughs> Wembledon. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Wimbledon is the right answer. The other one for the, re uh, for the record was Wigan Athletic. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so what was that? Question eight up to 350 euros. Uh, right, question number nine. Uh, name two Nigerian players in the Premier League right now. Iwobi. Yep. Alex Iwobi plays for Everton. And another one. Kalechi Hanacho. Uh, is the right answer for Leicester. He could have had Tayu Awaniwi, who plays for Forest. Forest Emmanuel yeah. Dennis, who also plays for Forest. Frank Onyeka for Brentford. And Didi. Joe Aribo for Southampton. And Didi. And in Wilford and Didi. Uh, but you've got nine uh, questions so far. Eight right, 450 okay. uh, euros. Uh, so it's 400 euros, sorry. Uh, question number 10. Who did you score your last goal uh, against for Arsenal? They're still in the Premier League. <laughs> last goal, last goal for Arsenal. Starts with E. Everton. Yeah, there isn't many more, is there? Uh, well done. You got nine out of ten right. You got okay. into an extra hundred and four hundred and fifty euros. That's nine hundred and fifty euros uh, going to the Car New Heart Foundation. So well done. That's well a pass. Done. pass. Hey. That's a pass mark. Hey? Nine out of ten. Well done. <laughs> Nine out of ten. That's a pass mark. <laughs>
And it's not like he hasn't had chances to. You know, there have been a few fouls there. Gabriel Jesus took a ride on Bernardo Silva's back. Kivior chopped Silva down. There was one on the far side when Gabriel uh, Magalhaes went straight through the back of, I think, De Bruyne. Anyway, they were three clear yellow card opportunities and he turned them down. But, like I say, he's a, he's a card referee. And I think there will come in the second half. I'm looking at his record. You know, like I say, five, on average, five yellow cards per Premier League game. You can get over three and a half. Uh, almost two now, 1.99. So that's going to be my main bet. I'm just looking here for some evidence about when he's given cards. Okay, recently he refereed Bournemouth versus Sheffield United and there were eight yellow cards in that game. Eight yellow cards in the game, of which there were five in the second half. So this is a guy who gives out yellow cards, but we may have to wait to the second half for them. So 1.99 over three and a half bookings in the match. Um, there are possible changes to be made in the second half on the bench for Arsenal. You've got the likes of Martinelli and Ketia. You've got Smith Rowe, Trossard, uh, able to come on Zinchenko as well. And uh, for Man City, who don't actually name as, as many substitutes today as uh, as Arsenal. And they've got Alvarez available for them. Doku could come on, Grealish as well. Um, John Stones is there as well. Probably won't see him because he's got a little bit of a, an injury. But uh, uh, there are options for both managers as they uh, start the second half. We're in the way as uh, we kick off Man City nil, Arsenal nil. Other matches around uh, Europe as well. Strasbourg just taking the lead against uh, Rennes. Um, 18 minutes ago, there was Strasbourg leading by a goal to nil. Half-time in Germany, Stuttgart 1, Heidenheim nil. We're just on the way as well in La Liga. Alaves against Real Sociedad is the match there. Fourth minute, nil nil as things stand. And plenty of other matches matches around the rest of the world so if there's anything else you'd like us to talk about get in touch with us on the uh, clubhouse tv telegram chat and we will try and point you in the right direction but obviously man city against arsenal taking the majority of our attention i've done a poll on the uh, telegram chat as well who wins this match man city the draw or arsenal get your votes in there let's see what you think in terms of the way this match goes at the moment um I can't see the results of that because uh, well, we've got, I've voted so I can now. Um, 37% of you think Man City, 37% think the draw, 25% are going for Arsenal. Um, Sissy says, I think the draw or Arsenal Good in this man, match. Yeah. And uh, Simon just shared his, uh, his best bet there. Second half bet, over 3.5 bookings. This referee averages 5.15 per game. Strasbourg about to double their advantage in wow. France. 2-0. I, d- I don't know what to say about Strasbourg because Ren were the favourites there today. Um, I did worry that Strasbourg have just got a little bit in them and I didn't think they could win. I thought they could draw. But that's a big big result for Strasbourg there to, to get... Uh, well, they're going to win now 2-0 up surely in that game. Um, when Kovacic was at Chelsea, I yep. can't remember him scoring that many goals. But for Man no. City, he seems to be... Um, he scored the other day for them. He seems to um, quite fancy his chances of shooting from the, kind of the edge of the penalty area just outside. And he's got a decent shot on him, hasn't he? Because uh, I've always had him down as being a fairly dour defensive midfielder. But there's a little bit more to him. And uh, Pep's maybe asking a bit more from him. Uh, but he's just had a shot there that just went wide of the post. You're absolutely right. And he, he's, he's playing for a team, obviously, that, that create more chances and create more space. And maybe that is um, something that's reflected in his ability to score goals now. I'm just looking at what his record is. So... He's not scored in the Premier League, though, for Man City this season, apparently. He scored in the... Was it a cup game the other day that he was, he scored in? He scored in the Club World Cup and he scored in the FA Cup, mm. yeah. But he's played uh, 20 it's Premier League games, not scored for Man City it's yet. a cracking goal. He scored in the FA Cup the other day. Um, just showed a, a sideways on angle of Gabriel um, marking um, Haaland, two big guys, and Gabriel is all over him like mm. a rash. As soon as he gets the ball, Gabriel's on his, on his heels... Um, pulling his shirt a little bit and getting and you know, giving Haaland no space whatsoever to do anything. So he's doing a, a job on um, Haaland today. And at the moment, uh, Haaland's not really been part of this match, has he? He's not really had a chance. He's not really done a lot. No, uh, again, kind of a game to forget for him so far. But you, you expect that, you know, when that chance comes, he will bury it. So uh, they've just got to create that chance. But they haven't really, from open play, created anything to worry David Ryder no. in the Arsenal defence, which is a very, you know... A big tick for uh, for Arsenal going into this game. You know, if you can limit City from open play, it's half the job, isn't it? Yeah. So um, at the moment, nil nil, and uh, all to play for. Liverpool watching on, hoping it stays exactly like this. Probably, they yeah. They will be top of the table come the end of the uh, at the end of the day if uh, after their win against Brighton earlier. Um, 
Shadow of Shivgami says, now I think it ends up in a draw. A reminder of what we need for the free bet, by the way, and it's not looking good, is it? Over 1.5 goals. Obviously, that could still land. We could get a null, null. And Esther Leader, Esther Leader. Over 9.5 corners, though, um, is looking a bit problematic. At the moment, we've got four. So actually, yeah, we only need six more, don't we, from where we are. And we need, as well, over 4.5 cards. And Simon suggesting he fancies cards in the second yeah. half. So we're not, at, we're not completely out of it. No, like I say, he just needs a couple of incidents where the referee... I think the next big foul is a yellow card, mm. and the, the, he's played on there. But there could be one coming there for um, for a, who for a, for an for a Man City player. No, if um if we don't get too much action in the next few minutes, I will do a poll, and I will ask you of the three aspects of that free bet um, in terms of goals, corners, and cards over one point five goals, over nine point five corners, over four point five cards. I will do you a, I'll do a poll where I'm going to listen to you. And you tell me which of those three you'd like me to reduce. That'll be the thing. We'll reduce one of them, but it'll be down to you to decide. We'll go with the majority, and I'll do that in about five minutes' time if we haven't got anything added to any of those stats in the uh, in the free bet. Because I'd like you to win this afternoon, if at all possible. I'm not going to give it to you. You're going to have to earn it, or they are going to have to earn it for you. But uh, I will be a little bit lenient. We'll, we'll bring one of those down, and we'll ask you to decide which one of those yeah. comes down. I like that, yeah. I mean... Um... Odegaard almost threaded a, a nice through ball there as well. So he's getting a bit more time on the ball to, to pick his passes. These are all good signs for Arsenal. Um, I, I say, of the two managers, I would prefer to be in Arteta's shoes than, than uh, Guardiola's right now. There's more pressure on City. They're playing catch-up. Obviously, they're a point behind Arsenal anyway coming into this game. It's a home game for them. A draw does not suit Manchester City cause at all. They're losing players to injury. Arsenal, they're away. There are, this is the hardest game left on their calendar. If they get a draw from this, that's not a problem. They'll, they'll, they'll try and catch up in the other games. Um, they're not losing players to injury. They're looking fresh and fit, and they look like the tactics are starting to cause more pressure on Man City. So definitely, it, it's it's a, a game of sort of um, brinkmanship, if you like, between the two managers, and it's who blinks first. But I don't, I don't think Arteta needs to blink at all. His team are just doing exactly what he's asked for. In fact, I'm going to be, I'm going to be, be even nicer to you. Chance. Oh, that should have been a goal. It should have been a goal. Nearly. Gab- that's the closest we've come. Gabriel Jesus, it was, l- just lunging at the back post. Couldn't get the touch he needed. I'm going to be even nicer to you, Simon. Uh, not you. I'm going to be nicer to them. I'm never going to be nice to you. Um, <laughs> I'm going to actually take away one of those conditions. At the moment, we've got oh, it's f- a card. Is it? Is it even a card? No. You got all excited about nothing there, I think. What's he pointing at? Come on, ref. Nothing. Just giving a free kick, isn't he? I don't get it. Uh, I thought the referee was... It, the, the body language there was he was going to give a card, but he didn't. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I'm going to be even nicer to you. Mm. At the moment, we need over 1.5 goals, over 9.5 corners, over 4.5 cards. I'm going to take one of those completely out, but you decide which one it's going to be. I'm mm. going to put that vote out there now. Tell me which one of these uh, things um, you need to... Did that just... Dis- did I delete that myself? Has that cut, has that poll arrived on your uh, your Telegram? Because my Telegram's playing up a bit today. Can you see a poll there? Let me just uh, come back. Or am I going to have to do it all again? I've got no poll. What happened? That it just disappeared. All I've got is. I'm going to do it again then. Okay. Which Hakan says, well, you need all the help you can give James. So he's definitely up for um, a reduction in one of the three categories. I think most people would probably say cards. Oh, I'm guessing here, but we haven't don't had influence any them. Don't influence them. No. You, 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 da, 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 don't influence them. I mean, a couple of goals, it's a bang-bang, isn't it? You know, corners, it just needs a bit of... Uh, that's offside, handball. Handball against Havertz. I'm going to put it in a bit... I'm going to be a bit more careful this time. Okay. How can he take out all three? Ouch. <laughs> Um, right, which condition do we take out for the free bet? Goals, corners, or cards? Poll is there now. I, I can see it. See it. I yep. can see it. So you vote now. <clears throat> Whichever one gets the most votes, we will take away. And it'll leave us the other two to get. Okay? So if you vote goals, we'll take the goals out. If we vote corners, we'll take the corners out. If we vote cards, we'll take the cards out. The moment it stands with over 1.5 goals, over 9.5 corners, over 4.5 cards. Tell me which one of those you want to get rid of. On the poll. On the poll. Um, by the way, how is that women's League Cup final going? The uh, Arsenal versus Chelsea women. And it's still in extra time. It's five minutes left of extra time. And it's still nil-nil. So they're heading to penalties in the women's 
game between Arsenal and Chelsea. Mm. 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 Ah, um, so we are uh, still goalless between Man City and Arsenal. I'll give you the stats of the game so far. Uh, tell you how the uh, the actual statisticals line up. Um, in terms of XG, it's 0.58 for Man City. It's 0.5 for Arsenal. Not a lot between them. In terms of possession, there is a lot between them. 72% possession for Man City. 28% for the Gunners. In terms of goal attempts, not a lot between them. 5-4 to four, just in favour of Manchester City. Only one shot on target apiece, though. And in terms of corners, it's two all. So other than the possession... There is nothing between these two sides this afternoon. No, and it, it kind of feels that way from watching it. You know, there's Arsenal are, are, are offering as much of a threat with much less possession. I'd say, you know, Arsenal are a possession-based team. You look at their average possession stats for the season, it'd be getting on for 60%. They dominate games at home particularly. Uh, but here they're playing a, a very much a foreign game to them in the sense that they're, they're you know, not having the lion's share of possession. It's probably down to 40 or maybe even 30-something percent. But it's still look like Arsenal. It's still look like they're going to create chances. It's still look like they're going to get in to good positions to score. So, you know, tactically, I think Arteta's got this one spot on. It's like master versus pupil, isn't it? I think the pupil is coming out on top at the moment. Ball played out to the left. Foden, who's been quite quiet today. In fact, there's nobody really in the attacking roles that you could... I mean, Gabriel Jesus was probably the most eye-catching. Uh, but nobody's really stood out in terms of the attacking uh, roles in their sides because the defences have been quite strong so far. Uh, but it's Man City who have well, 72% possession. They are having uh, all of the ball. At the moment, you're voting for corners to disappear. Probably you, okay. you, you were going to say that, weren't you? I was going to say cards, but actually I, I like your choice because this is a game where there's been hardly any corners. And, uh, you know, two teams that don't really play that way to try and get behind defences. Um, they're just trying to... Is that a corner, though? Having said that, have they just won a corner there, Man City? I think they have. Um, right, I'm going to let it, let it run for a, a couple more minutes. Uh, we'll go with the vote then. But at the moment, it's corners that are going to disappear. Just as you get one. Um, so uh, if you want to change that, then vote for goals or cards to try and build up that. Uh, but at the moment, we're getting rid of corners. Real Sociedad have started quickly in the Spanish game against Alaves. 2-0 uh, now, isn't it? No, no, 0-0. Nil, nil. Nil, nil. Oh, it's not? Oh, sorry, stop yeah. that. just gone 2-0. Uh, so, yeah, 0-0. Nil, nil, uh, only played. 13, 14 minutes. But Real Sociedad had a really tough spell over the course of a month where they lost pretty much every game, went out of the Champions League, went out of the Copa del Rey, dropped out of the top four contention in, in Spain. They've come through that and they won back-to-back -back games. I think they go to Alaves and I think they probably win. Uh, Alaves have had a poor record in Basque derbies this season. They've lost five out, sorry, four out of the five. They played drew, drew one and lost four. This is the sixth and final Basque derby for them. Um, and I think they probably lose this one. So I'm going for Real Sociedad to win. Maybe a both team to score game as well. That has landed quite a lot in uh, Alaves games recently. A lot of 1-1s when they, they play at home. So, uh, yeah, Real Sociedad to win and both teams to score for me in that one. Um, Tin Tiger says, no, Arsenal should have scored. Was that before or was, are, we around, are we about to see it, Tin Tiger? I'm not sure if you're ahead of me or behind me because uh, our streams are a little bit uh, behind uh, the live feed. But... Uh, we will see if there's a big Arsenal chance just around the corner. But at the moment, uh, Pep is being pictured, uh, yeah. just talking to his backroom staff, maybe about making some changes, Si. Oscar Bob could be on. Oscar Bob. Yeah, we like Bob. Bring Oscar Bob well, on. He's already got Rico Lewis on. He's got Rico Lou and Bob too. Bob on. Bob on. Bob on. That's what I say. You're not, you're not getting me that one? Rico Lou and Bob too? No? That's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Bit of a movie reference. Yeah. Yeah. Bit of a uh, random old school movie. Yeah. One for the kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As, uh, we have got, uh, um, uh, we're going to take it, corners disappears. You voted for corners to go. So I'm going to take the corners out of the equation. So that leaves us, everybody, that leaves us needing over 1.5 goals and over 4.5 cards. Okay. So that's mm -hmm. what we're stuck with. Corners have gone. It's goals and cards we need. Okay. And we still need five yellow cards from here. Or, you know, yeah. five cards I mean, in some description. A red would, would do as well, obviously. It has to be said, it's not a better builder kind of match this so far, unless you've gone unders on a lot no. of stuff. Uh, most people usually stack up things to happen, don't they? And at the moment, not a lot has. Um, certainly not had uh, any goals in this match, which is usually the first thing people pick over two and a half goals or over one and a half goals or something. And at the moment, no goals at all as uh, Phil Foden picks up the ball. On the right for Man City, can he get a good delivery into the middle? Uh, just one shot on target for each of the sides so far. And neither has really troubled the keeper. In fact, it's not Foden, it's uh, Bernardo Silva. Camera a long way away, but Jorginho brings the ball away. Eve, oh, it's been ricocheted back to, to uh, 
Erling Haaland, Man City pick up the ball on the edge of the box. Chance for a shot, and it's charged down by Gabriel at the back for Arsenal, who immediately puts his hand up because somebody has just been injured at the back there for Arsenal. So we might see the ball getting kicked out, although I think it's Salibert that's uh, got himself back up on his hind legs. So uh, a lot of um, activity, but not a lot, actually, in terms of uh, goal mouth action. It is Salibert, I think, that's um, going to just get a little bit of treatment here. Foden being hauled up by uh, the strong arm of Haaland. Still no cards in the game. You know, he's, uh, again, this is a chance here. Foul on the edge of the box on... Well, that the second one wasn't much of a foul. The first one was the, the one that hurt him probably the more. But right. Again, no card. I'm going to put our remaining balance, Simon, on the next rapid bet. Mm. Um, basically, we get given a kind of mythical balance. I... I burn most of it by messing about on rapid bets and we win some we lose some and our, it's the end of the month so the first of the month tomorrow and uh, we will get a replenishment of our mythical balance tomorrow so I'm going to burn the remainder of our balance on a rapid bet and see if we can build this uh, um, this balance back up again um, right ball go out of bounds more than once between 62 and 64 yes it will this is where we're going to go I'm gonna, well I'm going to stick most of it on that oh I didn't get it on in time oh, I did, did I no I didn't uh, will there be a throw in between? Yes, there will. I'm going to stick it on. Th oh, right, I've done it. I've got rid of, I've got two rapid bets on with our remaining balance. Will the ball go out of bounds more than once between 62 and 64? Will there be a throw in between 62 and 64? So we need a throw in. Yeah. If we get a couple of throw ins well, between 62 and 64, we're laughing. Do you know what might help the, uh, the throwing course is these substitutions made because he's taking off a midfielder and... All right, admittedly a winger, but a winger that likes to come inside, and now he's putting on two out and out wide men. So this is a clear shift in yeah. tactics from Pep Guardiola. He's going yeah, Foden's for, off. He's going to open the game up here with these substitutions. Doku on one side, Grealish on the other. Doku and Grealish have essentially been competing for the same place in the team all season. Now they're both on as wingers to stretch the game yeah. out. They come on as the wing twins, don't they? So and that might lead to more throw-ins, corners. You know, balls out of play yeah. because the the ball's going to be out there more often. So one 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 throw in basically gets us a return. Two throw ins gets both of the rapid bets in. Yeah. So or or a goal kicker of a corner kick. So uh, our remaining betting balance. Gamma responsibly. Don't be like your uncle James. But uh, mm -hmm. we are uh, into the uh, getting. Well, nearly into it. What are we in? Um, about thirty seconds away from getting into the zone. And we might have a chance of. Well, the ball's going out of play. It's a goal kick. Yeah, it's too early, too early. Okay, but still, that's promising, isn't it? Yeah. It's promising. I mean, and it's your fella, Doc, who's the man that's uh, had his um his uh, end the end of his bits uh, have been. <laughs> Pardon? What? It's been tinted. Excuse, excuse me. Tinted. He's had it's, his bits tinted. What bits? It's his his hairy bits. What can you see that I can't? <laughs> his hairy bits. Side. Okay, right. No, but his hairy bits tinted. Yeah, looks very fetching. And Tommy Yasu is going to come on. So this I'll is stop a... making changes. Don't the, make changes now. Well, this is a, a tactical change uh, to answer the tactical change, if you like. So he's going to get a... Has that gone out for a throat now? Need a throw inside. We need a throw in desperately. So presumably this will be maybe Kivior coming off, I'm guessing. So as soon as the ball goes out for a throw in, they're going to um, make a change, aren't they? Get, go, go, get, get it out for a throw. Oh, it nearly went out, didn't it? Come on, throw in. We need a mm. throw, Sai. Think throwing around the world for I'm me. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm trying to support oh, you. That's a terrible ball from Odegaard. Gives it straight to uh, uh, Rico Lewis. And uh, come on, they're not getting a throwing in the centre circle, are you? Come on, out to the left. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, he's nicked inside. No, throw in. I need a throw in. Where are we on the times? We've got just over a minute for a throw in to happen. Stress is a rapid betting. Gamble responsibly out there, everybody. Come on. Into the area. Harlan brings it down. Turns. Tries to get a shot away. It's going to be hoof clear by Arsenal. Hoof downfield. No throw in. Got 52 seconds. 50 seconds. Come on, the throw. Somebody get a throw in. Hmm. Ball threaded through. Not going to get to Harlan that time. No, I think the... Uh, yeah, it, those rapid bets, they, they, they here, are here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, the throw. Come on, the throw. We well, need a... Oh, he's trying to buy a free kick. Oh, play on ref, play on ref. Has he he's, given it? He's given the free kick. I he think. buys three kicks on. left, right and centre. That's that's the end of a rapid bet. It's not going to go out for a throw in now, is it? He, uh, even... he, he, he stood on his leg. He doesn't even touch him. He, he basically just feigns it. He, he's, he's... No, it's, it's a foul. It it's wasn't. Foul. He didn't touch The feet went down together. 
No, well, they didn't because uh, definitely Saka's foot was on top of Grealish's. That means Grealish got the foot down earlier, so he's being fouled. That's I the mean, that's clear. Cut I've, I've blown our cash now, so it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. Oh, I could have one more bet on the remaining balance. Here we go. Let's get it right down to zero, shall we? I'm going to put 0.6333 USDT on something. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on. Let's get let's get a goal. Let's get some excitement. Mm. At the moment, nil-nil in the showpiece match isn't great, is it? We've had big goals yesterday. Not quite so much in this one. No, it's, uh, it's like the most high-profile game of the weekend. It's going to be the least interesting in terms of goals, but... Um, I think if Arsenal get away, not get away, but Arsenal come away from this game with a draw where they've played, not played City off the park, but they've certainly matched City again. Again, it's another mental block for them. So Arsenal have lost seven times. Before the start of the season, Arsenal had lost eight games in a row to Man City. This season, they won on neutral turf on penalties at the Community Shield. They won on home turf. And here they come away to Man City and they're not losing after 65 minutes. If they can get this to the point where they've not lost after 90 minutes, then I'd say that's a, that's another tick for Arsenal this season. Simon Barlow, we are on. Our remaining balance has been betted, and it is on Kevin De Bruyne to score a goal. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't going to happen. <laughs> you wait until it happens. Ain't going to happen. This is the Billy Gilmore. I mean, De Bruyne scores. He's not Billy Gilmore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a better option than Gilmore. But um, actually... actually He's got a good record against Arsenal. Ah, thank you very much. You're finally catching I up, aren't you? Will, I will just assess that one. You're actually. finally getting onto my brainwaves. I, I've basically just mentally factored all of these things into that bet. And now you're just catching up and getting onto the same page. Kevin De Bruyne, what's he done against Arsenal in player. the past? Wow. Okay, in 20 games against Arsenal, Kevin De Bruyne has won 14, draw two, lost four. I knew that. Scored eight and assisted five. I knew that. So he's got 13 goal contributions in 20 matches, of which yeah. eight were goals. So he's a good player, isn't he? Well, it's, he's getting almost one in two. Yellow, yellow card! We've got a yellow card, everybody! Hallelujah! We've got a yellow card! Hallelujah! hoo -ha. Yellow cards, it's yellow cards. It's Gabriel Jesus. He's booked Jesus at Easter. Come on, ref! But at last, a card. At least we know he's got them. So we're on. We're up and running. We're in. We're in this. We're in this. Mm. And the last nil-nil between Manchester City and Arsenal came in January 2011. Says Alexi. Over 13 years ago, we're getting closer to a stalemate. First card. Jesus says Sheriff. Mm. James, sing for us, please. Says Jack. That's how. Look at. That's how boring Jack. Jack says boring. He wants you to entertain him. Now. What would you like me to sing, Jack? You, you can. You can request a song. You can request a song, and yeah. I will sing it for you if I know it. Don't make it kind of like rappy or anything, because I don't know too much rap stuff. Make it something that shows off the, my talents. Your vocal talents? <laughs> uh, a Pavarotti or something like that, you know. Yeah. So what, what we need is like a Clubhouse TV song, don't we? You know, sort of yeah. a song that we can sing that would, um, you know, bring about some excitement in games that have yeah. gone like this. It's, it's, the trouble is with that, you kind of, you're going to go down the route of being like a children's song, aren't you? Welcome to Clubhouse TV. Welcome wherever you may be. <laughs> <laughs> if you want goals and cards, then we've got... <laughs> welcome. It's Clubhouse TV. And, uh, welcome along, Clubhouse TV creatures. What do you want me to sing, Jack? Come on, tell me. I'm ready. I'm just doing my vocal exercises. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm ready now. Ready now. Some people need to train their voice quite a lot, but I'm so naturally talented, so it doesn't really take that long. Could you could you do the start of the Lion King, please? You know the uh, famous. Oh, you like that? You just this before. Yeah, I do like the Lion. Oh, um, uh, when you when you did your vocal warm ups, it made me think of it. Then yeah. <laughs> I, I need to get the lyrics up. Okay. Lion King. What's the song? Is what's that? Is that the? I'm not sure. Lion King lyrics going to Google. <laughs> oh, here you go. Nance in Nance gang back. I can't even. Nance <laughs> in Ganyama. Could be a chance for Man City. Barba. City in the penalty area. They're trying to walk it through. No. 
Nansen Gayama Baki took a barber. Now I need to learn the second line. See the um in Gayama Nansen Gayama Baki. I want the circle of life. I can sing that one. Okay. Elton John at his. Elton John was at the Leeds game, wasn't he, on uh, on Friday? Yeah, he only went to see Leeds. He's not. Yeah. Has he turned into a Leeds fan now? Has oh, that is the circle what? of life. Nansen Guillaume, a back to the barber. Da, 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 Inga Yama, Nigga, and all that kind of stuff. Mm. From the day we arrive on the planet and blinking step into the sun. It's the circle, the circle of life. Oh, th- this is, um, I need to hear it. Inga yam and inga wing inga and all that kind of stuff. I need to hear that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. Well, that nicely put. <laughs> that's, that's, this game has driven us to yeah. kind of almost craziness any requests we will do um, we will sing until there's a goal scored Gav used to do the thing where oh, we won't speak until there's a goal scored we're going to sing until there's a goal scored so uh, let us know what you want us to sing um, I'm, I Arsenal fancy- women won the uh, Women's League Cup by the way beat Chelsea so good. Oh, that, well, well that, done for them that'll please the person that's injured that's true yes hopefully she's uh, yeah. in a stable condition I, I fancy seeing some meatloaf yeah we could do um, we could do that one where it's the male and female bit, and you can do the female bit. Um, yeah, uh, the well, there's, there's a few like that actually. That yeah. Meatloaf's done, yeah. Um, let's have meatloaf and share. Yeah, yeah. Is this a yellow card? Come on, ref, give us another yellow card. Go on, bring it out, bring it out. Show us a yellow. Show us your yellow. Oh, uh, Trossard's coming. Trossard's coming on. Yeah, but he doesn't have his favourite referee stroke older brother there today. He's just going to be on his own. Hopefully, he's okay. And I would do anything for love. I'd run right into hell and back. I would do anything for love. I'll never lie to you, and that's a fact. Dum, dum. But I'll never forget the way you feel right now. Oh, no, no way. And I would do anything, anything for love, love. But I won't I'll do that. that. No, I, I won't do that. that. Um, what's that face for? Is that them listening to us singing? <laughs> 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 That's the faces around the world of clubhouse creatures. Yeah. Um, Trossard's on. Is he going to make a difference? Um, I mean, he's he's got a decent record off the bench, I believe, for Arsenal this season. Um, most of the times when I've seen him come off the bench, he's I mean, he's, he's been in games where they've been winning already. But yeah, he's a good sub actually. He's a good good guy to bring on at this stage. <sighs> do you know what I do every night? It's a corner, by the way. Corner. But we don't need corner. don't need corners anymore, do we? Goals and cards we need. That's true. Um, yeah. Do you know what I do every night, Si? Um. Tell me, is it a song? Every night I grab some money and I go down to the bar. I got my buddies and a beer. I got a dream, I'm gonna need a car. Okay. You got me begging on my knees. Come on, throw me, dug a bone. I mind as a kneel or a rock and roll loan. Baby, baby, baby. rock and rolling brew, rock and rolling brew. They don't mean a thing when they compare them next to you. Rock and rolling brew, rock and rolling brew. I know what you and I, we've got better things to do. I don't know who you are and what you are. We're gonna win you around. <laughs> I don't know anything about you, baby. I don't know anything you're dreaming of. I don't know who you are. You're a real dead ringer ring for, for love. love. A real, real dead, dead ringer ring for love. love. Yeah. This is your bit, Cher. Ever since I can remember, I've been hanging around the show. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need that auto tune, that, that auto voice tune thing that, that Cher might allegedly have used once or twice. You look a bit like Cher. Uh, no, no, really don't. I might, might have a yeah. I might have a Cher nose. <laughs> but not not the hair. <laughs> Mind you, it's probably a wig anyway. So yeah, Cher's hair might look like mine. Yeah, she might have a ball patch like me. <laughs> mm. Sorry, Cher, if you're listening. If you have, she does. She does watch. Mm. Watches every time. Then uh, hopefully you're enjoying yourself. Gamble responsibly, Cher, please. Gamble responsibly. Ah, oh, right. Come on, we need a goal here. I took Gabriel out of my fantasy team. I put him on the bench because I thought this would have goals in it. And he's currently on a clean sheet, isn't he? 
The amount of the amount of points clubhouse creatures I have had on the bench this fantasy league season. I could have won the league if I'd had them as well. Honestly, won, I it, won it by March. I, 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 March. I, I've got. I mean, to, even this week, even this week, I have got Ruslov on the bench and um, Gabriel on the bench, both with clean sheet points. Reyes got he's on the bench with a clean sheet point. Although Martinez did get a ten, didn't he? So he was, he was that was the right choice. But honestly, I've had millions of points on the bench this season. Millions. <sighs> yeah, here comes City though, um, trying to overload the left hand side. Cross goes in towards Harlan. He's beaten in the air. He jumped too early, I think. He's beaten in the air. Beaten in the air. Jumped too soon. Uh, Doku crosses in. Harland leaves it. And there's Saka. But then he's lost the ball. Oh, that could be a mistake. Oh. Arsenal's defence has been under, put under the most pressure in the entire game now. Here we go. Go on, Man City. Go on, somebody. Do something good. I feel like a penalty could could make the difference here. You know? There's a corner. The corners, corners are coming now. We've got rid of the wrong one. The corners are coming. Yeah, that double change, wasn't it? The, the two wingers. I'll tell you what we'll do, Clubhouse Creatures. Let's have another vote. Let's let's be nice to you today. Let's you've, just get just get rid of the, the, the cards. They're not happening. You, you've put up with my singing. Um, do we get rid of cards or do we get rid of goals? That's the, another vote. Get rid of cards. Oh, David Ryer almost dropped it under his own post there. But. That would leave us just one thing that we need to get. We've got what fifteen minutes left. Do we do we go bang banging goals? This is what you got to decide. Do we go bang banging goals, or do we get a bit dirty? Do we get a bit dirty? Do we get uh, do we get <laughs> another do we four get cards? cards? Is it four or three cards we'd need from here? Let's have a look. We would need we'd need four cards. So it's four cards or two goals. I think it's it's a no brainer that no brainer for me. It's got it's got to be get rid of the cards. Even though I, I thought at half time this would have cards in it. You just look at this referee and go, well, he's had so many chances to give cautions to players and he's just can't, not done it. Can't say we don't try for you. You know, I mean, we, we can't just kind of give them away, but we are trying for you. Mm. We are. I'm even singing to try and get it across the line. Not that I think that helps really. Oh, is this going to be a chance? No. Odegaard tried to do little one of those. Scoopy things. Yeah, scooped it over the top. It didn't quite work for him. Yeah. And um, what shall I sing next? Um, <sighs> Careless Whisper by George Michael. If you want. <laughs> I was met with enthusiasm, wasn't it? Doku! Deflected corner. Was it deflected for a corner? Was it deflected? It was out anyway. It wasn't a goal. We haven't had goals, really, have we? No. No, we've had no goals. Um, I might sing some Bruce Springsteen. Right, okay. It's that kind of afternoon, everybody. The football's not great, is it? Um, hmm. Ah, it's one of my favourite songs. Bruce. In the day we sweat it out on the streets on a runaway American dream. At night we ride through mansions of glory in suicide machines. Sprung from cages out on Highway 9. Chrome wheel fuel injected and stepping out over the line. I need a guitar. <laughs> oh baby, this town rips the bones from your back. It's a death trap. It's a suicide rap. We gotta get out while we're young. Cause tramps like us, baby. Maybe we were born to run. Da, 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 yeah. Da, da. When to let me in, I want to be your friend. I want to guard your dreams and visions. Just wrap your legs around these velvet rims and strap your hands across my engines. Oh, Bruce, it's like he's in the room, isn't it? Uh, so what have we got here then? <laughs> uh, I'm just astounded by the uh, the poor singing there. It's, oh, it's beautiful. Um, Man City nil, Arsenal nil. We've got 12 minutes to go. One goal here, Si, could win the title. It could. Well, it won't win the title, but it could go a long way. It could way. lead somebody to winning the title. Yeah, I think uh, Man City are desperate for a goal, but they've they've tried everything now. You know, they went... With a usual system, 4-1, 4-1, start the game. Foden was playing. He's the best player this season. Haaland is the 
the the cutting edge of the team. He's done nothing in the game. They then switched. They went with the two wingers, Doku and Grealis. They've been knocking on the door. They still haven't found a way through. Arsenal's defence has been immaculate. Open play, set pieces, brilliant. This is just missing that one final cherry on the cake, which is a, counter, a counter-attack goal for Arsenal. And Goals. then you say, absolute needs. lesson. It's like Guardiola being given a lesson by his former pupil here. Guardiola, when he came back out from the break, um, looked stressed. Should be. Yeah, he, he, he usually comes out, he looks a little well, bit, he, kind of, he looks quite cool, doesn't he? If they lose this game, he might be on his usual concede the title uh, rant after the game, you know, sort of thing, because um, it's a massive match, you know. We've seen Liverpool win. They they lose this game. They're, they're, in, they're in debt to two serious title contenders. They're in like a, a three or four point debt to those two teams. Corner number eight says Slissy. We nearly got to the corner. You got rid of the corners and we're nearly there. Um, Saka is out, says Alexi. Um, who did we vote to take away? Did we vote? We've already voted for corners to go out. You have just voted for cards to follow. So we need two goals. We need two goals. Tell you what, should we be really nice? No, just two goals, James. Be firm. There's going to be extra time as well. I'll stop each time to play. But we don't get two goals, do we? Do we get two goals? All right, Simon says two goals. And you know the game. If Simon says, you've got to do it. Haven't you? Have faith. Yeah. Have faith. Got to have faith. Faith, faith. Faith. Like I said, Man City oh, yeah. have to win this game. The pressure is on them. It's a home game. They're behind Liverpool and Arsenal as the game goes, you know, they're going to throw everything out. They'll get caught at the back. They're already playing a very high line. Arsenal are, are going to catch them out. When, yeah, when you play Simon Says, mm. is it when you say Simon Says that you, you're out if you do it? Or is it if you don't say Simon Says? Can't remember. It's if, if you don't say Simon Says and then you do it, okay. you're caught out. So Simon Says, put your hands on your head. Like that. Simon Says, put your finger on your nose. Put your hand on your mouth. Oh, he's too clever <laughs> for me. He's too so, clever. Yeah. 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 But after a couple of drinks. <laughs> so, do we get anything? Twists in the tail, anybody? What happens? What happens? Or will Liverpool be top of the tree come tonight? At the moment, Jürgen's watching this going, yes, happy days. Um, Haaland plays it through. Is Haaland going to get the return? He does. Inside the penalty area. It's out to the left, though, with Grealish onto his right foot. Dinks, dinks, puts it down to the back post. Doku on the back post, volleys it harmlessly wide for a goal kick. That was dreadful from Doku. Yeah, I mean, a draw, clearly you'd think it's three points up for stake, three three points up for grabs here. If one point is lost, essentially, by both teams drawing, then that's going to be good for Liverpool. And I agree, it is. It is good for Liverpool. A draw is good for Liverpool. But a draw doesn't knock either of these two teams out of the title race. If either of them won, I would say the team that loses is knocked out of the title race. It becomes a two-horse race, Liverpool and the winner of this game, as opposed to a draw. It keeps them all in it, really. For a neutral, it's great, isn't it? As a yeah. neutral, I'm, I'm not a Man City supporter. I'm not an Arsenal fan. I'm not a Liverpool fan. I just want to see this go the distance. I want this to go to the, the perfect scenario is for them all to be level on goal difference, level on points going into the final round of fixtures on the final day of the season with everybody in it. Um, it's a, that's unlikely, I know, but as close to that as we can get is brilliant. Yeah, all the way to the wire, please. And should we have a look at the uh, the fixtures for the final week of the season? I mean, I we don't, t- don't wish our lives away. Did we here. talk about that yesterday? Um, Did you? West Ham is one, one of them. They're all at home. Are they? The opposition is Liverpool play Wolves, I think. Yes, that's right. Um, Man City play West Ham, and Arsenal take on. Sheffield United, right? So something like that, something along those lines. So those games are all so like there's only one team going to win at all of those games, really, isn't there? Yeah, but you know, with the stresses of the last day of the season, there'll be one of those match of the days where all twists and turns. You know what'll happen? <laughs> yeah, I think he could have picked some better fixtures to be. We'll honest. score but, yeah, early, and all of a sudden Arsenal are out of it. Oh, chance back post, he misses it. Harland has his hand, his ponytail yeah. in his hands. Arsenal at home to Everton. Uh, but you're right with the other two, Man City at home to West Ham and Liverpool at home to mm-hmm. Wolves. So, uh, whichever team goes into that last game in front, unless it's goal difference. If it's goal difference, then you could have a, you know, and it's close goal difference. You could see Holland just things missed that. Around. Holland arrived on the back post there with a. Ch- I mean, Ray was out to cut the, down the angle, but Holland just missed the ball. Mm. So, uh, there's a thing with Holland, you know, he's a flat trap bully. There's stats on this. 
that in the games against, like, say, Sheffield United and stuff, um, when they're all out attacking, he bangs in five goals, everything, everybody, he's great. In the in the really big games, he doesn't tend to score. Well, he's uh, he's had a tough afternoon, no doubt about it. The Arsenal defence have, have handled him well. But Gab- there hasn't been a lot created for him either. Gabriel's a really good defender, you know. Yeah. When you've got him on your back like a rash, it's hard to score goals, isn't it? Both both centre-backs, you know, Saliba yeah. as well, very good. And, um, yeah, I, I think they've, they've deserved the clean sheet. It's whether they deserve that winning goal now, Arsenal. I think it's it's possible. It's out there for them. You know, this is the... I, I think nil nil's is a fair result from this. It is. It is I, I don't result. think either side deserve to win. I think Arsenal have shown enough. I don't think Man City have shown enough. Stats-wise, if you look at the stats, it's very, very, very even. If anything, Man City shade it. They certainly they certainly boss it in terms of possession, 72% possession for City, but they're at home. They always do that. Um, but shots, in terms of goal attempts, 10 to 6 in favour of Man City. Um, corner kicks, 5 to 4 in favour of Man City. XG's higher for Man City. They're the home side. They have just shaded it, but only just like that. Neither side deserves to win this. Nil-nil, I think, is a fair result. If anybody nicks it from here, it's like a bonus win. The Arsenal player who collapsed on the pitch is in a stable condition, apparently. So that's good, good news there for the uh, women's game. I'm glad you put a condition and she's not just been shoved into a stable. Hopefully, she's very, very Here's well. Here's a chance. Come oh, on, the Gunners. Oh. Come on, Arsenal. Trossard. Mark. Trossard. Shoots and it's safe. Why are you supporting Man City, uh, Arsenal? You hate Man City, don't you? Um, is that is that part of the element of this? I've backed Arsenal. That's all it is. Oh. I, I I have I've been as a Man United fan. Though, do you on... do you hate Man City? Um, I don't I don't like them winning trophies, but you kind of have to accept that they're a very good team and but it, gonna, are going to win many more. As a, as a Manchester United fan, Doku Doku, he tried, tried to get onto his left foot to get a shot away, couldn't do it. As a, as a Manchester United fan, um, of the three contenders, Liverpool, Arsenal, and Manchester City, who would you prefer to see win it? Well, right now. Arsenal, but five minutes after Arsenal win the the title, I will regret my decision because their fans will just be insufferable. Yeah, uh, but before Piers they... Morgan will be talking all the day long. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you can just say that after Arsenal win the title, you just have to go on holiday because the fans will be insufferable. But fair enough, you know they haven't won it for a while. Um, Man City, if they win the trophy, you'd say, well, it'd just get taken off them in a few years when they they face the charges for the. Uh, um, cooking the books, they, they so to speak. They won't get down as far as Man United, though. Into, no, probably not. Like, you know, like in the Olympics, when they, yeah. that people are just ruled out above, but somebody that's finished fourth ends up with a gold medal. It won't get down to Manchester United, so. And the Liverpool will be my least favourite choice for winning the, the league as a Man United fan, because they're our biggest rivals, you know. what They are bigger rivals to us than, than Man City. If, um, if it was four horses and Spurs were closer, I'd want Spurs to win. But Spurs aren't going to win it, are they? So no. it's... It's, I, I really don't care who wins it, to be honest. I, I, if, if you gave me a choice, I'd say Man City. Referee's but seen some pushing and shoving in the box there, so it's a, but it's a retake. a corner. marginal choice. I really don't. I'm not bothered. Yeah. Ten corners now in the game. Yeah. So over, the, over nine and a half. The, the first um, condition that we got rid of today. Has something happened, James? Has it? Has we? Have we had some late drama? Have we? Have we had late drama? Have we? You tell me, have we? I don't think we have. Okay. It's a short corner. Are you just going to say that for the rest of the show just to try and build the drama, to build the tension? Ah, sorry, I think something's about to happen. Shout for a penalty. Oh, there's a shout for a penalty. Which has not been given. Harlan's on the floor. He's he's stopped the game because of a head injury. (sighs) Clash your heads, stop the game, no penalty. Trying to to make it exciting for you, but it's, it's hard to today, isn't it? Oh, it's been a hard sell, no doubt it's about been, it. It's been, it's not been the, it's not been, sometimes, this is what, I mean, Gav doesn't very, he, he very rarely says something that's true, or or sort of incisive when it comes to football analysis, mm. but when he says two very good sides come together, often you get nothing, because they just cancel each other out, and that's what we've seen today, isn't it? Yeah. Arteta has come to, um, Frustrate Man City's game plan has, has, has worked to an extent, but they haven't had that counter-attack opportunity that's been put away that really is the, the cherry on the cake. And they're, they're going to go on with a point, but it'll be a good point. Do you know what I hate in terms of football behaviour? There's a, there's a, I mean, there's a long list. I don't like diving. I don't, I don't like spitting. And I don't like... The thing I, that I've really come to dislike recently is when you see them clearing their nostrils 
Well, I could I do it live on air if you want. Just, to exa- just on the keyboard. No? <laughs> Heidenheim. That'll be a first for the service, wouldn't it? Heidenheim. 3 2 up against Stuttgart with five minutes to go. Mm. Yeah, when they go. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. Oh, but do that when you get in the dressing room. Don't Get a tissue. I mean, if Jack could avoid doing it yesterday with his bad cold, then surely footballers can avoid it. I mean, basically, this microphone's got germs all over it. Oh, yeah. So if me and Gav had not seen on this service for the next three weeks, it's because we got Jack's cold. He came in and he just basically he's impregnated us all with these viruses. Impregnated you, really? Yeah. What yeah. was he doing? <laughs> it's, oh, it's quite potent. I know, he's a horrible virus. Full of, full of mucus he was yesterday. Revolting creature. So all these teams play again in midweek, don't they? Um, Arsenal's next game is at home to Luton. I mean, they're all gimmies, aren't they, the next game? So Liverpool at home to Sheffield United. Arsenal at home to Luton. Manchester City are... That's not an, that's not a hard, easy game. So they're at home to Aston Villa. But they are at home. Mm. Aston Villa away are a different kettle of fish to Aston Villa at home. Yeah. Um, Ishitin says, don't worry, Liverpool are champions. Um, Hacker says, I hate City and I hate nil-nils and I double hate City's nil-nil games. <laughs> that's a really good way of putting yeah. it. He hates City. He hates nil-nils. He's got both today. He double hates it. I like that. Um, so uh, we are drawing to the end of today's show and it's been a little bit gone out with a whimper, isn't it? Unless we get, yeah. Unless we get, because we've been looking forward to this match for so long. And sometimes it's like when you go out, you know, when you kind of decide on the spur of the moment, oh, let's go out and have a night out. They're often better than the ones you've planned for weeks. Mm. And uh, yeah, this one has not been great. Is it looking, been looking forward to it and it's not really delivered. I'd suggest into the 90th minute as things stand. For the free bets to land, we need a bang, bang. We need an Estelida, Estelida. We need a null, null. We need a pam, pam, depending where in Europe you're from. <laughs> Hopeful ball being put out to the, uh, the the flank is Grealish. Can he turn the game? Not bad. Gets a cross in. Haaland's flopping in the box, hoping for a penalty. Flopping in the box. Mm. Come Seven on. if you fancy Man City to nick it. 18.5 if you fancy Arsenal Doku. to nick it. Corner. That was the, the corners would have landed. The corner's part of the um, yeah. the bet builder would have landed. And that's the first thing you got rid of. But you weren't to know, were you? You the weren't only, to know. The only one of the three that would have landed, I think. Mm. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Beyond, beyond the palace, hemi-powered drones scream down the boulevard. The girls comb their hair in rear view mirrors. The boys try to look so hard. The amusement park rises bold and stark. Kids are huddled on the beach in a mist. I want to die with you, Wendy, on the streets tonight in an everlasting kiss. It's poetry. Who's Bruce who's, Springsteen? Oh, okay. I, mean, I could sing it, but I'd, I got ridiculed for my last singing of Bruce Springsteen, so I decided to read it as a poem instead. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Safer. There's a bit of. Um chat there between Gabriel Magalhaes and, and Erling Haaland on the pitch. I think um, maybe the word cheat was used by uh, <laughs> by one and Haaland gave him short shrift. Oh, into the second minute of five added on. Yeah. We're nearly there, Clubhouse Creatures. The weekend's nearly over. Hopefully you enjoy oh, today. Oh, no, no. We've got another day in the UK. We've got a bank holiday. I don't know if you know. There's a bank holiday tomorrow, James. I work every day, so there's yeah. no such thing as a holiday in my life. Right. Although I am off tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I am off tomorrow. Uh, but uh, yes, Bank- yeah, Easter Monday tomorrow. If you celebrate it, happy Easter. If you're in the middle of Ramadan, happy Ramadan, yeah. Ramadan, the Ramadan or whatever. Um, <laughs> hopefully you enjoy it. At the, at the end of Ramadan, there's a festival of some things that we basically, eat. yeah, you basically get to eat and trough and stuff. And uh, I think I think that's passed. Have we not had eat already? No, no, they're still in Ramadan. Okay, they're still because yesterday um, during Ramadan, the Premier League do that thing where they have a break at half. Halfway through oh, the half, don't they? So, and it was who was it yesterday? Um, who was playing? It was um, Aston Villa's striker that scored the first goal called Diaby. Diaby, he's a Muslim. And the, about the, the halfway through one of the halves, as as dusk started to fall, mm-hmm. he came off and had some energy drinks and a, a banana Very and a few things, fast, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. to get some energy on him. So um, I think that's a really good thing. That's a really good um, uh, advancement from the Premier League to kind of respect each other's religions and things and the fact that player wants to fast and it's not necessarily the greatest thing as a sportsman you want to try and get some power in you before you go on on the pitch and to have that break so that somebody can just refuel a little bit I think is a good thing last minute uh, Doku 
trying to take on his defender. That's great defensive work there from Tommy Yasu. Came on as a sub to try and counter the Doku change, and he's done really well. Mr. Yasu is very good, old Tommy, isn't he? Yeah. I like him. Yeah. Doesn't get as many chances as he probably would. I mean, he's a player that if he moved somewhere else, would play week in, week out. But he obviously likes the money and the Arsenal, doesn't he? Just signed a new contract, doesn't yeah. he? He's, um, yeah, it's obviously very settled. It's kind of, I guess you've got to kind of balance. It is their job. They want to try and get loads of cash in the bank and, and set themselves up. But they also want to play in every week as well. It's kind of... But you, you're going to pick up medals, aren't you, potentially? I don't think his Japan place is in threat, under threat by not playing, you know, mm. regularly for Arsenal. He gets a few games, though, doesn't he? He's obviously been entrusted with a big role today. I mean, somebody like Eddie Nketiah, if he went to somewhere like Crystal Palace, would play every week, wouldn't he? Yeah, ball but, over the top here, uh, but Arsenal not able to profit from it. But he ain't going to win the leagues at Crystal Palace, is he? No. That's the, that's that's crazy, the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. Anyway, we are about, we're seconds away from the end of uh, this weekend. Hopefully you've had a good time with us on Clubhouse TV. Saturday and Sunday, hopefully you've had some successful bets as well. We haven't been able to land this free bet, have we? Because we're not going to get an Esther Leader, Esther Leader in the we're last 20 get seconds. We're not going to one goal, let alone two. So it's just, I mean, it was I, never I, happening today, was it? That makes you feel better because I was about to reduce it to one goal and you kind of poo-pooed it. Yeah. And we're not even going to get that, Si. So even you don't need to feel responsible or, or guilty in any way. I, I never feel that guilt, though. <laughs> Um, it's hard to land a free bet when there's not any goals and there's hardly anything happening and it's been one of those games hasn't it where hardly anything has happened and they shake hands Arteta and Guardiola embrace on the side of the pitch and it has finished goalless and between Manchester City and Arsenal you know what that means don't you we are still very much all to play for it would have been anyway at the top end of the uh, the Premier League with uh, Arsenal now three points behind Liverpool after getting that point today and uh, Manchester City four points behind Liverpool Liverpool the uh, the biggest advantageous gainers of uh, the day after their win against Brighton earlier Simon B thank you as always uh, thank you James yes I'll see you in April are you not back in... Oh, no, no, well, it's tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so, uh, are you seeing me tomorrow? Um, it's uh, nice to see you, as always, Simon. And Clubhouse Creatures, thank you for your company over the weekend. Hopefully you've had some success. Wasn't the greatest way to finish today, but at least we've had some fun along the way. Join us in the week, because we'll be back on Clubhouse TV on Tuesday. Have a very good rest of your day. So we'll on. see you soon. Cheers, all. Covering every... Every game of the English Premier League, Champions League and Europa League live as they happen. This is Clubhouse TV.